deliver different things, I think. But, and that you, know. you always do. Where's your lovely wife tonight? Is she here? No, no, she, she's uh, oh, she's off doing some, she has oh, some other deal. Yeah, Mama, yeah. Mama. And I know. Everybody, this is episode 23 of Wino Forever, the Deppening Podcast. We are getting into day two of the Johnny Depp UK testimony. My name is Sarah, and I am joined by Arm. Hello, sir. I just want to say, and I think I echo the massive audience we've accrued. <laughs> you did a phenomenal job as the Sasha Wass Esquire. Um, it, in you know Americanized version, but the subtle sarcasm and the reductive lilt and the snarkiness and I really I I almost um, was voting I was almost turned into vote is into uh, siding with the son in the trial. You were so convincing. No, well, thanks. I was I listening don't... back. I was listening back, and I'm like. Wow, she's she, <laughs> that's pretty hard hitting, and you're not over the top where you're, you know, you're like you looks like it's, you know, melodramatic or you know, out of something out of uh, some bad Law and Order episode. Uh, it is very convincing. The sharp responses and the snarkiness and the subtle sarcasm hidden in every single thing you say back to him, mm-hmm. you know, like ah, uh, <laughs> uh, really. Um, would a southern gentleman use flappy fish market? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> That's so gross. Um, thank you. I don't buy that, but I appreciate oh, I'm telling it. You, listen back. I know you hate <laughs> the sound of your own voice. Listen, I'm telling you, it's great. Really, really underrated. Mm, well, Subtle like Depp in Gilbert Grape. Thank you. Your uh, Depp, as everyone knows, is spot on, and it's easy to play off of that and highly enjoyable. So. Thank you very much. But you don't have to return the compliment just because I said that and it makes you uncomfortable. <laughs> that makes me move it but off it's, of myself. I think the dichotomy or the juxtaposition of those two in the same – like I said, this is my dream was to make this come to life because I so feel to this day, and I'll never get over it, screwed we didn't get to hear some – even if it was just audio, mm-hmm. you know, just we're reading transcripts and conjecturing what went down. I just – couldn't believe we didn't get even a sliver of that trial. Mm-hmm. Well, get ready because you will in like a month. You're going to have We're gonna days do it here. and days. Yeah. I don't know how what their rules are going to be. I don't know if whatever. Like I think we are copyright. This pool, this pool camera business. I think the judge is going to jerk off to the footage when she goes on. I would. Uh, <laughs> especially if it goes the way we suspect it will. So let's get into this because this is another long one. I don't think it's going to well, matter. Let me just the say the, 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 pool, the pool camera business. Um, she's not, it's not etched in stone. She could actually go further and say, oh, you know what? It's not, it's a little too constrictive. Let's, let's, uh, let's allow for several angles in a full yeah, I don't know. production. I, I don't, I don't I, see I, that happening. She wasn't, it wasn't locked in stone. It could, you can get more than whatever this pool camera, but if it's enough, I hope the audio is nice and clear. Mm-hmm. I think they're going to be, the media is all, she's getting like just barraged with media requests for I'm sure. covering this. Mm-hmm. I mean, that. The, 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 I mean, these people have weeks and weeks and weeks of, um, material because they, she allowed this. Mm-hmm. You can't do as – if you noticed the, when the, the, the UK trial was um, strictly transcripts, it wasn't getting the coverage it deserved. 
Mm-hmm. Everyone's like, "Oh, are you crazy?" That uh, it wasn't. It, this this should have been like so ridiculously on top of this. I think between COVID and a lot of the election stuff, it got kind of trampled. When in a week, a weaker news cycle, it would have been so much in out in the front. Mm-hmm. No. I am hi- very much looking forward to it. I hope we can stream it somehow. I don't. I don't know. I have to work. There's so. no doubt you could stream it. I mean, I, I, I'm, yeah, isn't Core I, TV's first order of business this? I think, yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to work, so I can't be a part of the live stream. I'll be watching my own channel, probably from work, maybe while you stream it. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. If we it's can, kind of we will. Opposite, it's kind of an opposing forces when these people who think – they have to go to the trial somehow. It's going to pull the – it's going to sway the tide if they go to Fairfax or something, mm-hmm. you know, so supporting him. And I don't know how all these people have that much free time. I don't know. Where, where it's like, you know, talking weeks in a row. Um, but then you can't watch it if you're there. Mm-hmm. Where are you watching it? You are standing outside for some reason uh, for days at a time. On a phone? I'm not doing that. I want to be. I, I know. I'm going to watch big it from screen. the yeah, comfort. I yeah. I, I'm, you know. Taking I, it even, in every Even word. from work. I yeah. would rather watch it from work than legally, of course, than um, be there in person in the Virginia heat in the springtime. Humidity. I'm guessing. I don't well, you know. You know, the, the, the big, uh, the big uh, prank some of these people are planning on polling with somebody posted a, a scenario of how much the succubus loves attention. Mm-hmm. And so when she shows up, instead of booing her and just turn your backs and say nothing, like literally turn your back as she walks into the court. There's no, doesn't in a way though, you can look at that as attention as well. Like it, it's, it's bringing attention to, the silence is is another form of attention. She might get off on that as much as straight up booze. You know, there's a lot of talk though right now that it won't even get that far. That it's going to be what, settled like was? the last. No, that it's going to oh, be settled. Oh, she, she's like gonna... the last minute. Mm-hmm. I hope he doesn't. I hope he goes for the jugular. She's going to settle because it's. Did they no, just? He would settle. He would agree to settle. Well. Right. But then she's she's defecting on the the girl power. uh, Gloria Allred movement Mm -hmm. that she so claims to be fighting. If he does, he had better get a solid uh, etched in stone um, apology to himself from her, along with nothing that can be twisted. Or say it was taken out of context. Um, basically, her denying that any of that took place. He'd better make well, sure now, that he gets that. Where do you that. get this from? Where do you get know, this? It's all over the internet. There's rumors. You know how that That's, is. What good does it do him? I don't know. That's why I'm hoping it doesn't happen. He wants anyway, justice. Let's, let's, he wants his name completely cleared. It doesn't do him any good. Yeah. All right. It's They've just wasted everybody's time as it is. The people it's, saying you know, it really know nothing. I'm just talking right. about it because right. it's okay. being brought up right now. All right. So let's get into this because there's so much. Um, we have depth news. You go ahead. You have something and I have something. So you go ahead and do yours. You don't even want to do yours first? No, no, I can. You'll do, do yours first because I know you're. I'm your not fans itching. are going crazy <laughs> waiting for this. You're, yeah, okay. Yeah. I can't wait um, to see it either. We have an episode of the newest internet television show. It's a very brief episode. Um, I guess I'll just start it now. Uh, There's a new Instagram post. So, of course, it's featured on this brand new show that we might be introducing as a stupid little segment on our own podcast here. Anyway, I'm rambling and I'm making no sense and I'll just push play. (laughs) So dumb. Public domain. Public no, it is. Domain. It is. Yep. Yeah. 
So before we get into this, the newest episode of Everything's Great with Amber Heard features her cooking. Uh, she is really into the cooking videos because I think she's trying to brand herself as some kind of homemaker. Right. And that's, a mom. that's interesting. Um, now, one of the new things is that when people who have no talent, mm-hmm. they become they do cooking shows. Mm-hmm. Like you can't prove they can't cook kind of thing or they they go into stand up when all things fail, like a lot of mm-hmm. famous people think they, they suddenly think they're stand up comedians that that somehow that skill translates to I'm famous and I'll just jump on stage and you'll laugh at everything I say. I don't have to have talent or crafted jokes. And, you know, like, uh, uh, Jeremy Piven's doing that right now. That's just one example. But you're, go mm-hmm. ahead. I'm sorry. That's fine. It seems like a cooking thing as people celebrities go to this now as a, a way to, uh, you know, food heals kind of thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. That's just one. An anorexic bulimic with a food with a food show. What's next? Beth Ostrowski uh, cooking rice cakes. Mm-hmm. This seems to be filmed by maybe a girlfriend of the week. I don't know if it's the same yeah. girlfriend that she uh, dressed up like Johnny Depp to accompany her to the UK trial. But uh, there's no bra on. She's trying to be overly giddy and happy. Right. And she is cooking something that looks like it's the quality of something my cat crapped out in the litter box. I want you like to I see Like I said, if- she's so vain. There's no – like someone like her is calculated as she is. Mm-hmm. When she say no bra, that is completely planned. Like there's no – she's exactly. looking at herself 10,000 times in the mirror a day. She knows exactly what she's wearing, what she's doing, and what she's provoking. And mm-hmm. if you think that's just uh, some coincidence, she knows – exactly what she's doing when you say no bra it's like, i'm gonna try to get a, a perfect pause on this but her facial expression enrages me like halfway through by the this way little snippet yeah go the ahead. one who doesn't want to do the, the one who doesn't want to do nudity in a movie exactly who doesn't want to be objectified no bra and, and it, know, it's it's, just, it, it's a white t-shirt no bra i mean of course i shouldn't even have noticed Save it, it. But it's right there, and it's like, yep. okay, hello. And now I say that you that does not mean. You why do you have to Why do you think it. Friends okay. had such high ratings? I know I don't watch Friends. I'm. Uh, well, I mean, yeah. it's, it's crap. <laughs> it's crap. Why do you think? I know. It's... I know. Okay. Jennifer so... Aniston's nickname is a uh, Ticonderoga. Mm-hmm. Speaking of attention, anyway, here we go. Oof. What do you think that is? Uh, dog, dogs from her dad's uh, dog fighting ring. Dead look dogs. at this. First of all, let's look at this surrounding here. Uh, the food. This is appears to be some kind of overly priced bread in the skillet. There is some kind of citrus, I think, surrounding it. God. There's bacon Looks in like the skillet vomit. next to it. There's bacon next to it. It looks like, well, maybe she flipped it. Two pieces of bacon, three massive pieces of French toast. We're supposed to believe the southern, the Texas bitch is eating this. Yeah. I want to see her eat it. I don't want to see her make it. I want to see her eat it. Yeah. I don't know what this pink shit is in the skillet. I know. It's gross, right? It looks like vomit. It looks like uh, what was in the the maid found in the bed. You want to talk about gross? Look at the rug on the floor. I don't know. Is that gross? That's you broads disgusting. and your rugs. I, that is dis- you're in a kitchen. That is disgusting. And there's some dresser across the way. This green dresser. Yeah, it's, it's a strange it's setup. Filthy. It's disgusting. Well, who has a dress? Is, I mean, it could be kitchen. It is a kitchen, of there? course. But I don't. That's like it's like a dresser was moved in. I don't know. Maybe we'll get a better shot. That rug is filthy. She is disgusting. It matches her personality, so I guess it fits in. Okay. Oh. And you can hear the girlfriend, I think, in the background filming. I do like that <laughs> stove, mm-hmm. I have to say. I, I don't even want to mess with a gas stove. Give me electric. I don't they're have they're good. They're really – they cooks really fast. Well, ooh la la, Mr. Uh, professional I, look, I'm just saying. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to be objective. I like. I do like that stuff. Who, who paid for it? Elon Musk probably. I like that's what I was going to say. Was... Sorry, what? I said that's what I was going to say as well. It's yeah. a It's a – that's a uh, Tesla stove. Mm-hmm. Look at those knuckles, the scarred what? knuckles from beating people. You know, it's for dessert. Carmel hair plugs from Elon Musk. 
Oh, God. <laughs> uh, all right, here we go. Orange peel in there. Look at that. Okay, look at her expression. This is where I want to punch the. I mean, uh, lightly tap her on the face. She's got the tongue out, jutting out. Like she's so cute. She's so everything's so fake and affected and over. She's nothing. She's so un. It's amazing how she ever got cast in anything. Yeah. Look at the wine. She makes sure that that thing's full. Yeah, it's always next to the fridge. Yep. And what's up with all the shit graffiti all over the fridge with pictures and? I want to see. That's what I want to see. I want to see zooms of the pictures of herself all over. It's all of her her uh, faked uh, metadata injury photos. This the, those are her trophies because she's about to take down Johnny Depp in court. Well, I'm sure there's got to be tons of stuff from Penthouse Five and Three and you know that whole. Guaranteed, it's all from there. It's all Josh Drew and Rocky Pennington. Oh, God, yeah. Okay, and these hot shots in the back. Yep. Ugh. Okay, I'm going to let it play for a bit. Ugh. Got a little caramelization on that. See a little accent she had there? Okay, and that poor dog. Is she trying to put on a Texas lilt there? She's trying to be related. She's trying to be a little caramelization. She tried to be fake southern accent. Yeah. Okay. And this is the next thing I have is a quick. This is back from 2013. You know those shows like Extra and uh, those stupid entertainment shows that nobody really gives a crap about. Well, she was featured on one. She'd been featured on a few of them around. Weirdly enough, around the time she started dating Johnny Depp, they've really become so they talk obsolete about... now. They're, 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 you don't hear mm-hmm. about them. They used to be big, like fifteen years ago, and more. Mm-hmm. Now it's just like the internet has just in, just swallowed them up. Like who's watching Entertainment Tonight mm-hmm. anymore? Thank God. Yep. Okay, this will play. One look at Amber Heard and you might be thinking, wow, that is the epitome of refined Hollywood glamour. But her fiancé, Johnny Depp, might want to take some notes because she's telling W Magazine that her true state of being might not be as put together as her appearance. She reportedly says, whenever my old friends meet someone I'm involved with romantically, they immediately warn them. She may look refined, but when she's angry, she can go trailer park really fast. Yeah, so despite Amber's angelic appearance, it seems she will be rather quick to throw down if you get on her bad side. Depp seems like a pretty tranquil guy, so we're not sure if he's ever felt the Wrath of Amber. But for a guy who spends his life with potentially sharp jewelry and scarfs wrapped around his neck, he might want to avoid conjuring up trailer park Amber as he plans on spending the rest of his life with her. Sorry, I put a little uh, is, eye candy in here at the end over their logo. This is 13? 13? 2013? Yeah. Um, well, we were engaged. Think- do you think this is submittable to a court, or is this I just like conjecture? So. It's like spe- they're not really quoting. It. It's sort of like vague. They're not mm-hmm. really quoting anyone specific. I could see the lawyers going, "Spec, oh, you know, speculation. Throw that. It's, it's, mm-hmm. Who knows where it's coming from?" And but like, you don't just make that up. That's not even. They're not even meant to defame her it's just meant as like what a what a what a what a spitfire this one is it's almost like a backward compliment i know that it, the way it's, that's framed exactly okay so i'd put a little eye candy in here and then the next thing i got... no, no great by the way it's before you gloss over that great find where did you find that youtube it's just sitting on youtube and you stumbled onto it mm-hmm. wow somebody had posted it they posted it like at the time or they posted it like recently to prove recently. Look at what she is. Okay. So somebody dug that up. It's a weird there's so much stuff on her on there's weird random stuff. By the way, just... she is so shitty on t- I'm sure you've seen by now. Her on a talk show. Oh mm-hmm. my god, she's so boring and by the she's trying to sound intellectual and trying too hard and she's, you know, fake and she's the worst talk show guest I've ever heard. She sort of just doesn't get it. She seems she has zero sense of humor. Zero. She I gets don't know her what that guy saw in her. I honestly, I 
this guy, he's so many options. And this is you what know you what he saw. With. No, I'm sorry, but there's so many chicks out there. Yeah, they're all, all over. They're, there's thousands of them every day. He doesn't know that. This is what you came up with. He doesn't know Gosh, there are thousands of women better than her. He sees what's in front of him. He well, that's sees... true. He is insulated from mankind in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. So you're only seeing what's at the casting couch and stuff. But I just – she's just nothing on top. You ever, I, you, I, there's uh, Kimmel and Corden. She's the worst talk show guest. Mm-hmm. They try to set her up, and she's just got no – She's just got – she just can't react and she's like trying too hard to sound intellectual to impress Depp because she knows she's going to throw it in his face when she gets him. Look at me on Kimmel. Look at me on Corden. I know. Uh, but something about her turned him on. You know what it was. Since we are getting into some trial stuff uh, and we're preparing for the upcoming – Fairfax trial. We're going to read kind of what started off everything. Uh, she wrote, had her attorney, Samantha Spector, who we've mentioned in the last episode, uh, craft the a protector to you. That's the protector to you. Yeah. Craft what we call here an extortion letter. <laughs> so I'm going to read it real quick here. This is a letter to Mr. Depp's attorneys. Dear Mr. Bloom, this is uh, spring of 2016. Please be advised that our firm has filed a petition for dissolution of marriage on behalf of Amber Depp. Like how she uses his name. And yeah, that's you... the first time I've heard it. Uh, God, it, it reminds me of Lori Ann Allison mm-hmm. using it for a makeup company. Only mm-hmm. when it's convenient. Like you can see Spectre going, use Depp. Now's the time to use Depp. He oh, gave you his name. Use it. This is the mm-hmm. only time you want to. That'd be. Could you imagine his camp? If they used it in Aquaman. No, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, he would, uh, and rightfully so, would be demanding a cut of the back end off of that movie. He should get it anyway. I know. He got her the movie role. He he really should get like an agency fee for anything she gets from that point on mm-hmm. to, uh, I can't, I tell you, you know, we're going through all the DC, DC, the DC films, you know, we, this is a story that it's, our radars go up immediately like Aquaman to Shazam to uh, justice society and flash all got pushed back mm-hmm. a few. It's bizarre. And it's a few months. And some of the theories is they're trying to avoid avatar Two. I guess is coming out. Some of the, it's the timing or, and immediately we say, you think Warner Brothers is terrified of this trial. Mm-hmm. The Aquaman got pushed from Christmas, which is when – remember when you saw it and that – when you had the advance ticket? November, yeah. I saw it in November. Yeah, it was like late November. It was like mm-hmm. that kind of weird uh, almost Christmas time. And I think when I saw it, it was like the Christmas kind of – it was – in line with Christmas. It was like <laughs> Aquaman's always been known as a Christmas character. So uh-huh. it's perfect timing. <laughs> Lanty and Chris. Yeah. Um, it's, it's amazing how they try to time these movies to try to get the best audience possible. And, mm-hmm. and so it was supposed to do it again. And it's way too long in between movies. They should have easily had a sequel out by now. I mean, you're talking four years later, um, the sequel to a movie. It's too long. You can, anything can happen. People can die. The succubus can f things up as she's doing. They should have. You know what they should have done? They should have done what what the pirates movies did, and I think Matrix did this, where you shoot multiple sequels at once, so you could just come out with it a year later. Mm-hmm. It's not fun to edit things. I know this in long form, so maybe they didn't want to do that. I don't know. I don't know, but I I would have I would have been terrified because the the succubus problems were there in 2018, and I would have been like, you know what? Who knows what's going to go down with this crap? Let's just get this thing out mm-hmm. uh, before uh, shit hits the fan, um, and it will. And I think they're terrified of this trial. I really, really do. And what the the shit storm? They they make so many bad decisions in Warner Brothers, especially in regards to the DC characters. And now the Batman came out, so it's a grounded Batman. It's not in the same universe. It's not in the same cinematic universe as the other films. So I wonder if that's impacted the release of these films. They're yeah. trying to like get away from it. 
It's just there's they just make so many bad well, this decisions. Gives, gives them a lot of time to edit her face out and do that yeah. face uh, replacement technology. They that... have to have a contingency plan. Mm -hmm. They have to. Yeah. Okay, so let me get through this letter here. All right, as you may be aware, your client and Amber's husband, Johnny Depp, violently attacked and threatened Amber on Saturday night, May 21st, in their penthouse apartment located at 849 South Broadway. There are several witnesses to this particular incident. There's one. And there are photographs depicting the property damage Johnny caused, as well as the physical injuries he inflicted on Amber. Unfortunately, this is not the first incident of domestic violence perpetrated by Johnny against Amber. In fact, there have been two other incidences in the past six months. Although Amber is afraid of Johnny, she strongly insists that we do everything possible to keep this personal matter out of the media spotlight, which is why she has not yet sought a, and why we did not, legal speak, and why we did not arrange for Johnny to have been personally served at last night's movie premiere. Oh, how nice of you. I know. You're such menches. Mm-hmm. Amber wishes to work quickly toward a private and amicable resolution of all matters, but she. By will the way, we think this is a fantastic beast premiere. I think it might be Alice. Or Alice too. Yeah, I still lean in that direction. You're probably okay. right. Amber wishes to work quickly toward a private and amicable resolution of all matters, but she will need Johnny's immediate cooperation to do so. To this end, please have Johnny promptly sign and return by Friday, May 27th, 2016, the enclosed notice and acknowledgement of receipt form, confirming service of the summons, petition, family law, case cover sheet, and blank response. If the request requested notice is not signed and the original executed form is not returned to me by May 27th, we will have no alternative but to arrange for Johnny to be personally served. In addition, we are requesting on Amber's behalf the following. Appropriate, I'm saying this wrong, pendente light support, which is keep me in, in the lifestyle to which I have become accustomed to. <laughs> Uh, we gotta go. We gotta find out what the real pronunciation. That's such a Monique pronunciation, right? Don't you yeah. see? She, she knows that. I can see her slapping that in a future gunk episode. Gunk episode. Um, I had nothing to give in you, my divorce, so none of these words were ever used. <laughs> you you could have nailed it for all we know. Yeah. Exclusive. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. No. I, I can't see it on my. It's too small on my. Uh... Pendente light support. All right. It's probably it's, close, close no, enough. It's probably completely butchered. I mile. don't care. I don't care. <laughs> exclusive <sighs> use, exclusive use and possession of the Black Range Rover, the vehicle she is currently driving, with Johnny to continue to make all payments for any encumbrances <laughs> thereon. Encum encumbrances. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, exclusive use and possession of 849 South Broadway, penthouse numbers 1, 3, and 5, with Johnny to continue to pay mortgage, utilities, etc., associated therewithin, and a contribution toward her reasonable and necessary attorney's fees in the amount of $100,000. You know, she wishes they were at $100,000 at this point, and $25,000 for forensic accounting costs. To be paid to my firm by close of business on May 27th, 2016. Further, I believe it would be beneficial for all if this case was assigned to a private retired judicial officer for all purposes. My proposed list of private retired, retired judicial officers is as follows. And they just name these people. The fees of the judicial officer can be paid with funds from the party's community estate. So his money. Kindly let me know at your earliest convenience if you and your client are agreeable to do so, as well as any as which judicial officers are acceptable. Upon hearing from you, I will have my assistant obtain rates and availabilities. We are indeed hopeful that we can swiftly work out mutually acceptable short and long-term solutions outside of the public eye. Thank you. I look forward to your prompt follow-up and reply. Yours very, your, oh God, very truly yours. Samantha Spector. I will, I would, that'd be great if Deb called her back and was all chugging. Speck! What's going on, Specs? I would have another word. No, we'll just like try and act, you know, just uh, and make her see how she reacts. Try, try, try to buy her uh, <laughs> or try to outbid her <laughs> in mm -hmm. a way. I thought you love. So how does this work? She demands 
this is odd numbers, right? Penthouse is one, three, and five. So now, how does this work? He he gets to stay in two and four while you're there too. No, of course not. She's well, going. Well, how does it work? How does she gets one, three, and five? So she's implying, oh, we're going to let you keep your own penthouses two and four. I don't know. I don't know if she was. She says she she gives odd numbers in that. I know that, but I don't know. There. I don't know what her plan was. Why would you just I go for all of them? I, whatever. Don't get. How does that? How does that Ivanka Ivana Trump quote go from the eighties? Oh, or, don't or, get or mad, yeah, get even, or something. Get, don't get no, even, no, no, get, get everything. Don't get, yeah, you got it. Don't get. So, even, don't get you just get say, it, say it, say it, say it, say it. Don't get even. Get everything. <laughs> Don't get evening, darling. Get everything. That was from uh, the First, First Wives Club. Club, right? That was the mm. uh, trailer. And the... <laughs> that was the big cameo. Who gives a fuck? Right, right. Oh, man. It's so, so. <laughs> She's, the, the way this is laid out, and I think this is a technique they must learn in law school, especially in her type of uh, practice, her specific when you're dealing with celebrities. It makes it look like, First of all, I don't think – she's not used to losing, right? So she just – she lays out these insane demands. It's like what they say about negotiations when you just aim so high that they have to meet you in the middle. You know what I mean? Just go way over what you think you deserve because they'll think you're, they're doing you a favor when they meet you in the middle. Mm-hmm. She, she, she writes that whole thing like she's doing you a favor. Of course. She's doing him a favor. They're they're being so lenient and generous and they could come down on so much harder. By the way, this lifestyle she's accustomed to. Explain this to me. You know, you've heard this this cliche and this has been goofed on for for since the stone age now when especially when guys are bitter about their divorce. You always, you know, especially uh, celebrity or otherwise, you see the light I mean, there's so many things in pop culture that goof on this, this lifestyle I'm accustomed to. So the bitter male is always at the short end of the stick in this case, right? It's never mm-hmm. the Tom Arnold where the guy gets to say to the woman. It's like very rarely, right? So mm-hmm. this lifestyle I'm accustomed to, bullshit. She's been with him. They've been married for uh, 15 months. Mm-hmm. She's been with him. So we're going off the marriage, right? So this is based on she's only been with him for 15 months. The lifestyle you're accustomed to. You're not accustomed to anything for, at that point. You're not accustomed well, to the, anything. Right. Well, the lifestyle she's accustomed to is the 32 years before that. Yeah. That's the lifestyle you're accustomed to. It doesn't even make sense. Like if you laid that out, like how is it to a judge? You're like, how is the lifestyle she's accustomed to 15 months Mm-hmm. In your demands, not the 32 years she lived previously. This 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 marriage is so short lived. She doesn't deserve on any level to use the phrase or the sentence, the lifestyle I'm accustomed to. Mm-hmm. Correct. But she's a she's a woman, so she's an automatic uh, victim. She's the automatic uh, David from, and he's the Goliath. So. She's able to pull on the heartstrings a little bit, you know, more successfully than he can being a woman. So she probably would have got it. She would have got a nice little closing settlement and she could have been on her way, but she didn't want to do that. She wanted more. So we'll find out what she. Um, I mean, she, did she get the Range Rover? Did, was that actually given to her what did actually besides the seven million dollars that never got donated to charity and mm-hmm. that whole saga what did she get exactly from him i don't know do we know exactly i don't know exactly if she got the master list. he may have just said no to everything i think eventually he did or she tried to look like she knows it was blowing up in her face with public sentiment just just going completely against her and mm-hmm. she went the Elon Musk. She went the uh, mollusk route. That's she, was already, like, she was already. like, she was already on just, that road. I'll just get you anything that's in there. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. Just, yeah, exactly. just, just give it back and look like and donate it to charity. And mm-hmm. it's a write-off for me. And I'll do, that kind of shit. Mm-hmm. 
Well, do you remember initially it, it should have been made a bigger deal, but when she said, I'm going to donate my divorce settlement to charity, he, Johnny yeah. Depp, immediately just donated the money to charity. Yeah. So he was out that money. he wisely money. said, let's see the paper trail. Yeah. Let's, let's see the receipts over mm -hmm. and over again. And they kept, he had his people rightfully just keep pounding her to expose her for the um, succubus charlatan she is. Yeah, well, he sent um, the check directly to the charity because he knew she yes. wouldn't do it. Like, no, 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 no. It's got to go to me first. Exactly. So, so they can, so That's I can so get great. my portion. He knew exactly what she was. I mean, he was like, mm -hmm. then if you knew this, why'd you ever get involved with her in the first place? I, I don't believe for a second he didn't know this was her right from the beginning. And I think he just started to, yeah, he said he admits this in what we're reading. He really kind of, played a Jedi mind trick on himself to fool her into thinking she was a much deeper, uh, better broad than he built. He, he built her up to be so much that she wasn't. Mm -hmm. It was easier on himself to trick him. Well, remember himself. what he said in that audio of that last phone call, he told her you don't exist. You'd never existed. Yeah. 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 No, that's a very, remember. that's a dark, dark yep. statement. So, all right. So let's get in. You want to go do the well i mean that's that letter it, reading it even the way you did with the hint of subtle sarcasm is no uh, sarcasm there it's all it's it's um legal blackmail it's mm -hmm. extortion it's legal extortion mm -hmm. and i guess that's the trick they teach them in law school that practice that type of law is that you present it where the person's threatened and you're trying to charm them while you're threatening them, acting yep. like you're doing them a favor. Mm -hmm. Always act like you're doing them a favor. Yeah, well, that's you're giving them a break. Like I said, the negotiation hour. is the negotiations is always like you know athletes do this too. Like where you know you're not worth forty million dollars, but you throw the number out there and hope they go, "No, I'm not giving you four. I'll give you I'll give you twenty eight. You're not getting forty. So the the owner acts like he's winning. But he's mm -hmm. not, because you know you're not worth even close to that. Yep. And that's kind of what they do in these extortion in the in these divorce cases. So, do you think if he hadn't just lost six hundred and fifty million, had he he probably would have just gone along with this letter instead of telling her where to shove it? No, I don't. don't I think, think so? he's. I don't think. I think he's at a point with a lot of his people and legal team. I think he's at a point where he's no, 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 she's not getting, this is exactly what she wanted. And I'm not, I'm just, I'm going to fight it to my very end. Well, good for I, him, I'm man. not, I'm not capitulating mm -hmm. to this. This is this. I'm walking right into her plan. I'm walking right into her, her clutches. This is what she from the very beginning. This is what, by the way, uh, I guess I haven't written as a news story. It's not really a news story, but I know you, you've you been such an advocate and you're still going to fly that flag. And I know you're going to, you, to your dying day, you're going to prove his innocence. The Jussie Smollett thing, I know you're, you're <laughs> always in his camp and you'll never not be in his camp. And uh -huh. that's admirable. Yeah. Go to the wall for him. That's great. Um, and I know you, you want to start a separate YouTube show. About Why are you setting me up for like <laughs> hate mail um, and that's stalkers fine. and you know, that's so fine. Uh, so they're they're now very, uh, I guess, justifiably, no pun intended, <laughs> justifiably comparing his scam with hers. They're oh, kind of they? throwing Good. them. I'm seeing this now where Amber Heard and Jess, Jussie Smollett have this kind of this there's a thing now where people are planning this crazy attention blackmail thing and no pun intended he's uh being compared to her now and, and this whole scam which is very interesting company to be lumped in they you may think, even bring it up do you think that she will go along with the the same kind of uh final word that he did after he was sentenced where the the jury reads the her, her version of it you mean yeah if she loses mm -hmm. yeah there's no way she's gonna go um uh, you got me who does that who whoever stands up and goes ah you got me 
<laughs> I, I just one time. I think that person should get off. And the first person that does that should get a free ride. I think that the first person that actually gets up and goes, "You got me. I've been lying the whole time. You got me. I just uh, want to pull that. I just uh, I'm a liar, and you got me." Well, you I know hope- that one time, just once. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, what do you got? Yours is better than mine. No, it's not. Yes, it is. I already not know it is. Different. It's all these stories are all like our kids. <laughs> all well, the then same. in that case, I don't and like we, my kids. So go ahead. I know. Well, you, as you said uh, at some point, every parent likes one kid better than another one. They're not. They'll never admit it, but they're full of shit if they don't think they're biased towards their kids. You know the. Uh, do you think uh, Archie Manning? Likes his kids all the same. The one that didn't make the NFL. No oh, God, <laughs> he's probably a much happier person, even though he's got twenty million last. Parents bank. love when their kids make them look good, and they have something to brag about in the American glamour kind of way. And so they'll always be biased towards. They'll never admit it ever, ever, ever. You think no, Depp's mom liked his his sisters the same as she liked him? No, of course. You look at her, the pictures of her uh, ranch in Kentucky that she lived in before she died. Every yep. room is just like Johnny Depp posters and yep. pictures of him on side tables. And it's so obvious. By the way, I have a great it's it's not it's too much for this episode. So it's going to be somewhere. It's got to be a Jump Street theme. I found a gaggle of old somebody posted on Instagram. I got to remember the name. I, I wish I think it's some cornball name like Johnny Depp under slash dreams or st- it's something like that <laughs> had all these old teen magazines with him, like full interviews with them. And they're pretty good. Like okay. they, get asking him these jump street questions and answers. I had never heard before mm-hmm. where he, one point she asked him, do your family watch 21 jump street? You know, this never comes up anymore. And he goes, yeah, my dad watches it every week. and gives me a critique on the phone. That kind of shit. Like, you just don't hear that anymore. No. Because my father calls me after every episode and gives me a critique of each episode. Yeah. Which is, like, so foreign to today. And all his nieces and nephews watch it, and he'll never bring that up again. That kind of – it was was cool. It was a good, like – I don't know. It was just like a flashback to that time of when he's knee-deep in it. Mm -hmm. It's like 1988, you know, right at the height of – that second season, which is like supposed to be the apex of Mania. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's get to this. Get on with this uh, news. Uh, I found something the other day, and this again, speaking of Twenty One Jump Street, like great place to segue. Gentleman named Sean Levy, who is Jewish. He is a actor, director, producer, and he was on season four. Do you remember the episode where they go to Fort Lauderdale? They trail. He's the, he's the guy they trail to go to Fort Lauderdale. He was an actor and he became a director. And, you know, he was, he was in a put just like that. Very similar in a pussy fog. He followed his girlfriend to Fort Lauderdale to try to win her back. And Penn Hall and Hanson trailed him. They were investigating a cult. Mm-hmm. And they, John Waters is in that, and Marilyn Manson is in that episode when they're playing. He's playing skee ball. Remember we showed that. It's the same episode. There's so much going on in that one episode. There's a great article about Depp and Deloise hating the jump, and Deloise talking shit about Jump Street yeah. in this article. It is phenomenal. And again, it's for another time. But they they unload on the show how they're not open to ideas. It's phenomenal. Um. Anyway, so. He's got a he's got a uh, movie coming out. It could be a Netflix series called The Adam Project. So he's promoting it. And he's kind of doing press for it. He is a pretty big time director. And the title of the article is Sean Levy, director of The Adam Project, recalls how Johnny Depp inspired his career. And this is just a couple days ago. And I'll start here. The Adam Project, Sean Levy, recalls how Johnny Depp inspired him to direct 
thanks to a conversation he had on the set of the original 21 Jump Street. Levy began his career in Hollywood as an actor in the late 80s before becoming a full-fledged filmmaker at the end of the 20th century. Uh, as a director and producer, his filmography includes Night at the Museum franchise, which is a massive hit, mm-hmm. Real Steel, and Netflix Stranger Things and Arrival. Uh, following the work on the latter, that's a Winona Ryder connection, by the way, right? Stranger Things. Following mm-hmm. the work on the latter project, Levy began moving towards science fiction with Free Guy and The Adam Project, which drops on Netflix this week. The Adam Project stars Ryan Reynolds as at another Canadian. He's Canadian too, by the way. He's from Montreal. Sean okay. Levy is the show as Ryan Reynolds. The Adam Project stars Ryan Reynolds as Adam Reed, a time traveling pilot from the year 2050, blah, 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 crashes in 2023. Buck Rogers knock off it sounds like there he teams up with 12 year old blah 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 blah. mark ruffalo's in this catherine keenan jennifer garner wow there's a lot of zoe saldana big cast in that wow in a recent interview with wsj magazine to promote the adam project levy talked about being unsure at the point at that point whether to pursue acting or directing when he first moved to los angeles decades ago earlier on he landed a guest starring role on 21 jump street where he met then lead Johnny Depp. So before their first scene together, Levy greeted Depp with a, hi, Mr. Depp. My name's Sean Levy, and I'm really excited to be here. To which a jaded Depp replies back, oh, welcome to the puppet show. You like to dance, puppet? Because that's what you're going to be doing for a living now. Dancing. Puppet. Dance, puppet. As Depp mimics a marionette showing puppets being worked. And this made Levy think, oh my god, maybe I want to be the one to direct and hold those strings. As Depp continued to be kind to the man during the shooting of the set, regardless. Uh, Depp's comments align with the eccentric and acclaimed career that would follow this actor's 21 Jump Street's Tom Hansen, who he played at the time, rebelling against his pretty boy image. Depp famously told the directors of 21 Jump Street he wanted to be fired so he could move on to work uh, what the projects he was more passionate about, like Edward Scissorhands and Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Similarly, which is a tough word to say, similarly. I know. It's impossible. When we get Stephen Williams on, he he has he overpronounces the word, and this is just like it. Particularly, <laughs> <laughs> you stop. It's harder to pronounce in, in Tanakumpo. Levy's decision to focus on or infinite Nile. <laughs> try I don't one. even Steve try Williams. anymore. <laughs> Levy's decision to focus on directing has led to a passion project in this Adam project and which has inspired Spielbergian classics like E.T. and Back to the Future, which Depp almost had, in fact. The above interview, Levy went on to talk about working with Spielberg, blah, blah, blah. So what do you think about that? That's uh, tremendous that he circled back to that and called back to that and uh, a massive compliment that he could Mm -hmm. be – a sweet guy on the set, still to that point. And there, remember, when I read you that Vince Vaughn. That's Jesus, you know. I'm not gonna get it here. That's for another time. Vince Vaughn had a very similar encounter, and again, it's season four. It's that weird episode, Mike's POV, which yeah. is shot completely. I guess it means point of view, and it's Donovan Leach Jr. is the guy, and they're investigating a teen, a teacher who um, pays a kid to murder his wife. And it's so eerie. The episode's so – it's just so dreary and eerie and weird. And Han- and Hanson has very little speaking lines, but he's in the whole thing, and he's got the hair combed over like a sheepdog. I remember reading that's one of the rebellious at things he was doing to try to get fired. He would yeah. do shit like that. And Vince Vaughn is in this episode, mm-hmm. and Vince Vaughn tells a story how Depp like stood up for him – Against the producers getting him, giving him this, this coaching. He was like, it's, I think it's the first thing Vince Vaughn ever did. Mm-hmm. I remember you told me that you read me or you. Oh, yeah, sent I'm going to read that some in full. It's yeah, a really, really good, good piece. But people don't even know it exists. Like the thing, it's, it's just good little Hollywood. If you're trying to do complimentary things towards Depp, this is the pinnacle of it. I mean, that's a crazy. And this guy, like, this is why he will have a career, mm-hmm. regardless of. This is a pretty much a power broker. Listen to that film resume this guy's got. The Night of the Museum films? He's got all the... Mm-hmm. He's 
Netflix Golden Boy doing Stranger Things directing with Nona Riders on that show. The, like that connect. Don't you think th- these are the the relationships or the th- memories people have where he'll always be in someone's good standing uh, of getting cast. No, he has I- enough power to go against the Disney's of the world. Ah, fuck you. Mm-hmm. No, I I'm think it's a. I'm gonna. I think it's a big deal that somebody is, you know, has the balls right now to compliment him in that way. Yeah, that's right. Particularly that's right. with what's going on. So that's okay. a glowing. Co- I mean, he's, this guy's literally owing his career to Depp. He's saying, I, I, as an actor, I would have just gone by the wayside and nobody would have cared. And he went on to become a, a very heavyweight director. I mean, like, like I said, those Night of the Museum movies are huge. Mm hmm. Among other things he's done. Yeah, unfortunately. So that's, that's a... Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, no, it's fine. Um, I think a lot of people, a lot of people are still very afraid to even uh, share anything that's you know a, a fraction of that positive. Oh God, my grammar today. I don't even care. Sarah, okay. can we um, in this put a very quick clip of them interacting on Jump Street in that episode? It's like a totally, three yeah. second, like the, akin to um, uh, the 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 Michael Day Bar clip. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pull it, send it to me, and I'll put it in. Yeah, okay, thank you. Just mm-hmm. to show people, he's got the. They're in Fort Lauderdale, very close to where he grew up in Miramar, too, by the way. And he's wearing like a sweatshirt and a like a base, like shitty tourist baseball hat with the you know the the trucker hat looking old baseball hats they had back then. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah, he had no that, that was his garb the whole episode. Okay. Next story. Uh, you remember Paul Barisi? Yes, I do. Anything else, Robin? <laughs> you remember Paul Bar- Paul Barisi was the private investigator the succubus people got to try to dig up dirt on Depp. He one thing he did find was that Depp was emancipated. I thought that was the most interesting. And he said he could barely find anybody ever to say a negative word about it. I could have introduced him to Michael Madsen and he didn't really do his research or uh, um, Charlie's throne, but somehow he missed them. Uh, <laughs> so um, he's considered a fixer. You know, the, the, uh, that's the new word, the Hollywood fixer who makes everything okay. And I think every major star seems to have one of these people. Mm-hmm. A la uh, Ray Donovan. I don't know if you watch that show in Showtime. That's his basically his job. It's the kind word for intimidator. You watch Breaking Bad. You remember that guy, Mike Ehrman Trout? Yes, I do. They hired as a fixer. That's another. That's a version of that too. So, was, mm-hmm. um, so he turns up again, and he got somebody interviewed him and got his opinion on what's going down, and he basically says depth and her should walk away from this and like just quash it agree to settle and don't even go and read well and what he says makes sense and we read it if pop culture had a fixer his name would be paul barisi even though his former actor and vietnam era u.s air force veteran isn't a household name the names on his client list in hollywood certainly are in addition to cases involving celebrities like michael jackson and eddie murphy he's also worked with sylvester stallone tom cruise and arnold schwarzenegger barry bonds and amber heard mm-hmm. among others who can't be named here you can't imagine he i mean you can imagine he has many, many stories to tell, some on the record, others not. The Geek Buzz caught up with him recently to discuss Hollywood secrets, lies, innuendo, and everyone's favorite topic, Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard. After his crushing UK legal defeat late in 2020, an extensive article on USA Today featured experts in defamation law, public relations, civil rights with the same message for Depp. Stop suing and start rebranding. You know, I haven't really dug into this piece. i got to have to look at that. This is the USA piece, and it's got a link here. We're going to have to read that for next time, see if we can mine some stuff from it. Add famed Hollywood private investigator Paul Barisi to this list. Johnny and Amber, he, to quote Barisi, 
quote, Johnny and Amber Heard should walk away from this, Barisi said. This time is long overdue for them to concentrate on their careers. They'd be better people for it. Barisi has had a long and successful career as a Hollywood fixer who knows where the bodies are buried. Fit and younger looking than his actual age would suggest, he speaks in half sentences, diving headlong into any subject before stopping short and saying things like, you know what, I really can't tell you that. Uh, It would just open a really big can of worms. Though his client list is a virtual Rolodex of Tinseltown royalty, he is perhaps best known as the investigator in the Amber Heard legal team to hire to locate people who had supposedly been abused by Depp. Barisi readily admits, though, not everyone he contacted was willing to confide in him. But he did talk to dozens of people from Depp's past and wasn't able to find anyone among them who had anything bad to say about him. And it gives the impression of knowing more than he's revealed on this topic. He really does. Or really, in any case he's worked on, his financial welfare depends on discretion, at least until he gets an advance on a tell-all book that he surely will write one. Well, I can't read, read that. That's, that'll be massive if he does that. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of guys out there like that who could do a tell-all. Mm-hmm. I so, would read it. Uh, Okay, it actually goes on a little more here. I thought it Barisi considers himself to be in Depp's corner, though, now. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah. But not for the reasons uh, who've taken sides in the form of Pirates of the Caribbean stars legal proceedings might think. I, quote, I relate to and empathize with Depp because we both had horrible childhoods from what I've uncovered and cruel parents he has. I believe he's been misguided and because he grew up without any real authority figure to guide him and champion him. Uh, after appearing on part one of the Discovery Plus documentary Johnny vs. Amber, which we haven't fully fleshed out yet. Um, I guess it's for another episode. It's very disappointing. It's very half-baked and it's missing things. It was mm-hmm. just – I could do – so it's too short, which he believes was balanced and not hard-hitting enough. And the entire Depp Heard affair has been – the top of his mind for the U.S. Air Force veteran. As the two prepare for their rematch in Fairfax, Virginia courtroom next month, he believes the past offers sage advice for Mr. Depp. When Johnny Depp was only – oh, get this. This is, this, is, this is what really struck me during this. This is really – this is digging. i got to give the guy credit, man. This is, this is good stuff, what he says here. Quote, when Johnny Depp was only six – the Corbin, Kentucky Sunday Times publicly humiliated Johnny's father with a feature story headlining his firing as the city's manager. You know, he's like a civil engineer. Mm-hmm. So he was like kind of working for the city. You know, he did the same thing in Miramar, and I think that's where the divorce can be. The time he got divorced or separated, he states, despite his disagreement with their reasoning, the elder Depp took to the public embarrassment in stride and walked away with a positive attitude and with better opportunities in the future. Decades later, Barisi continues, Johnny would also face humiliation after he was cut from two major Hollywood franchises, and so he should at least consider how his father handled that similar adversity. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. (laughs) Owensboro uh, city job versus... uh, Town job versus Disney yeah, and, the, and Warner Brothers the public. The culture, same the temperature of the culture is the same. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's, I see no differences. And first of all, if he thinks that documentary was balanced, I would like to watch the version that he watched. I know. His version, he actually was balanced. Nobody else was. Mm-hmm. He, he was probably balanced. only watched his parts then. I, I, I think you're right. He's fast forwarded to himself. Mm hmm. Though he believes Depp should bail now from any future litigation, how Depp handles the next trial's decision will help determine his future. Uh, despite having legal lifeline, despite having the services of respected, very high-powered attorney in Ben Chu, Team Depp late last month retained the services of Kathleen Zellner, an attorney with an extensive track re- record of overturning court decisions. Her firm is, perhaps, best known for getting Steve Avery's original murder case tossed out. I still haven't watched that thing on Netflix with her, Making of a Murder. I, I need to watch that. It's I just want to see what there. she's made of. Oh, you didn't You didn't change the programming? You usually do. No. Didn't Jackson Delabate and you in cahoots of changing their programming? No. Well, yeah, you don't have that power that you did. I have no power in life. I don't believe that. You should. <laughs> I don't believe. We don't believe that. We don't. 
this you have the uh, gravitas of Sasha Wass in your voice. Mm. Yeah. Wass. Uh, I'm, Bravo he- Wass. I'm simply here because I can press the edit button. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> you're, so, you're so self-deprecating. <laughs> Sorry. This was a signal to some Mr. Depp. This was a signal that Mr. Depp, this is actually a good point here. This is a signal uh, to some that Mr. Depp had either lost faith in Chu or is already anticipating an appeal. Barisi believes Depp wants to cover his bases and not end up as he did in the loss in London without a lifeline. You know, quote, if he wants to appeal, he may as well have the best, unquote. Uh, barring any late settlement, Barisi says Depp should move on regardless of the trial's result. If Johnny can accept this outcome, win or lose or draw, with as much grace as possible, he'd be a better man for it. He has a die-hard fan base that will never, ever abandon him. However, the never-ending feud between he and his ex-wife, Amber Heard, is growing very tiresome to many. And Johnny should keep that in mind before further damaging his career. Mm-hmm. Thoughts? Yeah, he's an idiot. That's my thought. I mean, no I problem. understand I, I, that perspective. I do. People are getting tired. If you're not like a super invested in this, you're getting tired of hearing about it, and you're going. His his now make no mistake, Depp's actual film career, from a choice artistic standpoint, has taken a hit regardless of this, mm-hmm. and he does need to hire me as a script user. <laughs> Well, he just hasn't from a yet. artistic standpoint. Mm-hmm. I agree. Because it has you know, got wa- senile. Yep. All right. So and cash gra- and cash grabby and stuff. But mm-hmm. I don't think he's read the Jacobs transcript, which explains. <laughs> we know he hasn't. I mean, if you're investigating, I would think you, I would hope you would. Wouldn't mm-hmm. that be like the easiest thing in the world to just sit there and read something that was served to you on a on a platter? The stuff with his dad is fascinating. We don't know a ton about his dad. Little stuff ekes out, and that's uh, that's going back. He's going. This motherfucker's going back to the seventies to find paperwork on his dad getting publicly humiliated in a civil engineer situation. I that's know. A, it's crazy shit. That's a re- where do you find that from? I mean, you could be talking like that could be like the early seventies or something. Mm-hmm. Where's he getting that documentation from? I don't know. I'm sure it's all uh, filed publicly with the city or something. I I couldn't tell you, but it, it doesn't. I don't know that it's that difficult to get that documentation. If you anybody's know, Corbin, cared enough, you know, before that to even try. I mean, you know how hard hitting the Corbin Kentucky Sunday Times is. I mean, it's right next to the New York Times and Washington Post. It's the it's the paper you don't want up your mm-hmm. ass. I know. You know, that could just destroy <laughs> mm-hmm. the Ronan Corbin Farrow Kentucky is, Sunday. What? Ronan Farrow is writing the next piece and <laughs> dropping it to the All the big Kentucky sports rag. writers want to. I wonder if Hunter S. Thompson had a tryst with that as a sports writer with mm. that paper in Kentucky. Gross. Gross. You got should they, else? Should... Okay, sorry. He's got a point, though. He's got a point. He does, mm-hmm. but if I'm Depp, there's no way you get to the five yard line and punt. Uh, this is just it's our buddy um, Johnny Bye Bye on the Radio Gunk Forum in the Wino Forever Deppening thread had gave us a heads up on this too. I think I saw this and I didn't write it down that the Edward Scissorhand House in Tampa Bay is uh, do we call it Tampa or Tampa Bay? I don't even, I never can. I'm, I'm always in an NFL state of mind. I always say Tampa Bay. Do you just say Tampa or um, is it the same thing? Are they two different? The Edward Scissorhands house is for sale. So I'm just going to Tim Burton's 1990 goth classic Edward Scissorhands was filmed all around Tampa Bay. And now the famous house from the movie is once again for sale located at 1774 Tin Smith Circle in Lutz. What the fuck is that? The 1,432 square foot fictional Boggs house where Edward trimmed the hedges to look like dinosaurs and stabbed the waterbed features three bedrooms and two bathrooms. Most importantly, it comes with all the priceless collection of memorabilia from the movie, says this listing. The home was recently turned into a free museum by the current owner, Joey Lacalzi. 
who purchased the property at an auction September of 2020. It's crazy, said Lacalzi to the laughing in Tampa Bay. We bought it, a running theme park with a worldwide following for $230,000. Lacalzi told CL that was essentially fate when he won the bid since he worked on the set of the film as a dishwasher. Oh, wow. What the hell? After Lacalzi moved in, he rehabbed and transformed the house into a live-in homage to Tim Burton masterpiece. Scissor Land, as he calls it now, features daily tours and film screenings and the original props from the film like Kim Boggs' purse, the original kitchen wallpaper, and the scissor hands uh, used to trim the dinosaur hedge as well as Depp's rolling papers and oh, heroin God. needles. Mm-hmm. It's honestly... <laughs> It's honestly killing him to sell the house, says the listing agent, Megan Hartnell, to CL. They have twin grandbabies on the way. Wow, so this guy's got grandkids. Now. That's how much time's gone by, you know? Yeah, how long ago was that, With 30 this, years ago? Yeah, it's more uh, 32 years ago, 31 mm-hmm. years ago. They need a bigger place. Uh, he would love for it to stay as a museum, but at the same time, he understands that it might not happen. Hartnell says the home comes with props and memorabilia because Lacalzi just felt it should stay with the property. The current asking price now, $699,000. There you go. Mm-hmm. $700,000. It's like really close to $700,000. And the listing agents are Megan Hartnell and Stanley Lewis III of Century 21 Affiliated. Do you think and anybody you see a picture out of it, it's phenomenal. We should put that in here. It's really okay. cool. It's very like uh, frosty. Mm-hmm. It's very white and it's almost like he's making it look like it's snowed. It's really cool looking. It's got okay. all the bushes the same and she Depp's landscaping company is there doing all the landscaping. <laughs> that was that would be the scissor hand, right? Open a landscaping company. Daily Avon deliveries. It would clean and... up, yeah, yeah. Drop by story, right? So this is the last one. Uh, and it is got a gentleman you're familiar with who you've tried to out on several occasions. Mm-hmm. Curiosity killed Tom Cruise's shot as playing Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> From Hammer Horror to Grand Guggnall, homages to biopics of artists and creative visions as strange of his own, Tim Burton has amassed quite a body of dark, off-kilter work over the course of his career. One near constant at the heart of Burton cinema is Johnny Depp, the filmmaker's steady collaborator dating back to 1990s Edward Scissorhands. And yet, that movie's titular role nearly went to just about the last actor you might associate with the term Burton-esque. Yes, I mean Tom Cruise. The indefatigable star of the Mission Impossible movie series did, in fact, have his eye on playing Edward at one point. But he had a hard time wrapping his head around the character's fantastical nature. Cruise wanted to know Edward went to, how he went to the bathroom. Writer Caroline Thompson told Days as part of an outlet's coverage of the film's 25th anniversary in 2015. He was asking the kinds of questions about the character that can't be asked for this character. If you're still having a hard time wrapping your head around the idea of Cruz, who spent much of the last 20 years playing either Ethan Hunt and similarly unkillable leads portraying the gentle, soft-spoken Edward and Burton's gothic horror meets 90s suburban tale, then it's worth recalling that the actor was in a very different place in his career back then. Let's break it down. Wind the clock back to Scissorhands being cast, you'll find that both Cruz and Depp were in transitional phases as actors, where Depp was looking to leave his days as a teen heartthrob behind him after starring in TV's 21 Jump Street. Cruz is taking steps to move past, playing the young hotshots who gets much-needed lesson in humility and empathy as he portrayed in The Color of Money and Rain Man. After picking up an Oscar for his 1989 turn in Born on the Fourth of July, Cruz settled into a groove as a character actor in 1990, working to top-tier directors like Rob Reiner, Sidney Pollack, Neil Jordan, Stanley Kubrick. The decade saw him tackling diverse roles from the Stat interview with the vampire, which Depp was supposed to be in, and turned down. Mm-hmm. Interview with the vampire is one of those movies that came up over and over again. Depp turned in. To P.T. Anderson's to Magnolia. Yeah, you can see it. He would have been, made a better Louie. I think, I, th- I think it was the Brad Pitt role that depth her down. Yeah, he would have made a better Louie. I didn't – you know, I never really saw the whole thing. You're crazy. You need to watch Is that. Is it horrible? Are oh, you like that? No, I love that movie. You hate everything. You like that? 
it's a good movie. Yep, I would okay. watch it no, again. No, maybe I maybe it is. And let's not forget the titular superstar sports agent who rediscovers his heart in Jerry Maguire, which Depp is rumored to be offered that as well. Or I can't see them I giving that know. over Cruz no. at the time. Mm-hmm. That he I was, was I've never, I've never been it. impressed with that movie. It's cool. I mean, it's got some mm-hmm. sports. You just like I mean, it's a, it's a sports movie. No, I don't. No, you know, it's funny. Like they use the Arizona Cardinals as the the team that uh, Cuba Gooding plays for. Mm-hmm. It's um, it's overrated without a doubt. It's so many lines that come out of the help. You know, help me, help you, and the. You had me at hello and that whole shit with Renee Zellweger and there's a lot of stuff that came out of that movie. Um, the sports agent aspect is kind of interesting, but it's overrated without a doubt. It's kind of corny. How did you miss the most infuriating pop culture line from that movie? Kuba Gooding. Yeah. Show me the money. Uh huh. Yeah. I was so done with it the me. third time I heard it. I was done. Yep. Who's the Who's the little kid in that? Jonathan Lipnicki. Lipnicki. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then right. you got to hear endlessly how a human head weighs eight pounds. I don't give a fuck. Artie Lang uh, had a cut cameo in, uh, in that. Remember talking about that? He's somehow. Um, I'm trying to remember. There's so many weird things about that movie. Mm-hmm. Isn't it crazy that what's from? Um, oh God, Travolta's wife. Kelly Preston. Kelly Preston passed away. Isn't that crazy? What was mm-hmm. that? What was her cause of death? That's so breast bizarre. Cancer. Was it breast cancer? And no one knew about it. Is that a, is that a Scientology yes, thing? Yes, it's cover a Scientology up? thing. Oh, it's so sick. Mm-hmm. God damn it. You're also what you hope for. I know too much. Um, what you hope for I know is. You love Scientology. No, well, it's not the typical Scientology. Um, thing where the medication is held back because of what they believe. So you would hope that her being, you know, maybe as famous as she was, that she was allowed certain things because they kind of, you know, kissed ass of the celebrity uh, right. Scientologist. You, so could, you would course. hope that she was allowed her proper medication to fight the breast cancer. Right. Because, but their son, you know, they didn't believe in providing him with his medication to stop his seizures. And that's what he died of. So who knows? But yeah, that was that was a shocking death. They released nothing about it's really her breast great. Cancer and there's a, there's a couple situations like that where there's just a death laid upon the general public. You're like, what? Like a celebrity out of nowhere. You're like, oh, he's dead. Mm-hmm. What? And I've with forgotten. her, you're always thinking Scientology, and you're going, those motherfuckers covering up everything, and mm-hmm. that's just I, too weird. I had forgotten that they had recently, before she died, had another child, like a little boy. I forget his name, but yeah, they had their daughter, Ella, and they had the older son, Jet. Jet. They had Ella, and then they had a younger son. I forget his name, but I had forgotten about that until I saw, like, they released a family photo from a Christmas party this last year. I Who's that little blonde kid? Oh, yeah, it's the, their son. Yeah. Sad, sad story all around. Cameron Crowe um, obviously directed, you know, Jerry Maguire, and he's... He's got a really good filmography. If you like over the, I mean, there's a couple of little misfires and stuff, but that's a guy who have always wanted Depp to work with. He directed, uh, 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 I try to comprehend, but I got a dyslexic heart. Singles. You know, I'm clipping that because I need you to, I needed you to do that like weeks ago for me. Oh, you're going to use that? Yeah, possibly, unless you record another one for me. Okay. No, it's fine. Whatever you want to. <laughs> Behind the scenes stuff. Sorry, everybody. Uh, great, 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 great musician, artist, rock and roll, all the godfather of alternative rock. Uh, Paul Westerberg does that. Mm-hmm. He's the spearheads that soundtrack. A lot of the the great alternative bands in that Seattle scene are inspired by. He's he's the guy is really. I think that's that's the guy I wish Depp would buddy up with. You know, they both dated Winona Ryder, so I guess you can't. Of course they did. <laughs> I wish he not dated in the rock scene. I know, I know. He's from Minnesota, which is like her connection. I'm with the band. Of course, Pamela yeah, that... Daybar is nothing on Winona Ryder. Uh, you're correct. Shockingly, <laughs> Pamela Daybar wrote a book about her uh, her uh, turnstile uh, band dates, and uh, she yeah, she has nothing on Winona. The replacements, my cousin's favorite, uh, my cousin's idol, Paul Westerberg. 
Mm-hmm. And it's a good idol to have. He's rarely ever sold out. You know, he's good. It's tough to punch holes in his career. Yep. Uh, so let me just fit, wrap this up with Cruz. This is all to say that it's easier to imagine Tom Cruise of the 90s being interested in playing Scissorhands than it is to envision the one that we know today tackling the character that's so vulnerable and sensitive. He might have landed that role, too, had he been just a little less focused on the practical side of Edward's curious nature. Part of the delicacy of the story was not answering questions like, how does Tom, how does Edward go to the bathroom? How did he live without eating all these years, Thompson noted. Tom Cruise is certainly unwilling to be in the movie without those questions being answered. Cruz, like any other actor, had his fair share of near misses when it comes to roles that could have taken off a very different direction. This is interesting. I'd seen this. I remember reading magazines. I was a big magazine head at the time, and this constant comic book. This is before the comic book movie explosion happened. Through the 90s, there was all sorts of rumors that never happened of some of the major franchises, especially Spider-Man, over James Cameron and Spider-Man. And he famously had two brushes with the superhero genre, the first of which came back in the late 80s when the now-defunct canon films was developing a Spider-Man movie with an eye on casting him to play Peter Parker. Two decades later, Cruz would also find himself in the running to portray Tony Stark in Iron Man role in 2008 that might have dramatically changed the lineup. of the. By the way, Depp also was in the running for Stark, and he would have been a phenomenal Tony Stark. I Depp know looks that. like him. If you, I will take – I'm going to do this for this as well. I'm going to juxtapose a picture of Depp at the, I believe, Cannes Film Festival um, where he has the cheesy Tony Stark mustache. I mean, there's a couple of this and then the darkest features you could have and the short hair, which he owns, you know, which is way better than long hair with him and put it together with the typical picture of Stark and uh, not the movie Stark, but the comic book Stark. And I'll put them together. It is perfect and Depp can do snarky like nobody's business when he wants to if you see we talked about once upon a time in Mexico last time and uh, there's a lot of the stark snarkiness in there and uh, not that Downey doesn't do a great job of stark but Depp could bring a different thing to it and I think he would have been I would have loved for that he didn't do it because of uh, pirates he was filming all those redundant pirate movies Mm -hmm. in and around the Iron Man series so it was constantly a uh, conflict. Yeah. Favreau said that he wanted him for Iron Man 1. Yeah, originally. that's a big miss. That would have been great. I would way rather him play Tony Stark than – after the, after a couple Pirates movies, okay, good. That's enough. I would I would have been amazing if he were, if he were Stark. Mm-hmm. Allow I him to, and I then he needs see. to move on. Yep. Exactly right. Uh, as funny as it is, picture Cruz becoming Burton's muse on screen, surrogate instead of Depp. Think of all the pale makeup and top hats he missed out on. I doubt that him starring Edwin Scissorhands would have affected his career and all that greatly. Even Cruz had been willing to set his questions about Edward's bodily functions aside and play the characters written in his evolution. By the uh, action movie star was still years away. It's unlikely Burton's romantic, melancholic fairy tale had the power to nudge Cruz off that course entirely. Okay. Um, I don't entirely disagree with Cruz asking that question. Is that not a fair question to ask? Like you go, yeah, I, 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 I don't. We're, think we're setting deal. it in the real world, mm-hmm. right? I mean, he's still living with a Burton's idea of suburban family. Burton's not known for um, story and tropes, and you know, he, he can punch holes in his stuff all the time, as brilliant as he can be in certain areas. I don't think it's ridiculous that an actor goes, yeah, how does he go to what, you know, how does he eat? How does he, what's the back? Would it be so difficult to show those things? No. And what's it's the like, big deal? How dare you ask these questions? What's the big right. deal? Yeah. Who wouldn't ask that? Yeah. But at Depp's case, he's so desperate to get off jump street mm-hmm. and he kind of gets it and he has a simpatico with Bert. He Depp, obviously, I think Depp has those same questions. He just doesn't want to rock the boat. He's like, you know, just, yeah, I'm lucky to, Tracy Jacobs got me this meeting. I'm just going with anything they say. I'm not going to mm-hmm. pull any kind of creative bullshit with them. And mm-hmm. I'm just going to go along with everything he says. And, it, you know, later on, I'll, I'll get difficult later, but right now I'm going to play ball. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I just don't think it's ridiculous. Cruz asked those questions. I don't, I don't. No, and I don't think deal. it's ridiculous that Burton shows how that is done either. Mm-hmm. The movie's kind of short, right? I mean, we, we said it's an hour and four. It could be easily half hour longer. 
Okay, that's all I got. Okay. Which is a lot. It's all right. It is a lot. Hold on just a second. Okay. Let me switch to transcript mode. Uh, and I'm getting get nervous. Going to be grilled by Sasha Wass, and uh, mm-hmm. nothing makes me tremble more than the wrath of Wass. In Zoom UK. into your tiny font, pops. <laughs> oh, sorry for my. Uh, sorry, I don't have <laughs> the acute uh, X-ray vision you have, Toots. No, I'm looking at this stuff, and my eyes are blurring over. So can't wait. Yeah, I had to. I had to get it and uh, blow it up on a computer screen. Because mm-hmm. the tra- and I couldn't appreciate you more, um, sending me that version. But I, I had to put it on a oh, computer screen. Whatever worked. Okay, so we're on one seventy one. One seventy one, line eighteen. I'm first, so let me know when you're ready. I am ready. Let me okay. just go into depth mode here and. <laughs> I'm just trying to, you know, my um, my process. I'm pick, I've, oh I have skull God. rings on now and scarves. That I'm I'm actually wearing scarves and skull rings and. Are you tattooing your vision your glasses hands? and ta- Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so you're you're on 18. Okay, let's go. I'm just I'm just trying to get this. This is new for me because I'm I'm now going to be scrolling from a computer as opposed to reading from a transcript i think like everything else about you you will find success i don't know about that you're, you're gonna be you're gonna make it pal i'll find a way to butcher okay okay thanks right. christopher cross <laughs> mr depp i'm gonna ask you now about some events in march 2013 all right oh uh, yes <laughs> but before i do can you just answer this question yes or no were you taking cocaine in march 2013 oh here we go yeah um <laughs> It's very difficult to recollect if I was taking cocaine in March of 2013. It's possible. You do not remember, but it's possible? Um, I, okay, ready? Mm-hmm. I do not remember. All right. The first time Miss Heard met the monster was in early 2013 when you and she were in her house together. And I'm going to ask you some questions about that. Uh, yes. Do you accept that you spent some time in her house in Orange Avenue, was it? Um, yes. Before she moved into the Eastern Columbia building? Yes. She lived there with her sister, Whitney? There was a period, yes, where her sister lived there. And you and Whitney got on very well together? Uh, yes. At that time? Yes. And Whitney would really would really act as an intermediary between the two of you if you had an argument in this sort of period? Uh, You know, she has attempted to act as an intermediary. Yes, she has. Right. A number of times. All right. I think you felt so close to Whitney at that stage that you saved your telephone number on your phone as Sis? Uh, Yes. You called her Sis? Uh, Yes. She was not your sister. She was Ms. Hurd's sister, but she was family as far as you felt at the time? Uh, yes. Now, you in March of 2013, I suggest, were taking cocaine and you'd fallen off the wagon. You know what I mean by that? It, it's an expression that you used yesterday? Uh, indeed, yes. You were taking both drink and recreational drugs, in particular cocaine, in March 2013? Um, if you say that, uh, is, uh, that is a question, Miss, uh, Mr. Depp, I, I, um, oh, I'm sorry, again, I do not remember if I was taking cocaine. All right. You have had a tattoo. I think you have a number of tattoos, but I want to ask you about that one, in, that one particular tattoo that you had put on one of your arms, I think, when you were having a relationship with Winona Ryder? Uh, yes, ma'am. After you separated from Winona Ryder, you changed the tattoo read Winona Forever? Uh, yes, it did. And after you separated from Miss Ryder, you took the last syllable of her name, and it was Wino Forever. And that is how it read? Um, yes. I mean, that's also my favorite podcast currently. (laughs) 
it's that called presum- the deepening vinyl forever kind of thing. <laughs> that was presumably that presumably was a joke when you did it at the time. Um, no, it seemed to be, yeah. When did you have that tattoo shortened? The name shortened? Was it years and years ago? Uh, yes, many, many years ago. I'm not going to trouble you with the exact date. By March 2013, you had made an attempt at detox because we know about your text between Elton John and Charlie Dunnett and 100 Days and all the rest of it. Yes. But by March 2013, you had fallen off the wagon. I appreciate uh, you say you do not remember. I, I think Mr. Depp was not, he did not I remember he was taking cocaine in March uh, 2013. I'm, I'm not sure if he answered specifically as to whether he had fallen off the wagon. All right. Do you remember whether you had fallen off the wagon in March 2013? Oh, uh, yes. I mean, I, I'd fallen off the wagon. You had fallen off the wagon. And how did that fall take place? What were you taking that was not part of your detox regimen? Um, I took to drinking uh, whiskey. All right. So it was just whiskey or any other? Um, and wine. And you're still not sure about the cocaine, yes? I, you know, I'm really not sure. And you were drinking on this occasion that I'm about to ask you about. Uh, Miss, let me just establish this. Uh, when you fall off the wagon, as we have been calling it, do you feel very disappointed with yourself? Of course. And you do not really like to have your nose rubbed in that, that you failed, do you? Um, oh, um, I, you, I, I suppose, you know, the image of having my nose rubbed in something is, I, I would say, not a, a very nice way of dealing with someone who, uh, especially if you, you think that they have a drinking problem of some kind, Rubbing their noses in it is, in my opinion, the wrong way to go. That's that's what people have done with dogs for years. Let us agree to this way of putting it, that you were sensitive having fallen off the wagon and felt that it was rather unkind to make a point of reminding you that you had fallen off the wagon or laughing at you because you had fallen off the wagon? Well, um, it was most clear that I had fallen off the wagon with regard to my relationship with Miss Hurd at the time. March, um, how it read, um, 2013, I believe that day was the one you were referring to is when we were at her apartment. Shall I ask you the questions rather than you anticipating what they're going to be, but you're absolutely right. Oh, well, good, good, good. It was when Miss Heard laughed at the tattoo, which read "Wino Forever," because at that stage, you, in effect, were acting like a wino, like an alcoholic, and you felt very sensitive about that. Do you agree? Uh, I would say that I initially was, of course, you know, very disappointed in myself that after a uh, hundred and sixty something days, or whatever, um, it was I, I'd broken my sobriety. So yeah, I was disappointed. I'm asking you about Miss Heard laughing at the tattoo in the context of you having broken your sobriety. Uh, yes, ma'am. I- I'm answering you. Mr. Depp, you were going over something that we have passed. I'm sorry to have have to keep you to the point. But as my lord said yesterday, I have a lot of ground to cover. And it would help the court if you answered the question specifically rather than cover answers to previous questions. I understand that sometimes that can sometimes be difficult for somebody who is not used to court arrangements. But I'm going to cut in if I think you are going off on a bit of a tangent. I hope you will forgive me. Uh, certainly. Uh, just may I say like one thing? Could you answer the question, please? Well, can you repeat the question? The question was, do you accept that Ms. Heard was making a joke um, out of your tattoo, Why No Forever? You know, I do not recall. You do not recall that? Uh, any conversation or... And uh, I suggest that provoked disappointment first of all in you and then anger in you but you do not remember the incident so you cannot say uh i do not recall any argument about any of my tattoos you know what let me stop it for a minute Mm -hmm. we're on line 14 by the way 177 Mm -hmm. um that's an awful specific conversation to forget yeah i know someone's lying here either he's lying or she's making up 
the wino forever tattoo because it's very out there kind of thing. I mean, when Christ's sake, we named the podcast this. I know. I think it's always been, I think she's picking at it because it's something, remember back in the day, it was kind of a joke. Yeah. That he, he turned that tattoo into wino forever. Yeah. People kind of mocked him. Yep. People kind of mocked him a little bit for it. I think that's just her way of mocking it and bringing it back up. It's, well, it's too also, embarrassing somehow. Yeah. It's also a way of saying, oh, look at how cavalier he is about alcoholism. Mm-hmm. Um, he's proud of it. He loves it. It's a tattoo. It's your, your, your body's a journal, right? I mean, you're, you're, this is what you're passionate about drinking. So mm-hmm. you have a, a tattoo about wine. And it's a double meaning, but it's a joke, but not really because you love drinking. And this is really who you are, drunk all the time. Mm-hmm. It says everything. I think it's, it's also that. With the way, too, because we're about to get into it. I'm familiar kind of with this incident. But the way that it's described that he slapped her around the room and onto the floor and so forth. I don't. She would have, like, permanent scars on her face from all these vicious beatings that he yes, supposedly gave her. It, and it's so overdramatic. And she flung around the room and he slapped her. She hit the floor numerous times. Oh, please. Okay. I'm saying, like, you could – in this age of, you know how they catch students plagiarizing now mm-hmm. where they, I think the move is I've heard they, I don't know, they have some program where they'll copy and paste a paragraph from the student's essay or, or screed or manifesto and put it in the program and it catches them plagiarizing stuff. Mm-hmm. I think you could do that with her takes stuff and then throw it in and go, Oh, that's a movie. Look at that. That's a TV show. You know, she's yeah. stealing from certain movie plots or TV. Yeah, that, I have, I have no doubt these. she saw these incidents happen to do other people or read about them in a book somewhere. Yeah. I could write her own life to her. her. I, her I've mother said last time that this. her, right. Exactly. Her parents, she's taking things mm-hmm. from her, her parents. Absolutely. And, um, grafting them on depth. I think you're on 14 now. <laughs> Yep. I'm going to put, oh gosh, I'm going to put my case unless Mr. Sherborne objects. You then, Mr. Depp, slapped Miss Hurt across the face. It was the first time that you'd ever used violence against her? Um, That is not correct. That is untrue. As you can appreciate, I'm putting what I suggest happened. And as my Lord said yesterday, you have to say something. So it is untrue. If that is your account, that is perfect. That is the perfect answer to deal with that. Uh, did not happen. That is what you're saying. You slapped her more than once because you were slapped. You After you slapped her the first time, she did not react. She eyeballed you. She just stared at you, and that made you more angry, and you slapped her again? Um, here we go with the word, my favorite word, one of my favorite mm-hmm. words, my new favorite word. Um, that is patently untrue. And this if I happened, didn't say patently, you wouldn't believe me? <laughs> this happened in exactly the same way a third time. So altogether, you slapped her three times on that occasion at her house in Orange Avenue? Uh, I'm sorry, but that is also untrue, and you are mistaken. I understand what you're saying. Very soon you came to your senses. It was an outburst of anger on your part, and very soon you came to your senses, and you realized what you had done, and you broke down. You broke down, and you started crying, and you started apologizing, and you told her you would never hit her again? Um, I did not hit Miss her, so you there explain- is no apologizing. You explained to her, I suggest, that the sudden loss of temper was not you, but it was your sickness. Is that how you sometimes blame your behavior on an illness or a sickness? Uh, no, ma'am. You told her, I suggest for the first time about the person you had been calling the monster, your alter ego. The person who took over when you were under the influence of drink or drugs? No, ma'am. Now, Miss Hurt explained to you at some stage during the relationship that she knew all about addiction because her father and... Indeed, also her mother had been drug abusers. Yeah, you see, this is where we're talking about the conflating where she's mm-hmm. taking stuff from her parents. It's just no doubt. I have no yeah. doubt she's doing that now. We had a theory that was true. Now I just have no doubt. Yeah, same. Um, just a minute. Do, uh, do you agree um, that is what she said to you? I, I do. Uh, yes, Ms. Hurd did say to me that her father had um yes you became quite close to her father you were in touch with him over various critical points of your relationship with miss heard were you not 
well, I was very close with her father and very close with her mother. I mean, we're five years apart. You know, <laughs> again, it's again, let's we say this a lot. It's like you know, I, I can't reiterate this enough. It's so funny. We think of them. Sometimes we lose our uh, timeline, and we think, oh well, Depp and Amber Heard are peers, and they're of the same, and they're just two crazy kids. No, no, he's almost 25 years older than he is much closer to her parents age Mm -hmm. than he is with her it's like not even i mean there's almost i'd say at least 15 years closer to their age i think her parents are in their mid 60s yeah if they had her young Mm -hmm. too it could be more it could they could be younger than that i I, again they're like in their mid 60s or something um mid to early could even be early and he's he's going to be 59 in June. Mm-hmm. He's much closer to their parents and having things in common and shit. It's just so weird to think about that. Like when you put it, you know, you it's civilian terms. Like, in that right world, now. it's normal. Okay. Uh, you knew that David Hurd had had a problem with drug addiction. You discussed it with him? Um, I Yeah. Yes, I did. Miss Hurd explained to you, not in the presence of her father, that she had seen her father try to get clean and she knew how difficult it could be. And she felt she, Miss Hurd, could help you. That is what she said to you. Was it not that she could help you with your multiple addiction problems? I I do not recall that she said she could help me at all. You actually did want somebody to give you support, did you not, with your sobriety problems or lack of sobriety problems? She's upset in there. Right? Yeah. Um, I had some very good friends who um had been through, who had been sober for many many years, who I sought counsel from. You know, uh, from uh, made uh, you angry. Oh shoot! I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm. I'm, I'm the, the way this is formatted. I'm I know. That. Um, I so I sought counsel from friends who had been through the same thing that I'd been through, similar things. Charlie Sheen. in your witness statement and my lord it is paragraph 18 d i will read it out to you unless you want to check um i'm reading it out correctly but i'm sure mr sherborne will correct me if i'm wrong thank you what you said was this i was in recovery from drug addiction during significant parts of my marriage to amber instead of supporting my sobriety she often encouraged me to drink alcohol and take drugs even though she knew my relationship with alcohol and drugs was a difficult one Then you go on to paragraph 23. She never supported me in my attempts to be strong and to avoid alcohol and drugs. Do you maintain those two statements are true? Do you want me to take them one at a time? I would say that at the time, Ms. Heard was not, there was no mention of me having a problem drink. As the whiskey that I was drinking in Ms. Heard's apartment was in her freezer. Just a second. I'm going to stop you. I'm terribly sorry. I wanted to. Um, you were answering a question I did not ask. I should have been specific. Well, it's it's part of the same. Um, In your statement, you are not talking about March, so I've moved on from March 2013. Where are we now? To a general statement you made, which was, I was in recovery from drug addiction during significant parts of my marriage to Amber. So I'm presuming you were talking about your whole relationship with Amber. All right, then, uh, yes. Am I right? These are your words in your statement. You said, I was in recovery from drug addiction during a significant part of my marriage to Amber. Uh, Yes, ma'am. That is what you said? Yes. And that is true? That is true, yes. Then where I want your help. Quote, instead of supporting my sobriety, she often encouraged me to drink alcohol and take drugs, even though she knew my relationship with alcohol and drugs was a difficult one for me. End quote. Do you maintain that was true? Uh, yes. So you were saying she was actually encouraging you to fall off the wagon at times? I would say um, her actions were not of one who was supporting me. You know. All right. I understand that because you go on to say she never supported me in my attempt to be strong and to avoid alcohol and drugs. Yes. Is that true? Uh, It is. So it is not true, is it? She never supported me. 
I'm just reading the words so you can consider the answer. She never supported me. Ultimately, um, the answer I would say is no, she did not. She never supported you? I would ultimately say she did not. I suggest that is not true. After this first time when you hit her and apologized and promised it would never happen again, she understood the problem of your drug taking and having a background that she did not have a drug taking father. She was very much offering her help and support to you. I would say that if she was supportive, it was a very strange way to support me. You would go around and take cocaine at her house, would you not? Sorry, I should have been specific. At Orange Avenue. Quite likely on occasion. Can we be quite clear? Miss Hurd had told you that when she was 18, she was regularly taking cocaine. Do you remember that? Do you agree with that? I, I would agree with that. Um, she told me that she was 16. Jesus. We need not dwell on whether it was 16 or 18. Oh, oh, oh I'm terribly sorry you asked me the question. She was worried about the cocaine habit that she had developed and she stopped altogether? Yes. And she never took cocaine in your presence or your company, or as far as you knew, during the time of your relationship? Uh, no, yes, she did. You think she did? Uh, just a moment. I, I miss, miss her did take cocaine in your presence? Uh, she said, you know, she asked if uh, Miss Heard had ever touched cocaine. Something to that effect. You know. Maybe I should be more careful. No, 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 no. Um, I'd like to say that she did. Um because there were many times in our relationship early on where not only did she chop the cocaine with a razor blade into lines, she would then take the cocaine on her finger and rub it on her dumb gums. I, Stupid gums. <laughs> I, su I suggest that she never took cocaine after she, she stopped taking it as a teenager, but we have to disagree about that. Let me let me hold it at top of 182. Mm -hmm. 184. Um, 184, I'm sorry. This is this very confusing. The way this is. I know. It should go. Is this the the way – is it in a British way, the way, the way it's formatted? Is that what we're looking – I don't know. The down and stuff. Mm -hmm. You, you got to stare at the numbers because it, it doesn't read like an American um, – <laughs> the wrong side of the – driving on the wrong side of the road. That's what it feels like. Um you, let's again. We talk about the ages and the, how close to his parent, her parents' age more so than hers. Let's just look at the, the age gap here, and I don't want to beat it to death. And, and it's it's so significant. Her and her friends are in that crazy twenties party mode. Mm -hmm. If you think for a second, there she doesn't want to hear about. His sobriety and him backing care. off on partying. She doesn't give a shit about any of that. She she sees the party, and this is her time to do it. She's mm -hmm. not interested in coaching his sobriety. Exactly. She wants the access he has. There's not a lot of risk other than health in terms of they're not driving. They have drivers. They have private jets. They have limos. I mean, you know, put uh, chauffeurs everywhere. There's not a lot of you know risk as far as what civilians go through with drink mm -hmm. dr drunk driving and other stuff like that they have they're not gonna be so and they have stuff delivered to them there's no risk i mean he has assistance procuring cocaine for him you know they're putting nathan holmes and his george young drug running so she's not the last thing anybody would should buy is that she's her first priority is his sobriety I know. She could care less. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And it's free cocaine. Yes. And free everything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, she's she's so worried about, you know, his, his drink and she's going to cut the lines for him. But she didn't do any cocaine. Yeah. All right. I'm going on to top 182. I would say. What? Oh, God, I can't. This is fucking Brits. My eyes have seen the action. All right. Now, there was an occasion, if you take the text bundle at page seven, the text bundle is at the first half of bundle six. It's page seven. Here we seven go with the text bundle. Text bundle. I think it's tab 119, is it not? Uh, that is exactly right. 
what page are you saying, please? It is page seven. Does my lord have it? I, I do. I do. The second box down, Mr. Depp, there is a text from you to, amongst other names, Sis. Do you see that on the right-hand side? Um, I... Sorry, I'm May 6th. Do you see where it says participants at the top box? Oh, yes. The text I am asking you about, the second line down says sis, and that is Whitney, is it not? Uh, yes, it is. You had sent this text to Whitney on the 9th of March, and it says, We had a slightly grim morning, just worried about her. Do you agree you sent that text to Whitney and you were referring to Miss Heard at the time in the text? Um, yes. On the 12th of March, if we can go to, um, could we go to page, would my Lord give me a moment because there are references. I'm, I'm going to ask you to go to page 20 of the text schedule, and I'm going to explain something to the court. There's a series of four texts which are in the wrong chronolo chronological order. They can be found in another document, but rather than go to documents, I'm going to go deal with it in this way because I think you're familiar with this text exchange. So on March, on the 12th of March, so if you go to the, uh, do you have page 20 at the bottom, Mr. Depp? Um, yes, page 20. If you go five up. Um, I, five up from the bottom? From the bottom. So the one that says working mate? Oh, yes. No, sorry. Well, I forget whether it is five or four, but it is one below that. I just thought you should know. Yes, exactly. Uh, yes. Do you see that on the right side? The right-hand side, it says uh, March 12, 2013. Oh, uh, yes, ma'am, I do. In fact, that is a text change which took place on March 12, 2013. You know what the text is about, uh, the disco bloodbath text? Oh, I think we go with that. Um, I am familiar with the disco bloodbath uh, text it is a pl um it's in a place because the day and the month has been put the wrong way it should be earlier in the bundle if you need to see it in another format i can show you no no that's fine thank you you sent a text to miss Heard. just thought you should know there exists a book called titled disco bloodbath that is all she said we need that book she then said is it about last friday night by any chance you said how can you make me smile about such a hideous moment? Yes, it is. Funny bitch, I fucking love you, you cunt. Those are texts sent between you and Miss Heard on the 3rd of March. Do you agree with that? Um, yes, I do. All right. Can I ask you to look at bundle six? Sorry. 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 You said uh, 3rd of Mar March? Sorry, 12th of March. It, it's a problem that seems to cause difficulties with this text because the 3 and the 12 has been put in a different order. It would um, be the American way. Exactly. But the text exists as an exhibit uh, to Miss Heard's statement. So we see the screenshot, but Mr. Depp is not challenging. I do not think that those texts um, were exchanged with Miss Heard on the 12th of March. I'm not um, challenging it. All right. Unless my Lord wants me to. Um... No, that's fine. You should have tab six because the texts are here. Uh, could you go to 148F, please? It's in tab six. I think mine finishes at uh, 148E. So would this be then the file? I... File seven. Mr. Depp, do you have it there? I do. Uh, just a moment. Uh, what is the page number you want me to refer to, please? F894.261. I'm afraid something has happened to my bundles. I do not have that. I can see uh, Ms. Wilson has found another copy. Thank you very much. I'm very grateful. Do you have the page that Ms. Wass is uh, talking about? Well, uh, yes, I do, Your Lordship. Do you recognize the kitchen top or not? Um, I do not recognize this kitchen top. If I were to suggest to you that that photograph taken on March 8th, 2013 of your cocaine, lines of your cocaine, what would you say? I would wonder if it were mine. I would wonder why it's photographed That's as well. Interesting. Good point there, huh? 
Okay, so yeah. are are you saying you cannot help us as to whether you recognize it or not? My question was, do you recognize the area where this was taken? Um, I recognize that those appear to be lines of cocaine. I see a straw. I see a little bindle. And I, I, I clearly see my credit card. Yeah, so it looks as if the credit cards may have had something to do with putting the lines of cocaine in that formation. Um, yes, it does. Do you recognize the work surface or tabletop? I'm sorry, I do not recognize it. Then I presume you cannot say the date in that case. Um, you're not able to say whether you agree or not, whether it was the 8th of March? I'm not even able to say if it's um, cocaine or not. We will have to draw our inferences from that in due course. Uh, yes, ma'am. In the bedroom of the house that Miss Heard shared um, with her sister Whitney in Orange Avenue in California was hung a painting by Miss Heard's ex-partner, uh, Taja Van Rie. Um, yes, that is correct. You remember yesterday we looked at Taja Van Rie and the arrest in Seattle and Miss Van Rie's exoneration of Miss Heard. Do you remember that? I do remember talk of Ms. Von Rie yesterday. And Ms. Von Rie was an artist and had a painting that Ms. Heard kept in her bedroom hanging on the wall, yes? Yes. It had been there from the very first time you had visited Orange Avenue. Do you agree? It's not something she put up halfway through your visit? It was always, it was always been there? Uh, yes, it was there. There was an occasion in March of 2013 when you visited Miss Heard at Orange Avenue. Whitney was not at home at the time, but it was an occasion when you arrived drunk and having consumed a cocktail of cocaine and cannabis. Do you remember an occasion where you arrived at Miss Heard's house in that condition? No, not offhand, no. Do you accept that you are a compulsive smoker of cigarettes? Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. I mean, I have a horrible addiction to nicotine, yes. Just a moment. Uh, yes, um... You also have a horrible addiction to cocaine in March 2013, I would suggest. Um, uh, where are we? 190. 190. I'm sorry. I'm just I know. It slipped ahead. Uh, no, I've never had an addiction to cocaine. Do you have a little box, a special cocaine box where you kept your cocaine? Uh... A special box for my cocaine? No, no, not necessarily, no. Two inches square? I, I had a small square box with a turquoise, was a piece of um, turquoise at the top, and that was used to carry extra meds in my pocket for when I was away, you know, out and about working. So you are describing a pillbox? It is a pillbox, yes. I'm talking about a little antique. I just want to clarify. When you talk about your meds, you're talking about your prescription medications? Yes, exactly. My prescription medications are in there. I understand. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a cocaine box, not prescription drugs. This was a square box with a skull and crossbows on it. The property of JD. It had something like that on it. Do you remember? I do not remember that particular description of that box, and it's entirely possible. But, you know, it did not have any designated box for illegal substances. The only box you... is Amber herself. <laughs> do you think that as a result of the problems you've had with drink and controlled drugs and prescription drugs that your memory has been impaired? Um, No, ma'am, I don't. You feel that you have absolute clarity of recollection, do you? Yes, ma'am. And you cannot remember this box? I have received a lot of gifts from people in my travels. You know, people who appreciate or have appreciated, you know, what I've done in my work and have given me presents. So, yeah, there are boxes and bracelets and it's very difficult. Again, I have the picture. You have lots of gifts? Uh, you know, you can interrupt me at any time if you like. I do not want to do it if it's rev uh, relevant to the case. Mr. Sherborne, Sherborne is looking um, after your interests admirably, but I do want to try and make some progress, all right? No, I was trying to describe... I understand uh, what you're trying to describe. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry, I'm terribly sorry. 
Now, I suggest that throughout your relationship with Miss Heard, you were irrationally jealous of Miss Heard and regularly accused her of having affairs with other people? Just a minute. What is your answer? There were times when I suspected that Miss Heard was being untruthful with me. And there seemed to be, at the time, um, good reason for me to have care about what her actions were. We read out in court yesterday Ellen Barkin's deposition. Do you remember? And she described you as jealous? Um, yes, she did. Would you describe yourself as jealous? Oh, yeah, 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 yes, I, I can be jealous, sure. And on the night in March 2013 that I'm asking you about, you were very jealous and accusatory of Miss Heard, suggesting she may have having or continuing her affair with Taja Van Rie. Became an obsession of yours that night. Do you remember that? I remember we had several arguments about Ms. Von Rie. I will not elaborate. I will let you. All right. Do you remember an incident where you had an argument with Ms. Von Rie and reference was made to the painting that is hanging up in Ms. Heard's bedroom? Uh, yes, I remember. I'm going to remind you what you said about it, and I'm going to suggest that something quite different happened. What you said was that you, at some point around this time, so this is March, I'm reading from your statement, just so that you know now. Uh, yes. At some point around this time, I did ask Ms. Hurd to remove a painting she had received from her former wife from a bedroom as a courtesy to me. I certainly did not hit Ms. Hurd. All right. So you say there was an incident when the painting was the subject of discussion? Uh, yes, ma'am. In around March 2013? Uh, you know, I'll take your word for it on the date. Uh, this is what you referenced in your statement. I'm... I said March, okay? What you say in your statement is you certainly did not hit Ms. Hurd on that date, all right? No, I did not. When you asked her to remove the painting, according to your recollection, what did she say? Ultimately, um, no. No, she was not going to do what you told her or asked her to do. Did you take no for an answer? Yes, I did. You tried to remove the painting yourself, did you not? No, I did not. You tried to remove the painting and Miss Heard intervened, and you slapped her? That is not true. You took out your cigarette lighter. You had been smoking all the way through the evening, I suggest, in the kitchen of that house. Do you accept that you smoked in Orange Avenue indoors? Um, yes, I do. Ugh. You had your cigarette lighter with you, and you tried to set fire to the painting? I, that is just not true. And you were very physical with Miss Heard, pushing her about and grabbing her by the arm? That is also untrue. If you go behind, are you at divider six? Oh, uh, yes. Go behind, um, there's a photograph exhibit A, 148A, sorry, 148 not 148A, my fault. I think it's divider uh, 148A. It's actually divider 148A. Uh, that is not what I'm asking about. Ms. Hammer has reminded me. I want I want the very first photograph on 148. It should be Miss Heard taking a photograph in a mirror with a visible bruise on her arm. I'm going to ask you to assist me with the, uh, finding the picture of I can give you mine if you'd – oh, that's – sorry. Uh, no, that's all right. I want to make sure – let me go up here. This is where it gets annoying. I got to go mm -hmm. up again. I know. I have understood what the question's about. So um, this is now the page. Sorry, F894.11 – I'm sorry, 001. Do you remember Mr. Deb causing any injury to Ms. Hurd's arm? Uh. No, ma'am, I do not. I suggest when you said you had clear memories of events with Miss Heard, that quite the opposite is in fact true. You would regularly behave in a way you forgot how you behaved, and Miss Heard started keeping records so that she could show you what you had done. Do you agree with that? Uh, I cannot make any statements to Miss Heard's motivation for her photography of her various. Uh, she made it plain, I suggest to you, that because you had no recollection of certain rather important events as far as she was concerned, when she was the subject of violence from you, she started keeping records in the form of photographs and would remind you of these afterwards. 
What do you say about that? Um, I would say that I've never seen this photograph. So, so she did not use it to remind me that. But you accept it shows her with a bruise on her arm? I do accept it's a photograph of Miss Heard with a bruise on her arm, yes. This fight over the painting escalated, and at one stage you hit her in the face with the back of your hand. So the first slap was with the open part of your hand. You know what I mean by the back of your hand? Yes, I, I, uh, I see, yes. Hold your hand up now. You have some fairly serious rings on your hand. <laughs> you always wear those rings, do you not? Oh, God damn it. Um, yes, most of the time. I'm in the Green Lantern Corps, so I oh, can't God. really take them off. There's no reason why you should not, but it means if they, if you do hit someone with the back of your hand, it is likely to cause more injury than somebody who does not have rings on. Do you agree? I would say, um, yes, absolutely. I suggest that you hit her with the back of your hand, and that was very, very painful to Miss Heard, and that was quite obvious to you that you caused her considerable pain. Um, do you agree with that, Mr. Depp? I did not hit Miss Heard, and furthermore, I have never hit Miss Heard. The day after the night of the painting, you were due to appear on a film set. I think the film set was at Sweetser, your house on Sweetser, because you were filming a documentary about Keith Richards. Now, this is an interesting – I don't know if you knew about this mm -hmm. one with Keith Richards yep. where it's – okay. I just want to say as we're going on to uh, page 197, um, the thing with uh, the bloodbath book – Mm -hmm. How 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 much did you roll? I could just see you rolling your eyes. That text exchange where you called her a cunt, and they had their little cute exchange with each other, and it's just so typical of her. That's her charming way of. I need that book now. That fucking bullshit exchange where she's pretending to have all the same. And that's just a classic, written out example of how she conned him. That's mm -hmm. just. That's just stuck in my head when we read it. Yeah. You know, that, 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 did that irritate you like it did me? How much are you rolling your eyes when you, that text exchange that they read? I know. See, they, some couples talk to that way to each other, but, but unfortunately she's able to use that now as the antithesis of a Southern gentleman to further bolster right. that. Right. And it's getting him to look more like, he had a hand in actually turning it into a literal bloodbath that night. Yes. I don't know. It's so stupid. But yeah, it is, it is so cringy. But just to just trying to have you know, the same literature, she's yeah. acting like this is her wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. I need that book now. Oh, mm -hmm. God. And then that stupid, you know, fake cursing at each other. Oh, there's those two. They're antics. I know. We have no idea. Mm hmm. So we're on page uh, your line 96, line 24. Okay. Yes, ma'am, that is true. As I think you said to us yesterday, he was an idol of yours. Here we go. Um. Yes. I think the documentary was made over a long period. It, it took about four years altogether, something like that. Jesus. Oh, y yes, ma'am, and it's still not. It's still not finished. No. Right. Anyway, in 2015, there was a day when you were due, calling it on the film set, but it was actually at your house. The filming was supposed to take place, and everything was set up for filming? Um, yes. And Mr. Richards was there? Um, Ms. Wallace, did you say uh, 2015? My lord is absolutely right. 2013, I should have said. Do you agree with that? Uh, yes. I, mean, I was doing a documentary on Keith. And then – and there was a date in March 2013 when you were extremely late on set? Um, yes, that is true, and they call that JD time. <laughs> and I suggest that after – I'm sorry. And I suggest that was the date after the argument with Miss Heard about the painting, during which you hit her in the back of your hand, uh, so we can date this? I do not believe that was – not that the argument of that morning. My recollection is that um, – something very different another argument there was an argument yes another argument can i summarize this in this way sure miss heard has itemized 14 episodes in her evidence in this case 
where you used physical violence against her. You know that, do you not? Uh, yes, I do. It's also clear from her statement that she says those were not the only episodes. Those were the ones that she was able to describe, um, but there were many more than that. That is also her evidence, is it not? Um, yes, it is. So if you're saying incidents got mixed up, you're saying there was another incident the night before the Keith Richards filming? Is that what you're saying? Uh, yes, ma'am. I'm not going to ask you about that incident because I want to go straight to what happened when you finally did get to the film set. Whitney had not been at Orange Avenue the night before the Keith Richards interview. Uh, the Keith Richards filming, had she? I do not recall. You do not recall that? Um, well, I, no. But she returned to the house the following morning? Yes. And she was presented with a complete mess in the kitchen. There were lines of cocaine in the, on the worktop and an almost empty bottle of whiskey. I think you said you were drinking whiskey at the time. Um, yes, ma'am. You had been smoking in the kitchen. There were cigarette butts everywhere, and there was a broken glass on the floor, and the furniture was askew. That is the picture that Whitney was presented with. Uh, does that jog your memory at all? I do not recall the destruction that Whitney heard is describing. Because, you know, I remember the morning. I remember sitting at the glass table just outside her kitchen, and I was drinking whiskey. By the way, let's for a second. You're on line 18. Yeah. You know that song, Ooh, That Smell? Is that mm -hmm. Leonard Skinner? Ooh, yeah. that smell. Mm -hmm. Isn't this exactly what that song describes? I wish we could not get the copyright and put that in here. It, it, in fact, in Blow, it's in the Blow soundtrack. Mm -hmm. And it's just this insane. It's ex if you, Maybe we could put a little thing, picture no. of that. And it's, he's, well, just a picture of it, a still from it. And he's going through this George Young room and it's cocaine and alcohol everywhere and, and a mess and a big mess. And I think he's, getting ready to go to the hospital, but it's this crazy kind of, you know, substance abuse room. It's This is exactly what that Leonard Skinner song Well, there's a picture describes. of the room and the evidence. I can just Yeah, I know, but it's 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 so eerie how that song is like, you know, but, you know, obviously way ahead of its time. But God damn it, it's a perfect anthem for this. Mm -hmm. I can't get it out of my head as I read it. Um, and, uh, Again, you know, it's it's amazing, isn't it? Amazing, T two, how much his problems, his uh, idolization causes him. <laughs> I know Keith Richards and Thompson. It's all just thrown in his face over and over again. He'll mm -hmm. stop at nothing to to charm these people. I know, and 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 honor their legend as if they're not honored every second of every day. No, you don't need Keith Richards to be honored any more than he already is. <laughs> Rolling Stones of I'm I'm I so tired of them. I don't need any the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. I don't you know they don't need to be honored on any level or we don't need more documentaries on them. We know every single thing there is you want to honor the, you want to do a documentary that would interest me, show about the heroin arrest in Canada from the seventies. That's what I want to say. Oh yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> well, that's the only thing I'm interested in. It's, we know every single effing thing there is about that. There's a thousand Rolling Stone books, and doesn't Martin Scorsese, Martin Scorsese have a hard on for the Rolling Stones? And his, I don't know. He does Probably. something on his and every film he has, and he has a huge documentary on them. And I, you know, who cares? Mm -hmm. Enough of Keith Richards. <laughs> okay, uh, whiskey in the morning. Um, you know, yes, it was quite a nasty moment, argument. And yeah. do, you rem do you remember sm uh, snorting cocaine? I do not remember snorting cocaine, no. Right. Could you look back in bundle six? Yes. This is the divider that my lord now has your bundle one, um, 48F. We've looked at this, Mr. Depp, already this tab. Uh, yes. Could you turn over the photograph uh, that we've already looked at, at your credit card with cocaine? You will have to turn the file around because they are in landscape. Um, yes, ma'am. I see that. Thank you. Sorry, I did not mean to patronize you. No, no, no. You already have several times. <laughs> Otherwise, I, I might have done, not have done it. You know, you never know. Thank you, though. First of all, can we establish that that photograph is a photograph of the glass table that you've already described in Miss Hurd's kitchen in Orange Avenue? Um, yes. Now, um, 
894F and 894.262, is that right? Yes, and 263. Uh, there are two photographs very similar. You said you were drinking whiskey. Yes. Is that whiskey we see in the glass on the right? Oh, yes, man, it looks like it. I mean, it's a highball-sized glass. Do you agree? Um, yes, it looks like it. I, I was wondering that because of the um, perspective of the photo. Look at the top photograph of the two. It's probably better from that perspective. That is a highball glass. And I was normally used to doing shots of whiskey or sipping shots of whiskey. But, you know, that is a um, highball glass. So perhaps, you know, it was whiskey on ice. Whiskey on ice. Uh, it was diluted with anything. Was it diluted with anything? Do you remember? Um, probably ice water. And that, that's it. We can see the bottle. Um, can you see the bottle on the top photograph just to the left of your logoed cup or whatever it is? Do you see it just next to the newspaper in front of the newspaper? Um, yes, ma'am, I do. It looks like another glass to me. Another glass? Uh, that's what it looks like to me. Miss Heard does not drink spirits, does she? She drinks red wine, but not spirits? Uh, mostly, mostly. As I recall, yes. She, she drank red wine, mostly, yes. I do not believe she was drinking whiskey. Look at the bottom of that um, other receptacle for the whiskey. And it's a very thick bottom. Can you see that? It's not like a glass. It looks more like a bottle. Do you agree? I know the bottle of the bottle of it was a bottle. It was a bottle of whiskey called. I'm sorry, I'm blanking on the name, but it is a bottle, and I liked the bottle at first because you know it looked. It um, it's called Bulite, Bulite Bourbon, because it looks like it comes from the 20s or 30s or something. So does this look like a Belite bourbon bottle to you? No, that is not, no. I mean, imagine being so savvy, such a staunch drinker that you're interested in. You know every single bottle shape and the derivation and the year it's connected to. And mm -hmm. I mean, I've had my tryst with the drink <laughs> and vibing. But that is just a whole other level of encyclopedic knowledge about all things alcohol. You know, mm -hmm. you, you got bourbon bottles memorized and glass blowing schematics. Jesus Christ! <laughs> but I, I like the, the Sasha Wass is trying to look make it look like oh you're a, you drink you drink hard liquor and she just drinks wine. And so you're out of it and she's not because she's responsible because she only drinks red wine and you're, you're out. It's almost like she's comparing alcohol percentages in well, the bloodstream by saying that. It's come out since I believe that the metadata on this photograph was uh, um, altered. So this yes, photograph could have been taken at any time and not necessarily was, you know, this date. Um, he doesn't recognize the furniture. Exactly. For Christ's sake. But I like how she lays his credit card out perfectly. Yes. So it's identified. And this box that he so, doesn't seem to identify with the, right. the property of JD. And do you remember, does it come up later if he does remember that box? Or do you think maybe she had that box made just for this? It could have been altered. I mean, it's possible he doesn't even remember it. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I know he's got so much. So you got to remember how many residents does he have? I know. Right. So is he not, does he remember and this every isn't even counter? his, this isn't even his residence. This is her bachelorette pad. Right. So it's not even, it's also possible. He doesn't remember the specifics about that place, which mm -hmm. I'm imagining he was paying for. Yeah. He made I'm a good point certain. though. We well, made a good point though. That was completely brushed over earlier where her excuse for taking all these pictures was to remind him of the way he was treating her. He goes, I've never seen these pictures. So how is that a reminder yep. of how I'm treating right. her? That is a great point. God, she was doing this since 2013, just taking pictures. Weird. And also okay. he, he, he owns up to a lot of his foibles. Mm -hmm. It's not like he's, you know, most people when they're, drilled in court they're trying to paint themselves as this perfect being 
you know, oh, I've never done this. And I, he's pretty much owning a lot of, which most people don't do when they're in that mm-hmm. situation. Mm-hmm. He admits to all of it. So it, it looks very convincing. If I'm a, an actual jury, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is not, this does not sound like a liar to me, mm-hmm. you know, to most people, because he's owning up to a lot of what people would never admit to. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I was there. I drank that. Yes, I do that. Yep, yep, yep. Most people go, no, I never drank. I, I, I drank a little bit, but not even. He's like, no, I drank that. You know, mm-hmm. it doesn't sound like the way a liar behaves at all. Yeah. Okay, so two o two. All right, we yes. will have to work out what that was at a later stage. Uh, can you see in, in the front that there was a little box about two inches by two inches? If we compare it to the size of the credit cards. Yes. Property of JD with skull and crossbones on it? Oh, uh, yes, I do. That I suggest is your cocaine box. That is where you would keep your cocaine, a special box you had? I do not remember the box. Do you remember it now? <gasps> oh, um. No, here we go. Yes, I did not remember the property of JD business. I, yes, I mean, that is a box, it was carrying cocaine in it. I would say I probably was back then. If you look at the bottom of the center of the picture, there are four lines of cocaine next to a credit card. Indeed. With the straw on top of the credit card? Uh, yes. If that is where you might normally carry cocaine, I think it is safe to infer that that is what is being used for on this occasion. Do you not agree? I do agree. I was mistaken. I, mean, I suppose I'm terribly sorry. That is all right. Uh, top of I gotta scroll two or three. Up here. I'm sorry. This is where it gets tough. I'm gonna scroll up. I'm terribly sorry. This is why uh, I was asking you about your memory, Mr. Depp. You see, because I suggest that that box was very precious to you at this time for reasons that would be obvious, namely the fact that it contained the drug that you were very dependent on at the time. I was never dependent on cocaine. You know, it's very difficult to say that someone is dependent on cocaine. It's not, you know, it's not in the category of opiates, you know, where there's a physical addiction and physical and painful withdrawal from that drug. Cocaine is... Uh, Can I stop you? Uh, oh, oh, please stop me, yes. You were not addicted to cocaine, and we can come to more about your addiction when we look at your interaction with Dr. Kipper, all right? Sure. When Whitney arrived, as I've said, she was confronted with a lot of mess, but she was also confronted by whiskey and lines of cocaine on the kitchen table, which we can see in this photograph. And not only that, she was also confronted by the sight of Ms. Hurd, who had obviously been crying. She was very red and crying. Do you remember her crying when Whitney arrived? I, I remember her crying a lot. Hold on a second, uh, Sarah. Um, mm-hmm. uh, if anybody you know, listening to this and you could shield it any way you want, has any extensive knowledge of cocaine. I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to get, color me a rube, color me uh, naive. How does someone, his, has cocaine been altered to a safe state? We, we compare it to Adderall. We think that Adderall is some form of actual cocaine and so has it been like modified or reduced my sort of novice knowledge of cocaine is that it's a death sentence where it's an automatic heart attack it's crazy and anybody taking it over the age of fucking 35 is insane you it's not the drug for the arp uh, among us yeah what what has happened? Does anybody in the sound of my voice have knowledge about cocaine in the modern day? Has it been altered to where it's like safe? Do do people like him have access to some batch of it that's safer than what we were scared to death about as kids? The say no to drug stuff and all the stuff we've learned about how it's the worst thing. And the Depp himself has called it the devil. I don't know in how many in cases there's interviews with him the crying cocaine and how he's never taken it before. So he's lying about that back then. Mm-hmm. What is the deal with 2022 
cocaine? Is it is there something we're not – has it been where it's like he has no risk at all and this Dr. Kipper is hovering over him, monitoring his – Dr. Feelgood as you call him just so he can – his whole point is just so that he can indulge in this? I mean, this is the whole reason he's there to monitor just recreational drug use. And by the way, you you dug up a picture of him. He looks like um like Robert Kraft, you know, like the old yeah, silver fox with the tan and the big, teeth. big white hair, right? The teeth that like match so the many... hair. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'd like to know that too. I'm, I've always been curious about cocaine. Not that I ever want well, to right. try There's it. So curious, but... fair about it. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, he's not 25. No, you're, he's you're gonna right. be You've 59 in June. Like, what is? How can someone that age partake in that so frequently as we're seeing here? And mm-hmm. he's just like, oh yeah, lying here. I just don't. I don't get it. I don't. I don't where it's. I know nothing about that drug culture, as far as. So I just want to know. Yeah, I do anybody too. can give me insight. Okay, I'm sure we'll we'll find out. All right, page two or four. All right. You're All right. right. Yeah. All right. That is the answer. Thank you. Uh, you started accusing Miss Hurd in front of her sister Whitney of something to do with a friend called Marie D. Oh God, Villa. Pin. Here we go again with these names. Am I ca- am I crazy or is every name this fucking pretentious thing mm-hmm. you can't pronounce? It, it seems fake. Does it not yeah. seem like they're making these names up? It is every effing name. This is mm-hmm. pretentious little deep in Todd Bonry. What the fuck is this? European. I, it, it can't be coincidence. Does that name ring any bells to you? Uh, just a minute. Marie. D V I L L E P I N. <laughs> She's like saying, like, you can see how everything is. Uh, uh, do you know that name is to death? I do recall the name, Your Lordship. I, I do recall the name from when Miss Heard went to France and made a film, I believe. Do you remember an argument about uh, Marie de Villapine? <laughs> Who's that? The, the broad from uh, Housewives. Lu- Delis- Luan de Lesseps. Yes. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like that? It's got that no. same <laughs> count. Oh, no. <laughs> How uh, dare you I put do. them together? <laughs> I don't know. Luan is a queen. Okay. <laughs> what's, the, what's the song she did? Elegance is Learned. God, sing it. No. <laughs> Come on, sing it. Come on. Elegance is learned, my friend. No, no, don't say it. Sing it. I am singing. <laughs> How dare you insult my singing? I do, but I'm not positive that um, that was at the time. I- I'm sure it was not at this time. It was just another argument. Another argument. All right. You, during the course of that other argument, called Miss De Villapine a slut? <sighs> Um, quite possibly, you know, if I was angry and upset, but I do not agree. All right. And we have looked at words that you've used to describe women. And I think you've said that you're not proud of them. Well, when they are done in a joking manner with my ex-wife or some former partner, mother of my children or something in jest, it's not representative of my feeling for women. When you called Miss uh, Developing a slut, it was not a joke. <laughs> I suggest. Um, if I called her that name, then I'm fairly sure that I meant it. And when Whitney arrived, you accused Miss Heard again of having an affair with Taja Van Rie, and you tried to snatch Miss Heard's phone for text. Do you remember doing that? Uh, no, ma'am. And both Whitney and Miss Heard remained with you for about four hours, trying to persuade persuade you to leave the house to go to the film set where you should have been. Um, yes, that is true. And people were waiting for you, were they not, at the film set? Waiting for me? It, uh, well, you know, it was a day where, um, it was not an interview, per se, between Keith Richards and myself. You know, which had already been filmed. It, it was a day when Keith Richards and Tom Waits, another guy that every fucking mm-hmm. actor... Who with the cool factor has to say they like Tom Waits? Is that such a Hollywood right? Yeah. Tom Waits. <laughs> it was a day when uh, Keith Richards and Tom Waits were performing together in the studio, live recording studio, and 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 I had 
made a call to my first assistant director, my director of photography, and to the focus people who were all very dear friends and very talented. I told them I was going to be held up for a while. But, you know, to go on without me because essentially all they needed was to do the, was capture it. Um, it was it was just filming Keith and Tom. I understand. I understand. He's late for everything. I mean, you, it's not a good look because there's all that Disney stuff. I mean, he cost them millions mm-hmm. of dollars. He's late all the time. I mean, he was late for the fucking NFT, uh, the, the AMA on the Discord and stuff. Yep. I mean, that seems like that's a constant thing. I mean, when you don't, when you live a life of decades of no real accountability, you kind of. It's not a big deal if you're late. It's not a big deal. No one's ever going to really call you on it. You're not really bothered by it. You're never going to admit I like being late, but it's just something you just. And I don't think he has any sense of time. Mm -hmm. I don't think he has any reason to know what day of the week it is. In a lot of instances. Yeah. You know, I think you just mm-hmm. lose all sense of time and you have assistants and God knows who telling, keeping a schedule for you. And yeah, you, it's, it's the suggestion. It's not a schedule. It's a suggestion mm-hmm. to be there by six thirty. So we're on two. Oh, six, two oh, six. Uh, perf- in performance. So my, my, my presence was not all that important to it. Could you go uh, please to tab 56 C? Which? I'm just about to find out. Sorry. Um, that is that is all right. Mr. Depp, if you put that to one side, we will come back to the text in a minute. It's bundle 7, tab 56C. At the bottom, there should be a pagination, H206 something. Do you see that? This is um, 56C, is it? 56C, yes. It's a series of texts. Um, Mr. Depp, if you... Bundling is the same as mine. The tab number is 56C is reversed, so you may have to. Oh, no, I, I see it. I just, I have just found it. Yes, thank you. Oh, good, good. Thank you. Uh, 56C. And go to page H206.7. Uh, yes. All right, 206.8. Yes. Um, do you have um, 206.8? Um, oh, I do indeed. Thank you. That is from Mr. Dwood. It's Deuters, right? Deuters? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> All these words. We can see. I'm not uh, sure I've ever actually heard it pronounced anywhere. So just assume that it's Deuters. Okay. That is from Mr. Deuters' phone. We can see Stephen SD at the top. Do you agree? Um, where, 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 where are you? I'm at 207. I see. Sorry is the first. Mm-hmm. My 207 says sorry. Yeah, that's okay, right. Thing. I'm sorry. Yes. So, uh, sorry. That is from Mr. Deuters? Uh, yes. That text? Uh, yes, ma'am. And he says, we have started shooting, so you know. And then you say, go, goddammit. I'm a, a fly on the wall. Commence. There's nothing I can add to whatever magic is already there. Go. You make whatever calls need to make them. I am on my way. Right? Um. Yes, Kevin Smith is right. <laughs> Everything is Lord Byron speak in mm-hmm. text, commence, and there's I not know. the ma- you know just always in that. That's that's one of the most brilliant things Kevin Smith's ever said. He called him a Lord when Kevin Smith. Anyone who doesn't know, Depp starred in Kevin Smith's Yoga Hosers with Lily Rose, his daughter. They acted in the same movie. A lot of people, most people, have not seen it or even know it exists. Jack Depp actually has a cameo in it too, mm-hmm. and Kevin Smith has stories and. I'm not always on board with Kevin Smith, but occasionally he hits it and uh, he says that he loves Depp and their interactions, texting going back when he asked him to be in the movie. Lily Rose is best friends with Smith's daughter, Harley Quinn, who is actually named after the Batman character, lest you believe it's something deeper than that. Um, when Depp was texting him, as nice as Depp is, he said he writes like Lord Byron in text. It's like a screed from the 18th century or something. I found that really funny. That and I it, you imagine, can see. I always ahead, imagine. I always imagine when I read these emails or texts from him that he's twirling his finger <laughs> or he's twirling his hand and bowing at the same time yeah. when he's when he's typing this <laughs> email. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tapping a brown cigarette and the ashes are over the 
<laughs> skull ring clanking on the screen. Mm-hmm. All the scratches on the screen from the skull ring. Oh, We're on line 13, know. right? You're- yeah. <laughs> okay, if we look back, we can see what this is about at 206.7. Keith is at the studio now. Keith is rehearsing. It looks... It looks, does it not, as if this is to do with the rehearsals of Keith Richards in the documentary? Um, in the studio, yes. It looks like it is to do with that, does it not? Yes. I believe Mr. Richards and Mr. Waits were going through the uh, material. You told us that Mr. Richards was a very important person in your life. Uh, what was so important that was going on that you would not leave the house to go and get to that meeting on time, to that film <laughs> set on time? <laughs> Good point, Moss. <laughs> this is where I like the pushback. Mm-hmm. You know, because, like, if it's so... You know what I mean? Like, she's right. Like, wouldn't you think he'd just be frantically trying to get over there? So he writes, he says back to her, well, you know, at the time in our relationship, uh, you know, when things of that nature um, would come up, especially an argument that was especially at that time. Uh, sorry, I lost my... I lost my train of thought here. Uh, do, do not worry. I think the point is that you were late. Um, yes. And we've agreed that <laughs> there was an argument? Yes. You have agreed that Whitney came. You were waiting. Uh, they were trying to get you away for four hours? Um. Yes. I think that answers the question, unless there is... Um, yes. I mean, to me, I mean, it was more important to try and fix things, patch things up with Miss Heard at that time. Because your driver was called, was he not? Uh, your driver was called, and Nathan Holmes was called to take you from Miss Heard's property at Orange Avenue to your house on Sweetser? Um, that would have been normal, yes. What I suggest happened uh, was that even when Mr. Holmes turned up, you refused to leave the house. You were snorting more and more lines of cocaine? <sighs> Well, as as the image comes into my head, and I, I, I see the cocaine on the table and the whiskey, as I said, I, I was mistaken. I, so, so I was definitely partaking of the cocaine and the whiskey that, that morning. Yes, um, Nathan Holmes was indeed called to retrieve me, to take me onwards to the set. The cocaine was, I believe, the four lines laid out. Uh, there are in the photograph, but I suggest that you had quite a lot before then. Well, you know, four lines is not always for one person, let us say. <laughs> I think, no, in fact, I know that Miss Heard's sister, Whitney, was partaking of that cocaine as well. Uh, this was cocaine that you were taking on your own. Miss Amber Heard did not take any cocaine on that occasion. I suggest that there were occasions when she rubbed her gums with it, but that was not one of them. Uh, no, you know, you should actually chop the cocaine up for me and make lines. Are you suggesting that is what she did on this occasion? Well, you know, Miss Heard, in a lot of ways, is um, a creature of routine. Um, there are certain things that she needed to do for me that I was sort of not allowed to do for myself. So I'm, I'm saying that she was trying to sort of, uh, when I, I would arrive home, she would um, take off my boots and that was a regular routine. So so it would not be anything out of the ordinary for her to chop those lines out. And again, as I see it now in my memory, I recall um, Nathan, Whitney was there, and, and she participated in that same cocaine. So now you claim to remember this? Well, you have opened my eyes. Yes, I understand. Memory does that. Oh, thank you for that then. I'm suggesting that you are not telling the truth about that, Mr. Depp, that never on any occasion did Miss Heard ever chop up lines of cocaine for you. She was extremely... Well, when, when you talk about Miss Heard, you're talking about Amber, are you? Yes, I called Whitney uh, Enriquez, and she now is Whitney, and Miss Heard, Miss Heard. Yes, I, just, I wanted to make sure that Mr. Depp understood the question. So the suggestion is, Mr. Depp, that you're not telling the truth that Miss... Amber Heard never took cocaine. I, th- I think that was the question. Was it not, Miss Boss? Yes. Uh, uh, she never chopped lines. That's Sherborne injected. Right, right, right. Go, go. 
Uh, never chop lines. And never chop lines of cocaine preparing them for you? I'm afraid, no, you're incorrect. In fact, Ms. Hurd was extremely disapproving of cocaine, above, above all things, when it came to your repertoire of controlled drugs. No, she poured me the whiskey, and the cocaine was visible in front of her. So I would, I would have experienced many times, um, I, uh, she, um, Ms. Hurd, that she would in fact chop the cocaine up for me so that I could do the line. And then she would press her finger into it and ingest it orally. So I'm not suggesting that she did that in this case, but I am suggesting that it was a normal duty that she felt obligated to do early on. I suggest there is no truth in that whatsoever. Um, I suggest that you're sadly mistaken. I understand, but we can go on and on, and we both have made. We're not going to go on and on. Our respectful position's clear. You would not leave the house, Miss Hurd's house, unless Miss Hurd and her sister came with you to the film set, would you? Uh, no, that is not true. One of the conditions was that you would go in order to do the filming of the documentary, but only if she went with you and she brought her sister in the car and she brought her dog Pistol? No, I never said that. And I'm not going there without them, without Whitney or Miss Hurd or Miss Henriquez or Mrs. Henriquez or... The position is, Mr. Depp, that you had consumed so much alcohol and so much cocaine by the time you were due to go to the film set that you were being utterly irrational, and it may well be that you simply do not remember what happened. But your behavior that following morning when Whitney arrived was very, very bad indeed. My behavior was bad in what way? I'm about to. I'm sorry to ask the question, then. I... I'm about to tell you. Oh, Thank you. When you agreed to go, it was on the condition that Miss Hurd went with you. She took her sister with her, and she took her little teacup Yorkshire Terrier pistol with her in the car, as well as Whitney and Miss Hurd and Pistol was your driver. Was that Starling Jenkins? Um, yeah, he's one of the drivers, yes. By the way, this guy is um, who MVDV directed us to that um, the, uh, the yacht. Mm-hmm blog and party so he's the black guy in the uh a lot of those pictures that's okay. one of her drivers so he's in on that what we we're obsessed with this guy sterling it's going to be my new fake name mm -hmm. actually i think my next name on this show you know i kind of going back from uh ball petney and jail sink i'm going to be starling jenkins i think next time okay sounds that's good. A good one can't wait uh do you remember which driver it was um i do not i think no, and Nathan Holmes was there? Uh, y yes. Was Nathan Holmes somebody who had supplied drugs to you? On occasion. I mean, Nathan Nathan would be able to safely... <laughs> Nathan, yeah, would safely get a hold of... You know, get his hands on them, I suppose. Right. When you were in the car, you were smoking and you opened the window... And you were angry and you were aggressive? Uh, no, ma'am. Rather like you were in that clip that we saw yesterday of uh, the monster side of your character. Can you stop it for a second? Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. So let's just leave it. So now his assistant, Nathan Holmes, is now used as a drug mule to get him. Let's say you're trying to get in the business. Hollywood, I mean, <laughs> the drug business. And you're an assistant for a big star, and they present to you, hey, um, I'm going to need you to get drugs for me. Um, here are my connections. If you have your own, that's great. Um, and you're going to get them, you're going to buy them, you're going to bring them, you're going to transport them. What would you say? I would say no, because I'm would not going to risk myself. You would firmly say no, or you would think about it if it was a big enough star and it might lead to things. Well, I, I would probably need to know the plan first if I right. if there's any shot of me being discovered. But ultimately, I would probably say no. 
I, I can't believe there's a tremendous amount of. I'm the one that goes to jail. He's not going to jail. Right. Right. He's certainly going to be. I mean, you depending on what I still don't understand the drug laws to this day. They seem to be very buoyant. Mm-hmm. Like you hear stuff about drug busts, and Artie Lang is one example of just like going How, what possession and probation and what is mm-hmm. you like civilians would get twenty five years, and you go I don't get I I, I guess it depends on the state and the judge, but I truly don't understand what the and the possession and I mean, I mean, I'm guessing this guy is constantly doing this too, mm-hmm. like uh, literally, like a Seven Eleven run, a Walmart run. Well, that he's what's up? We're gonna see the text uh, coming up at some point. Yeah, I think they're coming up, but I'm just wondering how you would. I wouldn't do that. Your I'm the response: one, My someone... balls are on the chopping block. I'm not doing that. Does he get fired if he says no? Probably. I'm not doing this. Get your own drug. I mean, you think, I mean, is it like some friggin' DoorDash delivery? I still don't understand that whole drug culture is so fascinatingly mysterious to me, how it all works and how you find these people and the whole delivery process. It's such bizarre. And I knew well, some people I mean, I'm going to say no, and, and then he's going to fire me, and then I'm going to go to a tabloid, and I will live off the money they pay me for the story. Yeah, true. Until I get another job. Okay, we're on 213, 212. 213. You're you're going rather than like you were in the clip you saw yesterday of the monster. So, uh, no, ma'am. I was not in that mode at all. And at one stage, you took hold of Ms. Hurd's dog. It's a tiny little thing, is it not? Very tiny. You can pick it up with one hand. Uh, one of your hands could pick it up quite easily. Uh, of course. It weighs like three pounds. Right. You took hold of pistol and you held her out the window and started making howling noises. Oh, God. You know, I can say it is a very enduring image, but it is absolutely, utterly, an utter falsity. And it is fraudulent. And it is not true. You thought this was a huge joke? Um... No, ma'am. I do not think hanging an animal, <laughs> a small defenseless dog that weighs three pounds out of a window at any speed is, is not my idea of fun, although my sense of humor is kind of slightly skewed. I was going to say your sense of humor, which you explained yesterday, is perhaps uh, rather niche. Would you agree? It is niche, sure. I mean, I, I suppose that is a good way to put it. Were you laughing at a suggestion that you made that you could not put the dog in the microwave? Um, that suggestion of putting the dog in the microwave is not something that I would well, – let me put it this way. Um, uh, it's, it's, it was – that sort of humor was a running joke between Miss Heard, myself, and Miss Henriquez. Her family – oh, my God, here we go. For family and uh, friends, you know, because they're so ludicrously tiny. So, so I would not say that I was the inventor of that particular joke. And also, you know, I was not the only one who was. Um, I, I mean, I was not the only one who brought up anything like that up. It was, it was normal. By the way, is that dog fighting thing coming into your mind right now, David Heard? It's always there in the mind. I mean, microwaving dogs would be a David mm-hmm. Heard thing, right? Yeah. You get in a dog fight, you might as well microwave them. Mm-hmm. Or holding the dog out the window. Oh, yeah. It's a David Heard. While you're move. driving your pickup truck because the dog was moving around too much, maybe. I don't know. I'm yep. speculating. No, totally. Okay. Uh, whilst you were behaving in this extremely bad way, as I've set out. Um. Yes, and I love your use of whilst. Whilst. Nathan Holmes did nothing, and Starling Jenkins did nothing. Well, um, there was nothing for them to do, you know, because there's nothing like that ever happened. Do you remember Ellen Barkin's deposition yesterday in which she described throwing the bottle across the room toward her? I do remember that testimony. And she said the assistant did nothing. I read it out to you yesterday. Um, yes, okay, I, 
the assistant did nothing. You surround yourself with people who never try to control you or tell you what to do. They just tolerate your bad behavior, and their function is to clear up after you. What do you say about that? Um, I disagree and deny that because, you know, in my opinion, that would just be a very sad way to live one's life, a very sad way to, to uh, um, live one's life. You know, as, as, as far as hanging a dog out the window, there is something. I th- You've already denied that, Mr. Depp. I'm sorry? Uh, Miss Foss, I was asking you about the relations you had with employees or other people you, you work with. Oh, yes. What was being suggested was that you surround yourself with people who never tell you what to do. Do you agree or disagree with that? I vehemently disagree with that. Again, with the <laughs> vehemently, tap patently, <laughs> <laughs> categorically. Mm-hmm. I vehemently, patently, and categorically disagree with that, and strenuously as well. Oh, thank you. Uh, you lied to people about your alcohol intake or falling off the wagon, if I can call it more generally. Did you not? You concealed that from people? No, I, I have not concealed it in this case at all. You concealed it at the time it was happening? If one is doing cocaine, I do not think it's something that one should spill out on a restaurant table or amongst other people. You know, It's, it's something that one wants to keep in private. Yes. Uh, you had your sobriety friends, I think you called them. You have said Mr. Dunnett was one of them. Elton John was another one. Is that correct? Um, that is correct. We saw the email to Elton John that you had had 100 days clean, and there was contact between you and Mr. Dunnett. Was there not about your sobriety and how it was going? There had been – I'm not sure if it continues here. Or... Go to page 7 at the front of tab 6. Sorry? The text schedule. Oh, are we now in f- file six? File six. Um, that was page seven, yes? Page seven at the bottom. Yes. Can you see in the middle of that page there is a slightly longer text than the others? It's dated April 13th, 2013. Um, I might be somewhere very far away. Is it um, depositions and declarations or... Uh, no, we're looking at um, tab six, volume six, tab one nineteen. That's you. Uh, no, you you go. He says, "Oh, I'm, oh, you're right. Absolutely right. I'm sorry, sir." Okay. Oh, um, tab this this tab is sucks. I oh, know. tab one nineteen. Sorry. Um, that is all right. I, no, page seven is what I'm looking for. Thank you. Uh, yes. Can you see in the middle of that page? Uh, just get your bearings. Are, are you on page 6F697.7? Uh, yes, your lordship. I'm not, thank you. There's a text from Mr. Dunnett to you dated April 13th, 2013. Yes. So within a week or two of these two incidences where we saw the cocaine lined up, and in the second photograph, the quite considerable amount of whiskey on the kitchen table agreed on the table um yes that was whiskey and cocaine this text took place a couple of weeks after the whiskey on the table photographs we've looked at okay mr dunnett says morning johnny back home in the smoke funeral went well an unusual not a fight in sight hope you're feeling better on day 487 that's a lot of days sober or even 15 months I mean, this chap, Charlie Dunnett, thought you had been sticking to the plan of sobriety, did he not? Um, it appears so, yes. You did nothing to set the record straight and confess to what you'd been doing? Well, you know, we do not see any of my responses to Mr. Dunnett here. Do you suggest that you said to him, Charlie, I have come clean, I have to come clean. I have been snorting humongous amounts of cocaine in the last month and drinking whiskey. Are you suggesting you sent a text like that? Um, I'm suggesting. I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure, especially having been in touch with Elton and Charlie, that I would have told Elton that I failed and that I'd gone back. You know, I would have told Mr. Dunnett at some point. You can help us with the evidence of that if you can find it. Is that what you're saying? I can certainly try and find that. I'm. 
I believe it was more than likely in person with Elton. I mean, I, no documentary proof then. Excuse me. No documentary proof. I, I will check. I'm not. I'll try to find it. All right, that would be very helpful. Absolutely. Can you go to the next text down, which is actually a month later, which would be in May? You sent a couple of texts to Mr. Deuters, your personal assistant. Uh, yes, ma'am. Quote, might need some hydrogen peroxide and some butterfly bandages. Cut my hand last night, end quote. Um, you're going... H218, very last line. Oh, yeah, line. yes, 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 yes. Uh, may require okay. stitches? Um, yes. <laughs> line of the entire deposition. Yeah. Or the testimony. I will poop on your chest. Yes. Which I'm taking is a joke. The last line of those texts is that correct? Um, it is a joke. You had a fairly uh, lav lav wow, lavatorial. lavatorial. Lavatorial, thank you. Yes. Sense of humor. Is that yes. fair? Oh, I love lavatorial. Um, but no, sophomoric, childish, sure. I want to establish establish this was a joke and that you've made that plain. I I had no plans of, of doing that. No. Uh, what was not a joke, I presume, was the fact that you wanted some butterfly bandages for your injured hand? Oh, well, you know, that does not seem like a joke. That does not sound very funny, so it would appear, would it not, that when this text was sent, it appears to be in the morning, because you said that you cut your hand last night, and it was quite a serious cut. Do you agree if it required stitches or may require stitches? Uh, yeah, I mean, yes, I mean, I'm looking at that, and I see... It seems to have happened. I mean, I'm just trying to remember what the cut was. This, you know. If you cannot remember, do you think um, it's one of those occasions where you were in drink or drugs and only realized the extent of your injury the following morning? Because you do not appear to have realized the seriousness of the injury the previous night, do you? If you only asked for bandages the following morning? Well, um, if I had cut my hand, I'm sure I, I wrapped it in something and then would deal with it the next day. Do you remember this incident at all? I do not remember it, no. All right, I will move on. You've made it plain that Ms. Hurd was not supporting your sobriety, and I've suggested that is not true. You had a call. You had a friend called Paul Bettany? Um, yes, ma'am. And Paul Bettany and you both shared an enjoyment of controlled drugs and or alcohol. Do you agree? Wow, this is, this is where Bettany's like mm -hmm. shaking in his Disney boots here. This has got to freak him the f out. Um, uh, at, at times, yeah, we did, sure. <laughs> um, do you share? Did you, sh did you share with Paul Bettany the fact that Miss Heard was trying to wean you off drug taking? Uh, yeah, yes. Oh, just a minute. The question was, did you sh share with Mr. Bettany the fact that Miss Heard, Amber Heard, was trying to wean Mr. Depp off drinking drugs? Mr. Depp agreed. Uh, you did say that sort of thing. I'm not asking for a verbatim. Um, she was quite adamant that I not drink anymore. And she was quite adamant that I should stop any use of cocaine or recreational drugs, yes. Thank you for that. But how does that last statement that she was adamant you should not drink alcohol or take drugs, recreational drugs, how does that square with your suggestion that she did not support your sobriety, which is in your statement? Well, um, let, let me remind you what you said. I was in recovery from drug addiction during significant parts of my marriage to Amber. Instead of supporting my sobriety, she often encouraged me to drink alcohol and take drugs, even though she knew my relationship with alcohol and drugs was a difficult one for me. She never supported me in my attempt to be strong and avoid alcohol. When I read that to you earlier, you said you stuck by that. She never supported you. Now you're saying to Mr. Bettany that she was telling you to stop the drink and the drugs. Well, you know, I, I would say yes. I mean, uh, the full support of someone who is believed to be an alcoholic or someone who is believed to be addicted to drugs, I, I would say um, would then themselves stop drinking in front of a person and stop doing drugs around that person. I would say that that's full support. You know, that is support of someone who that you love and you care about. If you ask them to make that sacrifice – you should be willing to make the sacrifice yourself, I, I believe. 
All right. Just for the avoidance of doubt, Ms. Hurd would drink two or three glasses of wine quite regularly in the evening, would she not? Even when you were trying to be sober? Um, I beg your pardon? That was, but it was two or three bottles, not glasses. That's complete nonsense, Mr. Depp. Oh, uh, is that, that how, if that is how you feel about it, I, I respect it. Uh, Mr. Depp, I have said this to you before, but it was Miss Wallace's job to put her client's case first. Oh, yeah, yes, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with that at all. Her client's case is that she took only two or three glasses. I'm interested in your evidence. If your evidence is that she had two or three bottles, not just glasses, then it is what we'll make note of. Well, then that is exactly what I said, Your Honor. I mean, she she said that she did not believe me, and it's nonsense. So. I did not say I do not believe you. Oh, or is it nonsense or something like that? Or, what Miss Wasp believes or does not believe is completely besides the point. What I'm interested in is your um, evidence, and, and I've understood what you have to say. And Yes, um, thank you, my lord. Uh, can you go to page eight, my lord, if I can finish this passage? Oh, yes, of course. It would be a good time for a break. Um, yes. Uh, page eight, Mr. Depp. We, we are still um, in the text schedule? Yes, this is the text sent on June 4th, 2013 from Mr. Bettany to you, and I will read it out. I've just thought of a way for us to make a lot of money. I know you already have a lot of money, but I mean a lot of money and very little effort. First of all, we buy Amber a pet beaver, and then we take pictures of you shaving said beaver. All that is left to do is create a website with the domain name Johnny Depp Shaves Amber Heard's Beaver, and then we sell advertising space like fucking crazy. Clearly, clearly there are many spinoffs you could poke punch. It, do you remember that email? Sorry, that text? Uh, no, I do not remember this one in particular. Do you think it's, that's a respectful way of somebody uh, hear your friend Paul Bettany talking about your girlfriend? Uh, no, you know, it's not the most respectful way to speak about Miss Heard. Um, I, they they had their differences, I tell you, and they were they did not like each other very much. Let us wow, go down. Um, do you, what do you think about this so far? So we're on top of two twenty four. What do you think about this? Um, what do you think about her attempts to stop his drinking and drugging, which he now admits to? And he had a pretty weak follow-up about how she should almost throw her body in front of – and I'm not defending her at all, but like he just doesn't come off good in the incessant drug stuff. It's very, very – you can I, see almost – I agree with him more. He's no accountability. What? I agree with him more than you do. I think if I'm around somebody, let's say I live with somebody who's a drunk and I know they're trying to not drink, I'm not going to drink in front of them. I'm going to try to get that out of our lives as much as I can. I'm able to, you know, I would hope that I would be able to control myself not to keep glugging two to three bottles of wine a night while they're trying to be sober. Yeah, I mean, that's the environment they're in. He should be at a point if he's got sponsors and Elton John and all this bit, that and all the different residences and stuff that he shouldn't just to – you have to get to a point, I think, of anyone who's maintaining sobriety where you don't give a shit who's drinking around. You're not that easily influenced, especially by her. Mm -hmm. that he should be so impressionable that she's pushing him over the edge. I don't know. And it, and he's admitting she's trying to stop him from doing it all the time. It's just, he just – he doesn't have any accountability for his own actions in this mode. Let us go down. You send a text to Mr. Bettany on the 11th of June. Let's burn Amber. Do you remember sending that? I do not remember sending it. But I, I remember the exchange. I, I've read it, yes. Let us just carry on with the exchange then. Yeah, yes, yes, please. That's sarcastic doubt. Of yeah, course. Yes, yes, please. He's a southern gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
On the 6th, sorry, uh, the 11th of June, Mr. Bentney then says, having thought it through, I don't think we should burn Amber. She's oh, I love we, we've read, I'm sorry to stop you. We've read this like a hundred times mm-hmm. on here. Just the, the, the Bentney news just keeps coming. And I, I love this. I just, I love him all rattled in the text. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, read it. I want to hear you read it. Okay, having thought it through, I don't think we should burn Amber. She is delightful company and easy on the eye. Plus, I'm not sure she's a witch. We could, of course, try the English course of action in these predicaments. We do a drowning test. Thoughts? What's NB? NB, I have a pool. You then say, let's drown her before we burn her. I will fuck her burnt corpse afterwards to make sure she's dead. (laughs) And Mr. Bentony says, my thoughts entirely. Let's be certain before we pronounce her a witch. Now, this reference to her being a witch was, I suggest, a reference to the fact that she was trying to stop you drinking and taking drugs and that you resented her for doing that and were joking with Mr. Bettany about her being the moral police, that sort of thing. That's a reach, first of all. I suggest it's because she was trying to be a nice wife. No. (laughs) Okay, go ahead. Uh, Again, her, and I will just answer the question. Sorry, what's the question exactly? I suggest these references to Amber being a witch, which came from Mr. Bentony. Oh, yes. And certainly you joined in. Oh, yes. And I'm sorry, were references to the fact that she was trying to spoil your fun as you saw it by being able to take drugs and drink as much as you chose to. Do you agree with that or disagree? I had spoken to Mr. Bentony quite a lot as we were working together and he was a very close friend. So he knew our arguments and fighting, and he knew the details. So, you know, I was, I was resentful of the fact that Miss Heard was very aggressive and, and quite insulting about my use of alcohol. Or cocaine came into the picture. She, she did not like Mr. Bettany, and, and I'm afraid she did not really like me all that much either, and she's constantly harping on things that didn't even exist. She did not like you when you were high on drugs and drunk on alcohol, did she? She did not like that she, she she did not like me using alcohol or drugs because she she had some delusional idea that they turned me into, you know, as you've spoken about, this this said monster. All right. I think that is very helpful. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Just before we leave the 11th of June, can you go to file 8, tab 64? Uh, there are subdivisions in 64. There's 64 and then there's 64A. It is the one behind 64, which is email from Amber H. Uh, yes. Uh, have you got the page? I j- just wait till Mr. Depp uh, gets to the page. One. I have it, page 12. Oh, that's you. Sorry. Oh, no, sorry. No, I have it. It's on uh, page, Gary preview page 12. <laughs> Judge? I think it's actually 12. It may be difficult to tell. Uh, oh, oh, thank you. I think we are all looking at the same document. Just to remind ourselves, uh, your text about burning Amber and fucking her burnt corpse were on June 11th when you were exchanging these sentiments with Mr. Bettany. On the same day to the time very near, it would appear, uh, Miss Heard wrote this email to herself, but it, it is dated, you see, on the 11th of June. Um, well, you know, my birthday is two days before that. Thank you very much. Happy yes, birthday, I, I, Mr. Depp. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to be 58 for the rest of my life. Yes, yeah. I see. Thank you. I just don't know if I can do this anymore. It's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Half of you I love madly. It is a letter to you, but not sent to you. Do you, you understand that? Uh, thank you. Quote, it's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Half of you I love madly, the other half scares me. I can't take him. I wish I could, but I can't. The problem is I never really know or understand which one I am dealing with until it's too late. The drinking assures me that I'm dealing with the monster, the abused, scared, insecure, violent little boy. I just can't tell where the line starts. Also, drugs seem to guarantee I will be forced to deal with the monster as well once again. It's knowing what how much, and when, which makes all the difference. Sometimes the hangover the morning after is just as bad as the full-on disco bloodbath I've come to expect. 
You live in a world full of enablers. You cut out and resent, whether you realize it or not. Anyone who isn't an enabler. I can make a clear distinction as to who falls into which category with complete ease. Just how often you see them and what role they play in your day-to-day -day life distinguishes where they fall on the enabling scale. I watched yesterday everyone around you picked you up off the floor, held you up, and got on with your life, preventing you from really falling. With so much help, of course, you can't know how much this hurts you and your life because you pay people around you to prevent your feet, oh my God, from having to hit rock bottom, as they say. Yesterday, I saw you pass out amongst vomiting three times, all three times, Jerry, end quote. That is a reference to Jerry Judge, your security. Uh, yes, ma'am. Oh, Sarah, that was a load. Take a break. <laughs> All right, we're Let done. Me, let's comment. Let's comment <laughs> up from there. That's, that's a load. So this um, is an email that she allegedly wrote and never sent. Why would you? It doesn't make any sense to me. Why not hit send, right? She's yeah. She's saying she didn't. She's saying, I mean, right. I mean, is that not an admission that it's doesn't it, you wrote it like three days before this? To try, who can't? Who can't doctor and go? Uh, I know exactly. Oh, I just, I just, I just wrote this. It was in my uh, my draft box in email. I meant to send this yeah. four years ago. This is what I really well, mean. And and I'm like, she, oh yeah, that's valid. That's that's valid. Oh sure, we, that's admissible. Me, meanwhile, she's banging an expert who knows exactly how to change metadata on anything. It's true. That's a so great point. She could that's have a written great it. point. Holy shit! You know that I don't know if I've ever heard anybody make that point. Well, that I'm sure people you, have. But doctoring I think I like, have. technology. Have you made this before? I don't, doctoring I so. technology is exactly what Mollusk does, mm -hmm. right? So if you want to make it look authentic, someone's going, "Yeah, yeah, okay." You know the uh, the font looks good, and yeah, okay. He, I mean, that's got to be like child's play to him. Well, they've already had forensics done on some of these photographs she's taken. And they, if I'm not mistaken, last time I heard, her metadata was uh, changed. If you say metadata one more time. What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to push you down. I'm going to push oh, okay. Enrique, <laughs> Whitney Enriquez down the stairs. Well, that's what you'll call it. Okay. Down a All spiral right. staircase in, from Man Ray. All right. Let's get back to business here. Okay. You ready? No, no, no. Wait. Let me just hold on. You read a lot there. Um, I'm ready to the, keep the going. Paul, the Paul Bettany stuff is insane. Mm -hmm. Right? He's, as we say on here, I've said it five times. He's Disney, he's Disney boy now. Depp is not. Depp is fired from Disney. He's playing the vision. He played, he was in, he was in, uh, he was in Solo, for Christ's sake. Star Wars is owned by Disney. So he's a Disney boy and he's trying to back away from this. And he is terrified. This this stuff, it's still coming out. He's trying to kind of he, – he's trying to walk it back and he's trying to clean it up. And there's just no cleaning it up. Depp's saying this is this is the exchange we have. This is what we talk about. He's saying he doesn't know her. He's never been – they hate each other. And mm -hmm. that was written there in black and white. And I'm saying Bettany was part of what Doug Stanhope um, wrote in his open letter that – they were probably like, you know, I think Stanhope might have been in contact with Bettany going, talking about the setup, knowing it was coming down. Mm -hmm. You know, Bettany was, we kept saying, we, we knew this was happening. We heard her. It was in plain sight. We couldn't do a damn thing about it because the emperor's clothes. Um, I would think Bettany's the guy he's talking to the whole time. Probably. He had, he was talking to Isaac. He was talking to Bettany. Those are two, and probably Doug Stanhope a little no, that's bit. What it, no, I'm, Sta I'm saying Stanhope. Oh, that you said I'm, Bettany, I'm sorry. referencing Stanhope's letter. He's talking about they almost had like an intervention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm without sorry. Depp. Mm -hmm. So they're talking, friends amongst each other going, she is setting him up. Listen to this shit. Mm -hmm. I heard her say this to this. That she's this. Listen to this crap. We got to do something here. And they're just like, nah, you can't. It's, he's too powerful. Mm -hmm. he's, he's he's too big a star. We can't get kicked out of the circle here. And then Stanhope used the the, the phrase "Emperor's new clothes," mm -hmm. "Emperor's clothes" or whatever. That you know can't tell. And I I think Stanhope I think Betney all along. He he and Stanhope were probably having discussions about what to do about this, and they just didn't do anything. And Stanhope admits they didn't do anything. 
and you know, uh, Bettany hates her guts and she hates him. And I wonder how that went down. He claims, uh, he didn't, wasn't around them. I mean, if he's not around them, it's probably because they hate each other. Remember he said he wasn't, they, they weren't, he didn't, he wasn't around them during their marriage. Yeah, but he's also in these text messages saying she's a delight to be around, sarcastically. Yeah, that doesn't make that doesn't jibe with him yeah, saying he, just, he wasn't he's around. Just, he's, like you said, he's trying to distance, distance himself. He's, Disney from boy all is this. trying to back away. From, trying to back. He's on the uh, list we saw today. But we'll get in. Yes. Yeah, we'll get into that later. That's a, that's the next episode. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. it's too massive to throw yeah. into this. We're gonna do some background on all these people. So okay, all right, let's keep going. We have so much to do. All right. Uh, quote, Jerry had carried you from the floor on the plane. Nathan mentioned how many times he has had to break into locked doors to wake you up and passed out on the toilet. You would have embarrassed yourself countless times if somebody would be honest enough to tell you, to show you. If someone filmed you while you were in this state, you would be mortified. If, if is embarrassing just to watch it happen. You can't know because people, friends keep smiling at your face and then turning their heads and rolling their eyes at how ridiculous they feel and looking and look, picking up a grown man from his own piss and vomit, knowing he'll never be able to realize how bad he is. Hungover post pills is not much better. You're mean and insensitive. I have no reason to stay with you and I won't. You don't pay. (laughs) I don't have to lie to you for my job, livelihood or kids. I will never want to be locked into you my freedom is now i realize the only thing i have to protect me i will never ever trust you to trap me i myself oh my god i'm blurring together i myself watched you pass out cold on the floor after drinking yourself sick one of these times you cut yourself so badly you needed stitches end quote do accept mr depp that ties in with the text where you were asking for stitches okay this text this was never sent exactly I we're to, we're to believe she has this in a draft in her email box or text somehow mm-hmm. a saved text she never sent. I'm gonna save this text I never sent to him it's five email, years yeah. ago. Mm-hmm. To was supposed to, and it's the perfectly written thing. It's every exactly. all her ducks are in a row, and she's the most responsible thing, and he's a disaster, and he's an absolute dumpster fire of with with enablers around him self-destructing and she's the only one that she can stand on her own her livelihood is completely galvanized by her association with him Mm -hmm. livelihood she writes there like this is this is what gets me the most um you don't pay me yeah. I don't have to lie to you for my job or lie. Yes, you do. You have no, you are enti- anything lucrative you've done is your association with them. And I think half the film producers hope you can get him to do a cameo as he did for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. Remember one of their fights and where she cut his finger off was over. He wouldn't put her in the will and the postnuptial. Yeah. Yeah. And he wouldn't get her a credit card in just her name. But, I mean, he, he, that he'd be paying for, of course. But she would have to use his card, and she didn't feel like he gave her enough independence. Oh, my God. Anyway, nothing you know, at about – he, He's lucid enough to know, I'm not going to have her in league with my kids in a will. Mm-hmm. I could die any minute. The substances he's taken and the – the recklessness in the late fifties. There, there's a part of me that thinks he could. Do- Dr. Kipper aside, who looks like Johnny Frotto, <laughs> and uh, Johnny Frotto and uh, Robert Kraft had a kid. Mm-hmm. That You're right. he, he could, and whether he can get insured on these movies again, knowing what they know from these transcripts, I think is a whole other beast. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so. At least he's lucid enough to say, I am not giving you dominion for my will with my kids, knowing this can't possibly end well. Could you imagine if she was and the kids – it'd be like a, a little – well, not quite in the same – it's different, but I was going to say Courtney Love and uh, Francis Bean. Mm-hmm. Isn't that kind of a mess or was it a mess? Or It was a mess. I don't know what it is now. So – Thank God for that, at least, right? Mm-hmm. So. Oh, so, so I'm Sherborne here? Yeah, if you want to be. My lord, my lord, with respect, 
Miss Walsh is reading out an email that was never sent. She was using it, no doubt, as a vehicle to try and put things to Mr. Depp. We all know what Miss Walsh is trying to do. And with respect, she should ask questions of the actual document as opposed to trying to put references to somehow get into the evidence. All right. Let me go further down the document then. Mr. Depp, then I will ask a question. Uh, can you see three lines from the bottom of that page? We have a sentence that says, quote, and you get the convenient benefit of never having to remember it. And this is how she throws that in. That's yeah. nice for you. So you get away with so many lies that you tell yourself. You actually trick yourself into thinking the craziest lies when you are fucked up because you are so accustomed to people not calling you out on your bullshit. They work for you. Hello. You actually believe your shit. Need a reference about how you actually thought I hit you first or that I was hiding drugs. The list goes on. Admit some of your own shit first, end quote. You know, you know it's amazing. This is like, you know, we have these fantasies as humans of if I could go back in time, I would do this. You know, mm-hmm. every, you ever have like a regret like of course, four hours does. later, like I wish I yeah. said this and – God damn it. Why didn't I say this? And I do this on Radio Gunk all the time. I have like these things. Oh, why didn't I say that? And I forgot to say this. I could have said the per- – and it, stuff hits you like way too late and you wish you could go back and like mm-hmm. just edit yourself or say the perfect thing or maybe you have regrets 10 years. Before. She's literally doing this for real. Like these texts and emails is like you have you now have the superpower of going back in time and saying the very perfect thing. But now she's convincing that she did say these things. Yep. This is a, a fake draft in an email. She meant to say it. She didn't. She was so sweet. She didn't send it. Mm-hmm. She, she took pity on him and I never hit send. She was afraid to send it because she didn't know probably what he would do. But it's crafted perfectly yeah she gets all of her points in there yes every Mm -hmm. single point you could ever make Mm -hmm. perfect not and nothing's left out Mm -hmm. um it calls him out on all the psychological stuff just just it i'd love to see her crafting this the three days before this (laughs) trial came yeah so it's so it's so crazy to have elon musk in her corner Mm -hmm. it's pretty insane it's 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 really not. I don't know if it incriminates her more or gives her an, a technological. She has every advantage. advantage. She yeah. has every advantage. He is like, so like beloved said, for some reason. About who? Nobody is going to go after her. him. Yeah. I know. I don't. I don't. What is his? I don't even. <sighs> Depp's more beloved than he is, as far as if you're just talking about. Yeah, Hollywood. but he's. He's the media loves him, so they were, are but never going to go against him. He's way too he, powerful. He usurps the pop culture Hollywood thing. He's more mm-hmm. of uh, an inventor. You know what I mean? Like it's not yep. Depp has a specific wheelhouse or community of people who are, but Musk kind of goes outside of the Hollywood thing. So I don't know. I never understood how beloved he is or or not. It seems like he's also hated. I don't know. He's polarizing, to say the least. I don't quite understand his uh, fan base, Mm -hmm. if if you will. Do you? No, I don't. Okay, here's Sherborne in 16. Uh, My lord, Ms. Waltz is doing – literally reading – an entire document. She said she was going to ask a question and was still waiting for that question. Miss Walsh, I think you need to ask a question. I will ask the question now and then I will ask something else. Your answer to Mrs. Hurd's allegations that you were a serial domestic abuser is that this is a hoax and she's playing a hoax to somehow get attention or to associate herself with the Me Too movement. That is your answer to these allegations she makes, is it not? You you never hit her. She hit you, and she's developing this hoax. Oh, hoax is probably the best word one could use because you know the allegation. All of the allegations are patently untrue. <laughs> it's patently again. You see in this email, which, as I said, is dated. Uh, she accuses you of having hurt her physically and emotionally. Um, is this? 
the email she never sent? <laughs> this is the email she never sent. Uh, we know she wrote this, you see. Well, I, I wish I wish she had sent it. I love the sarcasm, Deb. But see, this is the problem with this trial, and you have to read it in transcript and don't get to see it. You're not going to hear his sarcasm. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yeah, it's coming up. We'll see it soon enough. Uh, Mr. Depp, wait for now the next question, please. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, sir. Can't can wait for the next uh, email she didn't send. Can you think of any reason why Miss Heard would have written a letter like this, uh, which she did not send to you, describing somebody who was regularly out of control to the extent that they would pass out, vomited, and soiled themselves? Somebody who would be protected by their staff, somebody who had no recollection of what they had done once they had sobered up. How does that document, um, can you think of any reason why that would be sent in 2013 before you had even asked Ms. Heard to marry you? From, from hearing you read this text to me, um, <laughs> that was not sent to me. Email. Okay. It says, oh, I'm sorry. Well. From hearing, you said this, and we're going back, uh, I saw a text, e well, email, excuse me, <laughs> email, even worse. And and from some of the information that I've garnered from this, my, my experience yesterday <laughs> and having studied the case, I will suggest, ma'am, that it appears to me that Ms. Erd is building a um, dossier <laughs> very early on it appears to be some sort of insurance policy for later. So Very well said, I, Mr. Depp. Mm -hmm. So can I just understand this? Her hoax, as you've described it. Uh, you no no you described it as a hoax, and, and and I agree. I think it's in one of your documents, but I will find that after the break. Oh, thank you very much. The hoax is just not a question of her making a false allegation in a domestic violence restraining order. Uh, this is something she had plotted for three years. Uh, four, actually. Oh, no, no, three. You're correct. Three years. And that is your explanation for the email I've just read to you? Uh, by the evidence that I've seen. Okay. And experienced. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. Uh, my lord, that would be a convenient time. And then they go to break. Okay. Um, after yes, break. Mr. Depp. Okay. Do what does it say after the break? Just skip the break. All right. Okay, um, we'll just go right to nickel. All right, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Depp, we're going to take a break now. I just uh, enabled you to stretch your legs a little bit. I, oh, thank you, sir. All right. And go down I'll to... Stretch my, I'm going to stretch my third leg, if you know what I mean. <laughs> go, down, go down to 15. <laughs> I'll start. Okay, okay. and get a load again. That's a lot. That's fine. Yeah. Mr. Depp, before we broke off, do you remember you said hoax was my word and that I would look up where I had seen it in your documents? I have found a reference if it helps. Um, I can either show it to you in the in the document if you're happy for me to read it from your statement. And Mr. Sherborne will interrupt if I have misquoted anything that you've said. At paragraph 19 of your second witness statement, you say this. Quote, the sad irony of her abuse hoaxes, end quote, you were referring to Miss Heard, quote, is that they mirror what she actually subjected to subjected me to during the course of our relationship, end quote. It is your description, not mine, that Miss Heard had played an elaborate hoax on you. Uh, pardon me? Do you accept that? Um, yes, I do. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. You've made it plain from what you've said uh, before we broke for a 10 minute break slightly extended that she must have been planning now that you've looked at all the material you know she was planning that hoax for at least three years uh, yes okay I'm going to move on to another subject your birthday is on June 9th and in 2013 a group of you went to a place called Hicksville Hicksville Trailer Park in California um, yes it turned uh, 50 <laughs> you remember that occasion uh, I do remember that occasion. I do not recall it was my birthday. It may well not have been your birthday. It may be that the date is difficult to ascertain. Um, we are happy for any information about this. But you agree that around the time of your birthday, which is on June 9th, so before or after, late May or in June itself, a group of you went to Hicksville Trailer Park? Uh, yes, ma'am. 
The people who went were yourself, Miss Heard, Miss Heard's sister, Whitney, her friend, uh, Kirsty Sexton. Do you remember her? <laughs> uh, yes, I do. And her friend, Raquel Pennington, who is known as Rocky? Yes. You were all staying in the trailer park? Um, yes. A group of you had taken over a number of these trailers? Yes, I, I'm not, I believe they were all reserved. They were all reserved for your party, and you and Miss and Amber had the main trailer, the master suite, as it were, the main trailer. Uh, yeah, sure. And you, at that time, got on well with Christy Sexton. Uh, yes, I did. You would chat to her quite uh, freely, joke with her. Uh, uh, yes. Do you remember an occasion when you were in your apartment and Christy Sexton was there and there were doctors there uh, because you needed to take drugs for a drug test for insurance purposes? Do you remember an occasion like that? Um, yes. I mean, taking drugs, taking drug tests for films when you are, is kind of what they call an essential element of the film, you know, for insurance purposes. And, uh, you know, they test you for everything. Wow, everything. Know, it's crazy. He scoots by that. Yeah, it's everything. Insane. All right. You told Christy Sexton not to worry because those tests were easy to fake. Um, no, those tests are not easy to fake. In fact, um, I do not recall even saying that. Have you ever faked a drug test? Wow, this is crazy shit. Wow, this is so insane with the insurance thing we talk about all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, just, just a minute, please. I, I withdraw that last question. I will move on to Hicksville. You say that never happened? What never happened? I'm, I'm sorry. The interchange about you saying how easy it was to fake a drug test? I have never faked drugs on a test, no. Um, I understand that as part of your answer. Have, have you ever any recollection of saying to Kirsty Sexton that you had faked drugs on a test? Uh, no, your lordship. Oh, thank you. Now, do you agree that the visit to Hicksville was around the time, and by around I mean within a month or so of the texting that we saw with Paul Bettany when you were going to burn Amber? I could not be sure of that. Right, because that we know was about 4th or the 11th of June and within a few weeks either side. You cannot be sure of the date at all? I do not want to press you if you cannot. I have – I just do not recall the date we're at. Hicksville is all. I understand. Do you accept that was a period when you were both drinking and taking controlled drugs, in particular cocaine or MDMA and or mushrooms? On the trip to Hicksville, there was, of course, there was alcohol in general. Everybody had their drug of choice. You know, so there was some people doing MDMA, mushrooms. I was, I was drinking myself and, and I was uh, smoking marijuana. I just did three, oh, probably three little, as they call them, uh, stems of the mushrooms, but, you know, to no effect. I think you had a quantity of white powder with you. I was not using cocaine at Hicksville. What about MDMA? I do not do any MDMA at Hicksville because it would have been a waste of time. It, it, you know, it just doesn't do much for me. Well, you brought drugs to the party, to the Hicksville party, did you not? I I had brought marijuana, and, and well, you know, I brought marijuana. Again, we are going to have to agree to disagree. I suggest you brought a quantity of white powder. Whether that was cocaine or not, that was something that you had. Do you remember in the evening, um, the group of you were sitting around, and I think you were playing the guitar at some stage um, around the fire? Uh, yeah, that, yeah, yes. Yes, and the drugs that were taken on that occasion, they were recreational. Do you agree with what I'm saying? It was a social, social, oh my God, sociable event. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure, of course, sure. It is not uncommon in the circles that you move in that people take recreational drugs, particularly in a party setting. It is not uncommon, no. And that was the level of drug taking there apart from... Your drug taking, Mr. Depp, because you took considerably more drugs than anyone else that night? Uh, well, Miss Wallace, if that's a question, then Mr. Depp needs the opportunity to answer it. If... Yes, you took considerably more drugs than anyone else that night, did you not? No, ma'am. Did not. You, 
you started to get angry, the monster joined the party, and you took exception to a woman who was in your group called Kelly Sue. Do you remember oh Kelly Oh, my Sue? God. Here we go with fucking Kelly. How about Kelly Sue and Betty Sue having it out, right? Mm-hmm. How great would yep. that be? I did not know her name at the time, but now, you know, of course I do. You know who I'm talking about? Indeed, I do. Kelly Sue was sitting very close to Miss Heard and was being rather affectionate. Rather affectionate. You took exception to this? Well, yes, I did. She was putting her hands on Amber, and I thought it was an uncomfortable position to put her in. To put Amber in? To put Miss Heard in? To put Miss Heard in, yes. Miss Heard was not saying, I, I mean, Miss Heard is quite a feisty woman, as you've said more than once in your descriptions of her. <laughs> She is more than capable of saying to somebody, get off of me, if they touch her and she does not want them to. Why did you take exception to Kelly Sue? Oh, well, you know, I suppose Ms. Heard didn't have to. So you were being the Southern gentleman again, were you, that night? <laughs> she just can't stop throwing at his face. Uh, if you like, sure. Because you actually became extremely angry with angry with Kelly Sue and became quite unpleasant, shouting at her and eventually saying to her, do you know how much pressure it would take to break your wrist? Um, well, that never happened. How did you deal with the situation? What would you say to Miss Kelly Sue? Um, as I recall, the incident is not around the campfire where I was playing guitar. It was nightfall. And we're looking around the place and, you know, there's a pool table and there was a pool and you could climb the ladder to get in it. So as the girls were congregating, this Kelly Sue began to touch Ms. Heard in ways that were beyond what one would accept as normal affection. They were quite sexual and uh, quite aggressive. And uh, she was clearly high, very high. And your impression was that Ms. Heard did nothing to prevent the show of a, a, an affection from Ms. From Kelly Sue, is that right? Well, I, I remember that she just sort of was looking at her, smiling. I believe Miss Kelly Sue was a friend of uh, Raquel Pennington's. Uh, it perhaps does not matter who she's a friend of. No, I think it does. Just in terms of maybe, maybe she didn't want to be rude to Raquel's friend. Yeah, in reality, she loved it. Well, I mean, she loves making him jealous, and he knows the toss you on re bullshit, and he's uh, jealous, threatened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know if I blame him. I guess he's so in a pussy fog at this point. It's his birthday party, and it's her friends, which is so irritating to me as I dwell on it. Mm-hmm. I, there's not one confidant of his at this thing. Mm-hmm. But he does. His memory is like he's got the weirdest sieve, or lack of steel trap memory of lack thereof, and the things he he knows every drug ingestion, but doesn't know the date of the thing. Yeah, there's really obvious shit he doesn't, and then but he knows all the drug details. Mm-hmm. It doesn't help him certainly. No, it doesn't. Okay. So I see. So it was not a question of Miss Heard going along with the show of affection. It was a question of her not feel being a not feeling able to rebuff it. You know, I thought it was an uncomfortable situation for her. And how did you deal with that uncomfortable situation? Well, I I I ended up uh, I removed Miss Kelly Sue's hand from Miss Heard's body, and I told her not to do that. And uh, you know, the first of all, that's my girl. Second of all, it's just rude and invasive. It's just she was, um, you know, she was quite glassy eyed and she seemed pretty unsure of her surroundings. So she she seemed um, really just very unstable on her feet. And I just remember saying to her, you know, if if you're if you're going to take this drug, MDMA, you should know if you're able to handle it or not. Right. Do not take it if you can't handle it. You see, I'm going to suggest that you were quite angry by Kelly Sue. It was not a polite removal of the hand. You were quite forceful, and you made the threat that I've already suggested to you, which you've denied. But not only that, you were actually quite angry with Miss Heard about this. Uh, no, no, ma'am, I wasn't. And you had a big argument with Miss Heard when you got back to your trailer? We 
actually did have a big argument when we arrived back at that trailer, yes. The argument was really fueled by two things. One was the fact that you had consumed a lot of alcohol and drugs that night, and you had become very aggressive, as we've seen in the video, that you're prone to become. And secondly, that you were very jealous. And again, you've accepted that you have on occasions been jealous. That is why the argument started. The argument started about Kelly Sue. In a way, um, it did. Yes, you're, you're correct about that. The argument um, did start because of the incident with this Miss Kelly Sue. Because, you know, when we when we, we arrived back at our trailer, Ms. Heard began to yell and scream at me. And, and that had ruined everyone's weekend. And that, you know, once again... I was the bummer somehow, you know, and I'd ruined everyone's good time. So, so I was demeaned for being concerned. Ruined the good time because of the Kelly Sue exchange. Uh, yes. You know, I think, I think when people are under the influence of MDMA and, and mushrooms and alcohol at that level, you can get quite hyped up because in the MDMA, uh, there's a lot of speed in the MDMA uh, and MDMA. So she was, she was, she was on a very good run. Let's just say, Miss Heard, and uh, she was quite pumped up. I suggest that Miss Heard took mushrooms that night, not MDMA, but mushrooms. It's quite a different effect, is it not? Well, mushrooms is a different effect. Mushrooms are hallucinatory. Hallucinogenic. It is a hallucinatory drug. Um psilocybin uh so if she's on a hallucinatory drug and i'm not on a hallucinatory drug to that degree that she is then then her recollection could be maybe a little skewed well you were on mdma mixed no i was not with speed Uh, i was not and i suggest you were very hyped up very very hyped up indeed i was not on mdma as I did not have MDMA. I believe that was uh, left up to Miss Heard's friends to bring that one along. Again, if they had MDMA, which they did, I would say that there was not enough to go around even. Let us just say, so I did not do it because I found it was a waste, as it does not really affect me in the same way that it does others. You know, as mushrooms do not affect me in the same way as it does others as well. I'm not saying... I'm unique. I'm well, the only person in the world, but that trailer that you stayed in with Miss Heard got smashed up, did it not? A bathroom sconce got smashed up. I did get very. I was very upset at being uh, yet again treated as the pardon the expression the turd in the punch pole. Um, and and that was quite unpleasant. I did not feel that I deserve to be screamed at or demeaned and, and treated like, you know, garbage for having done something that I felt was right and correct. So, so during the height of the argument, I punched the glass art deco light fixture in the bathroom above the bathroom mirror. And then I, you know, I smashed it. The trailer was uh, very, very badly damaged the next day. There was a wall lamp, a sconce, as you call it, hanging off the wall, but there was a mess everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. Uh, you had trashed the trailer. I am going to say no, I did not. You just limited your anger to tearing off the wall lamp, is that right? No, um, I did not tear off the wall lamp, Miss Was. I punched the lighting fixture and all the glass around the bulb. All right. Do you remember uh, Kirsty Sexton coming into the trailer the next morning? No, I do not remember Kirsty Sexton coming into the trailer that morning. I remember going to the manager of Hicksville. Yes, with your security? Uh, I'm sorry? With your security team? No. Uh, were your security team there? Yes. When I, I had security there, but they... You know. Sorry, you carry on. You were about to tell us you went to the manager? No. Yes, all by myself. Uh, I did not feel threatened, so I did not need a security team to go talk to the manager. I found the manager and I said, hey, look, uh, I'm sorry. I broke a lighting fixture in the trailer. I'll pay for any damages there is. I'm, I'm just terribly sorry. The manager came over to the trailer. He came in and, and he looked at the fixture and said, 
oh, no, no, no problem. That's fine. He left for about 10 minutes. He came back with another fixture, and, and he screwed it on above the light bulb. Simple as that. You see, that's not what happened at all. In fact, your security team negotiated or had to negotiate negotiate with the owners about sorting out uh, the much more extensive damage that you had done and that you were offering money to them. The owners became very upset. because. Do you remember a wedding party was due to arrive within a couple of hours? Uh, I do have a vague memory, yeah. I mean, we had to get out of there, yes. The owners were saying, uh, you cannot just pay for it. We have people coming in two hours. They never expressed that to me. As I said, I spoke with the manager, brought him to the trailer, showed him the damage, and then he went to his office and returned with the replacement bulb. You have told us that, and I understood your account on that. Well, okay, well, I will not say it again then. <laughs> there is no need to say it again unless there is anything new that you need to add. Uh, the trailer was trashed by you because of the physical fight that you had with Miss Heard in the trailer on the night before, the night that you had made the objections about Kelly Sue. That is what I suggest happened? Well, you know, the trailer was not trashed. Your Lordship, there are matters dealt with in the confidential part of this case. I have said that it would be convenient if the private part of this hearing could be dealt with as conveniently as possible. In other words, in one session. Yes, absolutely. If that means you taking or talking out of order, I... It does, because... Well, then I understand that, but I think the priority should be minimized to the movement between the public and open. I agree. Public and private. I can deal with it all together toward the end of the cross-examination. Thank you. Mr. Depp, you were very angry, angry with Miss Hurd, and amongst other things, you physically hit her and pushed her around in the trailer that the two of you had rented. And during the course of that struggle, things got broken, and that is how the trailer was trashed. What do you say about that? I say that is not the case, ma'am. Can I move on to another subject? Um, I just want to ask you, do you accept that you have referred to Miss Hurd and her disapproval of your drink and drug habit, and you have referred to her as a lesbian? In camp counselor? Uh, I have never uttered those words. Can we go to file seven, tab 2B? <laughs> Do you see him saying lesbian camp counselor? I don't know. It's so out there. I don't know. It's kind of in keeping with his Thompsonian uh, mm, speak. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. I hope he said it. I hope he did. <laughs> uh you say 2B, Miss Walsh? Yes, and I can see immediately that I've got the wrong reference. Uh, would my lord give me a minute? Uh, sure. Have you got it, Mr. Depp? Is it page H23.2? That is exactly right. Uh, now we have got it. The name of the person sending the text is recorded here as Steve. That is you? Uh, just just a minute. Uh, H23.2? Yes. Uh, thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Steve is uh, actually me. You and Miss Hurd had nicknames for each other, Steve and Slim? Uh, yes. From the Howard Hawks film of To Have and To Have Not? Um, yes. With Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall? Um, yeah. Presumably you saw a similarity in your relationship, the age difference between you possibly, because in that film Humphrey Bogart was considerably older than Lauren Bacall. Oh, yes, indeed. She was she was 19, and uh, he was 45, I believe. Yes, as indeed there was a very large age difference between you and Miss Heard. Oh, yes, enormous. You know what's funny? It's exactly the age difference. Mm -hmm. 19 to 45 is... Um... Wait a minute. Am I doing this wrong? Yeah, no, that's right. Exactly what their age difference is. Mm. That's kind of... I wonder if... Uh... And again, this is her researching an old movie that he referenced once and pretending it's like, yeah. and that's all part of the con, all of this, mm -hmm. nothing's organic, nothing's mm -hmm. authentic. This, this, this camp stuff is fascinating. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. Now we're on uh we're on line seven here at uh, 247 page 247. Yep. Why is it the TMZ video is the only thing she's recorded? I know, exactly. 
nothing egregious. Cell phone technology by that point was where everybody had a camera phone and uh, video phone recording. Why is the TMZ thing the only thing she's able to record with her with her? If, if he's so zonked out on drugs all the time and drunk, why is this the only thing you have recorded on video? You can't. F- you can doctor pictures. You can't fake a video. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm sure she recorded many other things, hoping to use them, but they just didn't maybe end up the way she wanted them to. Uh, he didn't go by the script of what she had planned, so she couldn't use right. them. I don't know. I have a hard time believing, and all the times she's portraying him to have passed out, and it seems like it's a few times a week, and everybody's got a problem. Why are you not recording it from a mm-hmm. distance? Why are you not sprawling places you're at? You could easily hide up top or on a balcony of some kind or some kind of scaffold or on a staircase and record this while it's going on. Why, why are you only getting him freaking out his mother died and kick, kicking cabinets and not doing anything to you except grabbing the camera? Yeah, oh, exactly. You got this going? Really? Really? Mm-hmm. And I would say the same thing. Why are you recording me right now? What are you up to? Because this is obviously some kind of plan. Did something happen to you this morning? (laughs) Smash. I don't think so. (laughs) All right. Okay, yes, as indeed there was a very large age difference between you and Ms. Hurd. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Enormous. In any event, when we see Steve, we know it was you. Yes, I was Steve, and she was... Slim? Yes. Right. Go over to the next page, please. Then at the bottom of H23.3, this is, I suggest, a text exchange with her. Quote, your display of guilt and matronliness as as a lesbian (laughs) camp counselor was plenty, but your future is on display, end quote. That is you sending a message to Slim to Miss Heard? Uh, Yes, it is. And you describe is you use the words lesbian camp counselor? <laughs> uh, yes, I mean I use I use the words lesbian camp counselor in the actual text. I just thought you denied ever using it. That is all. No, no, no. I, I did not deny ever referring to her or calling her a lesbian camp counselor. However, I, you know, I, I see here you are correct. You. Um, I used that in a text, and the words were never actually uttered. Right. It does not actually make any difference whether they were uttered or sent in a text. Well, obviously, obviously there are many things in a text. I'm agreeing with you that I made a mistake. I'm sure you will agree that that is highly offensive reference to her. Um, yes, it is. Let me just say this. Uh, so anyone keeping score at home, talking him versus her, Depp, whether you th- things you think he did wrong or misgivings you have, or uh, he at least, at the very, very least, he does it often, is willing to admit mm-hmm. to mistakes he makes and foibles and peccadillos. He admits there's times where he's wrong. He owns stuff. She owns nothing. She admits to no mistakes. She Every move she made in this relationship is perfecto, is mm-hmm. pristine. She's never, ever once strayed. Nothing she's ever done is untoward, can, can sabotage this thing. She is everything. She, I have not heard her admit to one uh, foible whatsoever not once not one time Mm -hmm. and you know she's anyone who thinks who tries to paint themselves out as a professional victim a perpetual martyr is you know they're lying Mm -hmm. because they can't even she can't admit to one flaw not once you're right and he's constantly going yeah it's a problem i have or she you can't she won't even give you that she won't even give you that i know i agree with you you listen to what this uh, My Lady Justice is uh, describing as opposed to what we actually hear in audio, and it, they're I two know. different people. I know. I know. 
I can't wait till that's juxtaposed. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're at uh, not what, line uh, line seven. seven. I am sure you will agree that that is a highly offensive reference to her. Uh, yeah. Yes, it is. And attacking people's sexuality, mm. disparaging uh, descriptions of people's sexuality. Well, you know, I would say that I was, uh, it was you know, actually an ugly thing to do and an ugly thing to write. Can you go to the text bundle, please? Uh, that is at the beginning of page six. Yeah, there he goes, admitting to it was wrong. He's, just, mm-hmm. he's he, he looks very normal and human and uh, charming, mm-hmm. being self-deprecating. Uh, tab six. The beginning of volume six, tab 119. Uh, yes. Okay. Page nine. Uh, yes. At the bottom of that page, there's a text from you. Is it to your sister, Christy? Um, yes, it is. Quote, Amber and I are not so good anymore. End quote. You are saying if Amber is good with it, it's fine. Uh, you are just dealing with some practical problem. Then you say, quote, Amber and I, not so good anymore? Oh, yes. This was at a time when you and Amber, Miss Hurd, were going through a number of difficulties, mainly because of your drug ingestion and alcohol consumption. Do you agree? Uh, No. Page 10, your sister replies to you, she wants to talk to me. She does not know what to do. Loves you, but does not always, but does not always what to do. She's worried about it all. Yes? Uh, Yes, I see that. And then you say, it was not a pleasant today. Um, I was not aware she had another goddamn photo shoot tomorrow. That is really <laughs> why she fucking left. I don't need actress bullshit and her fucking ambition. Do you remember yesterday that she said that that phrase, actress bullshit and fucking ambition, referred to you trying to support her to get more serious roles that did not objectify her? Do you remember that evidence you gave yesterday? Yeah, yes, I do. Do you stand by that interpretation of what that phrase means? Yes, I do stand by that. But I, uh, by referring to, uh, if I may say, um, actress bullshit and ambition. You know, though Miss Heard was concerned with, as I said yesterday, being objectified by directors, producers, the world at large. You know, having to do nude scenes in films, we talked uh, quite a lot about that. Mr. Depp, you explained this yesterday. You stand by what you said yesterday. Um, I just wanted to establish whether you did stand by what you said yesterday. Now we've seen the context of the text. You did. You say you did? Uh, I stand by it, yeah. I would like to move on, if we may. Oh, uh, well, you know, please. You know, but let me just stop it for a minute. Mm-hmm. The word ambition, he loves to use the word ambition. He, he uses it. It's a, he claims it's a dirty word. I'm not saying he misuses it, but when – in regards to her, she's going to make it look like it's a compliment. He, by ambition, really just interpreting depth speak, he means it as fame whore, mm-hmm. not as an artist, not as an actress trying to do good work. He means ambition as fame whore. He's equating it to the photo shoot. She was like, look at me. I can't turn a, a magazine photo shoot down. Me, 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 me. It's not me- – ambition can be misinterpreted and it's got – his meaning of it is negative. Don't take that as he's holding her back from some artistic endeavor. It's just her fame hoariness. It's, it's yeah, all exactly. that means. Don't take mm-hmm. it as a compliment. It's not. Yep. All right. Thank at page <laughs> – Applause inserted here. I, I needed to interpret that because I think people who may listen to this or even hear that certainly hear the trial, they'd be like, oh, wow, what's wrong with having ambition? No, no, no. Mm-hmm. Not the good kind of ambition. The the fame whore, attention whore kind of ambition. That's what he's mm-hmm. talking about. Don't misinterpret it. And at page 10 in the text, there is a text to Mr. Bettany below the text we've just looked at. <laughs> if you go halfway down that text, you say to him, You may have to drink for me. I, of course, pounded and displayed ugly colors to Amber on a recent journey. I'm an insane person and not so fair-headed after too much of the drink. Weed pills, fine. Booze, my capacity is too large and I won't stop. Ugly and sad. Oh, how I love it. Did you send that text to Mr. Bentney? 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. It appears so. Oh, yes. Let me just ask, ask you. Mm-hmm. When he writes to people, right, he's got all these eclectic friends, you know, there's British people, there's Irish people with uh, Shane McG- McGowan, Bet- Bettany is British, and Paul McCartney, and he, Elton John, and he's obviously got his American posse. And does, does he write in British? Does, you know what I mean? You know, yeah, I get does, it. does he write going, this is a Brit. I'm going to write as if there's a certain uh, cadence or uh, prose that British people respond to as opposed to, you know, he's got French. And do you think he writes to British people in, when I read that, I'm reading it in British. And, you know, you could hear the lilt in his accent and stuff. No, he's a man of many accents. So, yeah. <laughs> no, <I'm not. laughs> All right, could. Could you go remaining in file six to tab 148, please? Uh, yeah, yes. So the text to Mr. Bettany is on July 11th, 2013. If you go behind divider 148. Um, yes. Could you look at the third image? Just, just a minute. That... The first image is Ms. Hurd's bruised arm. There's another image of some more cocaine and a Bible. Uh, is this the third... Let me see. It is the third image I want you to look at. Have you got it? Oh, yes, yes, I have. It should say at the bottom F894.005. Uh, it, it, it does on yours. I, it does not on mine, but I can add it. Mine does my, not. Oh, that's sorry. Me, that's me. No, no, go ahead. Mine, mine, does, mine does not say it. Uh, I believe it's the same thing. If we go over the page, that photo, well, let's just describe the image. That is you, is it not? Certainly looks like it, yes. And do you appear to have passed out? I appear to be sleeping. Passed out? I'm not sure. There's a bed, is there not, to the left of that photograph? Oh, uh, yes, there is. You do not appear to be sleeping in the bed. You appear to be sleeping on the floor? Yes, ma'am. And you're fully clothed? Uh, yes, ma'am. Your shoes are not on. Is that, it is right to say? Uh, yes, ma'am. Your head is really, well, it does not look in a very comfortable position. Would you agree? You know, it's hard to tell. Everything is uh, black, very black. It, it looks like there's some kind of, here, like a long, like a cushion from a bed that my head is kind of resting on. You can see that it starts from just above the knee and, and goes over. It looks like my head is on some kind of cushion. If you have a look at the next page, you'll see it looks... Less like a cushion on the next page. In fact, on the third page, you can see it's a solid object. It, uh, it's solid. Can you see that? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm unable to distinguish that it's kind of a solid object. I mean, I, I, I don't know what it is. Um, if we just look at it on the... Is this, is this the object that has the con fuck? No, that is Mr. Depp's socks. Oh, right, 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 right. If my lord goes to the first of the three photographs, it's just below the first hole punch, immediately to the left of Mr. Depp's arm or elbow, at elbow height. Um, that is what you're talking about. Is it Mr. Depp, that object? Yes, on, honestly, I, I cannot tell what it is. No, I'm just trying to see if it's possible. That is what you were talking about when you said you thought there was a cushion or something? When I looked at the photograph, it... That, that that's the only sense it makes to me. Yeah, yeah, yes. The, the only? Well, sense it made to me, yeah. It would be sensible if you were deciding to sleep on the floor fully clothed to have a cushion under your head. I accept that. Uh, yes. Do you accept having looked at photograph two, which shows the object more clearly, and photograph three, that it appears to be a rectangular, solid object rather than a cushion? I'm afraid... I cannot. You um, cannot accept that. No, I just, I just cannot see it. You cannot see. Fair enough. Uh, but you accept that that is you on the ground in that position. Oh uh, yes. For the avoidance of doubt, if we go behind each of these photographs, we see the metadata of these photographs at about the level just below the first hole punch up. Which of these three photographs are you asking about, Miss Wallace? The metadata is on the same position on each, and all three were taken on July 18th, 2013. Do you see that, Mr. Depp? I do. 
And there's been no challenge of that metadata, so we can be sure that that was a photograph taken of you on that date. Now, you have said in your witness statement that in July of 2013, you had another five-day stint in rehab, and you had not been drinking prior to the re release of a film that you'd done. Shall I read the whole passage? Because you took issue with the phrase of the word, uh, or the word rehab yesterday. Uh, is, uh, if you would. It is paragraph 24, my lord, of the second witness statement, but I will read it out. What you said is, I remember that before the release of The Lone Ranger in July 2013. So that is what these photographs were taken in July. Uh, so we are talking about the same era, okay? Uh, yes. I had another five-day rehab stint, or five-day stint in rehab, and had not been drinking prior to the release of the film. So that is true, is it not, that you had a five-day stint in rehab? They are your words, not mine. This part that, but you prefer the word. Uh, you know, I like to mix my words up every now and again. I normal circumstances, uh, no, no one goes to rehab for five days. They go on to detox for a period of days. So rehab is like normally 30, 90 days, sometimes six months. So I'm sorry, my difference does not agree with you. Um, it has nothing to do with that. You took exception to the word, Mr. Depp. I'm simply saying that it's the word you chose in your witness statement. Did you spend five days detoxifying in July 2013? I spent five days in the same hospital, same doctor. And I was in New York City, actually, for about five days. The, the same as the one you had done in? Uh, yes. That's Mr. Richard's establishment, Keith Richard's establishment? It is not his. It was someone who who Keith knew, this doctor, and I, and and I'd gone to Keith, and told him um, that I was prepared to stop. So I wanted to stop drinking at that point. And taking drugs. Uh yes, I mean, and it helped. He helped me too. All right. So this was the same place. This was basically Mr. Richards had recommended to you. Uh, and you spent another five days in July 2013. Is it fair to say that you, that in the summer and autumn of 2013, you very much wanted your relationship with Miss Heard to work out? For the period I was with her, I always wanted it to work out. Yes, and she appeared to want to make it work. I appreciate now you see it as an enormous hoax, but. Oh, no, no. She appeared to, yes. She appeared to? Yes. There are many of these texts that indicate – let us just look at one. Over on page 11. Let me, let me stop for a second. Mm -hmm. That's hardcore stuff. You think about – if you're going to go to a doctor mm -hmm. to clean yourself up, is there any better one than Keith Richards? Like how is this guy alive? I know. Miracle worker. All this time. Like I mean, right? I mean he has his own doctor feel good mm -hmm. like Kipper. Yeah. Like – I think they all do. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's going to Keith Rich. I mean, for advice on this too. It's, it's. Uh, I would love to know what this guy's name is. There's no better promotion than that. There's no yeah. better billboard than Keith Richards' Doctor Feelgood. Because mm -hmm. there was always. I mean, there's been jokes about Keith Richards forever and ever. Every stand-up comedian in a monologue making Keith Richards joke. I think Dennis Miller actually had a joke about Keith Richards. So Keith Richards at the MTV Awards. The guy looks like an old wallet that mumbles for Christ. Oh God, I'm so gross. <laughs> it looks like Don Clint Denon's first baseman glove. He could store pencils in that face. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> okay. All right. There are many of these texts that indicate. Let us just look at one over on page 11. Since we're in uh, this part of the bundle, you say to her in the fourth text down on page 11 of the text. Have you got that? Um, where is this? I'm sorry. Line 13. I, yes. <laughs> you say the only reason we go for the throat is love. Uh, that is you to her. Where is this? Oh. I'm, so, I'm so sorry. The fourth text down. The fourth text down. The only reason. Okay, yes. The only reason we go for the throat is love. Was that a reference to the fact that you would hold her by the throat when you were in a rage from time to time? Um, no. 
She says, my throat is yours. And you say, I have other uses for your throat, which do not include injury. <laughs> and she says, you are going to be the death of me, but I don't care. You say, I am besieged with love for you. It's oh, to God. the brim and will remain so. I'm leaving, but I will never go anywhere. I will never go away. But we need to stay the course and to help one another. Not hit 95 miles an hour in three seconds and go for each other's jugulars. We need to be stronger than that. Did you send that text? Dudes like Lord Byron and whatnot. He mm -hmm. writes text to me. Yes, you know, yes, it seems I did. So, yeah. Hey, can it's, I stop for one second? Yeah. Depp has really bad vision, like me. Mm -hmm. How much do you think she's playing on his bad vision by submitting these things he can't see? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't think he's wearing contact lenses. I've never once heard him say he wears contact lenses. He has glasses, he wears glasses in the sketches in the courtroom. In the sketches. sketch, does, does he have glasses in the sketch? Yeah, look, look at the background, and in your I avatar, he took him you're off. using. I, I, I well, thought he was wearing like, yeah, you know, you're right, you're right, full glass. I thought he took him off. I took amber vision. Uh, no pun intended. Okay, Let's see. All right. It seems from that text that you were going to be away. You spent, you spent a lot of time apart, did you not, uh, with your various film commitments over the time you were together? Sometimes there were significant times apart, yes. And when you were apart, she would want to do things with other people, see other people, go out with other people, socialize, yes? yes? This is what we – she loves him going away. Mm -hmm. She loves it. Oh, God. And it's constant. Uh, yeah, sure. And did this occasionally make you feel insecure? Occasionally, yeah, yeah, it did. I mean, who wouldn't? You're going away for four, six months. She's got access to all your shit, and she, he knows exactly what you're up to and who you know and who mm -hmm. you've worked with. I mean, who wouldn't? I would, I would be like, and that's what you know, all his cameras and the all you're gonna see all the people subpoenaed too, the desk people at his penthouses and shit. Who wouldn't feel insecure? Mm-hmm. Okay, hmm. occasionally, yeah, I did. Sure. Because, I mean, we can go through it if you like, but there is a long series of texts over the next few pages when she asked whether it would be, well, she told you she was thinking about going to an Arctic monkey show in a small venue with somebody from the cast of something she must have been working in and his girlfriend, girlfriend, and you found it, you made, it made you feel uncomfortable and she agreed not to go. That is my summary of the text. We can go through them if you want, or alternatively, we can go through. We can look at them over the short adjournment and then tell me, oh, my God, it's all blurring together. When you have had an opportunity <laughs> to read them, whether you agree or not, uh, shall we do it like that, Mr. Depp? The texts go from page 11 to page 14 between you and Miss Hurd and is what I'm going to call the Arctic Monkey series of texts. Do you want uh, to look at the, those over lunch and then tell me whether you think I've surmised it fairly? Oh my God! If you, I have, or if you, I have, I have an Arctic monkey in my pants. <laughs> I, I don't want to waste the court's time. Exactly, that's very decent of you. Can I ask you again about another <laughs> joke you cracked at Mr. Deuters on October 11th? It's on the, it's the last text on page 14. Uh, just a minute. I. Oh uh, yes, I see that. Do you see that? Yes, ma'am. It is you to him saying, will you squat in front of the door of the master bedroom and leave a giant coil of dookie so that Amber steps in it and thinks that's one of the dogs? Primarily, Boo has a major problem. It'll be funny. Uh, yes. Again, I think I described this as your uh, lavatorial sense of humor. I think broadly you agree. A uh, childish sense of humor. Yeah, sure. By the way, do you remember that Clooney prank? We yeah. had to bring that up on like where he did like a thing with the kitty litter. We kept dumping the kitty litter box, it. and he took a human shit in the mm -hmm. kitty litter box to his roommate to make it look like the cat had a, you know, constipation Issue. problem. That reminds me just of that. Yeah. <laughs> We've heard about the dog uh, Pistol that I mentioned to you before. Pistol had been Miss Heard's dog from before she met you. Do you agree? Uh, yes. And your mother took a liking to Pistol, did she not? Your late mother? My mother, yes. She met Pistol and uh, she loved dogs. And you brought your mother a dog, which was called Boo? Uh, yes. And Boo stayed with your mother for a while, but I think your mother gave her back to you to look after? Uh, basically, yes. 
So, I mean, essentially, you had a dog called Boo, and Miss Heard had a dog called Pistol? Um, yes. And Boo, I think, had got problems. I think you've said there she has a major problem in the text, yes? She was um, relatively new, and she was, you know, the, the dog was not completely house trained. Um, Miss Heard was training the dog to sort of not make mistakes. Well, the dog Boo. Boo had a problem because Boo had eaten some hash, some cannabis. Uh, yeah, yes. By accident? Um, yeah, yes, by accident. Quite a lot of cannabis, about an ounce. Would you agree with that? Uh, I would not say it was an ounce. Uh, can we ask whether Boo had eaten some of the cannabis? Uh, yes, I mean, yes, the, the puppy had gotten a hold of a little bit of a ball of hashish and um, just scooped it up before I could, you know, get to it. As a result of that, uh, Miss Herb was worried, was she not, that Boo had some sort of brain injury? It was something uh, she'd like to say, yes. She would say it all right. I think we can leave it at that. Uh, could you go to page 15, please? By the way, is there anything to this? I, I'm not sure. Do, do, I mean, I don't know as much about dogs as you do. Will they even go after that? I mean, was that yeah, something they go after really... anything. Yeah, but uh, my parents' dog got into a uh, campfire once, a cooled down campfire, and got into something that she found there. They think it was probably marijuana. Somebody left. Could and that damage your brain? I don't know if it damages your brain, but she got pretty sick. It's crazy. So you have a similar experience. Crazy. No. <laughs> You're pretty down to earth. Uh -huh. you relate to this? All right. So, again, it may be that we reached the place, Mr. Depp, where we agree. But what I'm going to suggest to you is that Miss Herb was quite regularly scolding you for drinking, knowing that you had a history of alcohol abuse, and she was really very strict, hence the word lesbian camp counselor that you used. On one occasion, on page 15, you were writing to your sister saying, uh, it's in the middle of page 15, she was a shit last night. No lovey-dovey note this morning. No message. She's young and dumb. I'm old and dumb. Then another text. I made the grave mistake of asking if she would mind if I had one glass of champagne only. I had a half a glass with Christopher because that's what he wanted. I toasted him and sipped it. When he arrived at the Ritz, that made me feel ashamed, gross, sad, stupid, and diseased. This was really an indication of what things were like. Was it not, Mr. Depp? If you wanted a small amount of alcohol, she was very worried that this was going to lead to other things and it became an issue? It was... uh. You know, a way to control me. You think she was controlling you? I believe you used the word strict, and she was uh, very strict. All right. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm twice her age. Twice, I, her, um, twice her age and not quite twice her size, but quite a lot. Uh, yes. I mean, I, I did not feel that lectures and berating or storming out because I had asked her if – would bother her if I had a glass of champagne or, or, or that she was, she was already angry and that I had a half a glass of champagne with uh, Christopher Lee. You see, Mr. Depp, Miss Hurd had seen alcohol turn you into the monster and she did not want it to happen. And she would try to stop you drinking at all. Uh, that is why she reached this position. Again, I cannot speak for a motivation Exactly. But I can say that she was very controlling in that way. You know, very, very, yes, it was as if, you know, you were being reprimanded by a camp counselor. So I'm sorry that I used that phrase with her and that it's. Uh... Would you like to look at a text on page 16 dated October 29th? Because the control, as you say, went both ways. It's the second text from the bottom. Uh, yes. By the way, Christopher Lee is an actor. Mm hmm. Uh, do you know him? He's an old I've actor. He was in Sleepy Hollow. He's in a lot of the Burton movies. Old horror actor. I guess he befriended him. Guy's okay. got to be pushing 80 mm -hmm. or something at that point. Or certainly now. He might be. Is he dead? I don't know. I got to look it up. I, I thought I heard he passed away. I think I think he did. Real distinct, cool, old you know, actor voice. Like powerful fucking – He's in uh, the Star Trek, uh, the Star Wars movies too. Mm -hmm. All right. So it is from you to Slim, which we know is misheard. It just reads this: 
Holy crack horse. No goddamn meetings. No movies. Why? Why do you deviate from our agreement? What species species of meeting? Fuck it. Just tell me when you get home. Uh, yes, I see that. Did you send that text to Miss Heard? I... Uh, it appears so. Does it not? If it is... Uh, if it is, yes. I mean, it appears that I did. It appears that I did. But I do not know what the meaning or, or the context is. Page 17, then another text. I would like you to just deal with this. Uh, this is you to Mr. Deuters? Uh-huh. Yes. You were talking. It starts at the bottom of 16. The last text at 16. You send a text to Mr. Deuters, and this is dated October 31st, 2013. Amber is extremely upset, and we're dying. Do you want to speak with her while you're there and give her some perspective on me and what I am and what I'm not? And Mr. Deuters obeys. Understood. Yes, I will. You say, ask if she needs to talk. And Mr. Deuter says, if it's not a bother, sorry. You say, if it's not a bother. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Sh I don't. Okay. Sherborn. Then you say, thanks. She thinks that my Peruvian period has made me a monster and that I'm ruining the relationship. Jesus. It's so funny them having to interpret these Mm -hmm. Kind of avant-garde, Depp Thompson prose and rants and Deppifestos, <sighs> and try to. It's just. It's so. It's just so inherently funny that you just to dissect it, mm -hmm. you know, and having to. And he has to explain it. It's that in itself is is really funny. I hope that happens in the in the uh, Fairfax trial because we get to watch it. Yep. And laugh. And laugh. We'll see. Or weep. <laughs> so you're saying 12. Okay, I didn't know you answered. All right, so the Peruvian period is a reference to cocaine? Uh, yes, ma'am, it is. Uh, just a moment, yes? The monster is the person you turn into when you have had too much uh, Peruvian powder cocaine? She thinks that my Peruvian period has made me a monster and then I'm, I'm ruining the relationship. I'm, I'm referring to a Peruvian period. Did you send that text? Uh, yes. Did you try to get clean after this? Uh, my lord, uh, my lord, Ms. Walsh did ask a question. Mr. Depp was in the middle of answering it. Then Ms. Walsh just asked him while he was answering it. Did you send the text? And uh, again, I, then stopped him. I do not know whether it would be helpful to, given he was asked a question, to be able to answer it. Y yes, Miss Walsh. Could you go back and the previous question? I I'm afraid I've forgotten what it was. I think I have. Uh, Mr. Depp was trying to question that neither my lord or I can remember. Uh, perhaps Mr. Sherborne has the question. It really is his answers, it's not the questions that are important, as your lordship has said, but at least he should be able to give them. In your question that I'm referring to, I'm, I'm trying to find where it is on the... Uh, the Peruvian period text is on page 17. It says A here. What does that mean? Is that me? Yeah. Answer. Okay, yeah. It's, okay, I'm, yeah it's, I don't know why I got thrown by that. It's weird. Yes, you know, I've found it. Thanks. I mean, she she thinks that my Peruvian period has made me a monster and that I'm, I'm running, uh, ruining. I'm actually ruining the relationship. So so she's talking and I, I'm talking about my Peruvian period. So it's a period in time in which I'm using cocaine. As I said, I said to you yesterday on occasion and sometimes maybe it'd be the last couple of days or a few days, you know, depending on how things were. But, but what I'm trying to say here is your efforts to bring cocaine into every situation of our relationship, I, I understand what you're trying to do. And I think it's important to acknowledge that I'm talking to him about my Peruvian period. You tried to stop taking cocaine, but you lapsed. This is the pattern, was it not? I did not try to stop and lapse. I stopped. And then if I felt like it, or if, if I needed it in some kind of way, I'd, I'd use it. And? Oh, just a minute. Your answer is that you did not try to stop and lapse. And if you felt you needed to have cocaine? Yes. 
You would take it? Uh, yes, my lord. Right, um, thank you. What you're saying is that text is that Miss Heard thought that your proving period, i.e., when did you take cocaine? Oh my god, let me start over. Okay, no, what it's, you're saying... it's so badly. No, it's hard to read that. Yeah, it's so badly. I don't know if it's her speaking or it's badly written, but I think it's written badly. It's not smooth to read that. I agree. Okay, so what you're saying in that text is that Miss Heard thought that your Peruvian period, i.e., when did you take cocaine, has made you a monster. She thinks that my Peruvian period has made me a monster. Yes. Yesterday, you gave us a variety of interpretations of what the monster was. I suggested it was your the rather dark side of your character, which came out under the influence of drink and drugs. Are you able to say, since you wrote the words in the text, that your definition of monster was there? Well, I did not say the monster in my text. I said a monster. What is your definition of a monster in that text, please? My my definition of it is that she thinks my Peruvian period has made me a monster. So, you know, you'd have to ask her. Well, you've written this word. Was she saying to you? You are. You are a monster when you've taken cocaine. She would say that I was the monster. At any time it suited her fancy, you know, or it suited, you know, her argument. And, and it was not the case. I'm not multi-personality. So, so I'm just telling him she thinks my Peruvian period had made me into a monster and I'm ruining the relationship. So her constant harping on whatever I may have decided to ingest, she's saying uh, affected her more than it affected me, that I became the monster. She said that. You became the monster after taking cocaine? That is just not true. That's what she was saying. That is what you're saying she has said? Oh, yes. I mean, that is what she is saying, yes. If that is correct, and it's the interpretation that you've been given to that text, that you've given to that text, how could Miss Heard possibly have been involving herself in chopping up lines of cocaine for you, as her habit was, as you suggest? It is just not fit in with it at all. Uh, at a certain point. It's just a lie, is it not? Excuse me? That was a lie when you said she was chopping up cocaine for you. She desperately disapproved of you taking cocaine. She saw that it turned you into the monster, and that's why you wrote that text? I, I, I appreciate your attempts to get that into a uh, cross. Mr. Depp, your comments about Miss Wallace's questions I can understand, but... What what I want to understand is you your answer to the question. Yes, sir. I mean, I understand. I apologize if my way of getting the answer is leave, leave out the compliments to Miss Wallace's questions and just just give me your answer. Certainly. I mean, it was Miss Hurd's belief that I became a monster. She was the only person that has ever brought that up in my life. That notion that I'm a monster when I'm, I drink. And then I'm a monster when I took cocaine, and then I was a monster when I smoked marijuana. It was more of like than a concern of hers. It was like a weapon, and it was used constantly. She grabbed hold of the word and then held on, held bent for leather, and that it would stick. This afternoon, just before we break for lunch, I will remind you of a text that you sent almost a year later, in October 2015. <laughs> Miss Wass, if this is something that you be coming to after lunch, uh, then it would, this would be a convenient moment. Can I take up Mr. Depp's offer that he reads the exchanges about the Arctic monkeys to see whether we need to spend more time on that? Mr. Depp, is that still an offer on the table that you would read those texts between pages 11 and 16? Oh, certainly, yes. I will give you the summary again, and then you can tell me whether I have that wrong. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Yes, thank you. Then, Mr. Depp, we'll take a break now until quarter past two. Um, yes, sir. All right. You remember what I said? You must not talk to anybody about your evidence and until the evidence is finished. Of course, your lord. Uh, thank you. We'll say a quarter past two. Thank you. My lord, I'm so sorry to interrupt the proceedings. Um, I spoke with the court usher during the mid-morning break and indicated that I would be making a request to my lord, which I now make, which is the first, which is that those of our legal team could have access to the court over the short adjournment. 
I know that the normal answer to that sort of request the court staff. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Okay, they're out lunch. Okay, down to 270, line 22. Oh, wait. Line 15. 270? Yeah, 270, line 15. Okay, okay, good. Good catch. Mr. Depp, yesterday we were able to go through the afternoon without uh, taking a break in the middle of the afternoon. Yes. I plan to do the same today, but if you if you would feel the need to take a break, then just let me know. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Mr. Depp, you had an opportunity of reading the the Arctic Monkey series of text over lunch. Did you take that opportunity? Uh, yes, ma'am. Let me tell you what I'm suggesting the summary was. It appeared that you and Miss Heard were apart from each other. She'd been invited by somebody called Jim to go to an Arctic Monkeys concert. Yeah, yes, ma'am. There were, in fact, four tickets available. Uh, the Jim character, his girlfriend, Miss Heard, and originally there was one for you. You obviously were not able to attend, but there was a suggestion that Miss Heard could take someone from your security? Uh, yeah, yes. Yes, and you expressed during these text messages um, a degree of anxiety about why she wanted to go, and you found it rather suspicious? I, I, I found it suspicious to, to a degree, yeah. I was concerned more than anything. I, she had, Miss Heard had not begun filming as yet, so there was these sort of virtual strangers. So I voiced my concern, yeah. Was your concern born out of jealousy? No, my concern was more just pure concern for Miss Heard. What was the concern about her going to a concert with people that she was going to be working with and a person who was part of your security team? What was the problem? There was no problem. In fact, I, I believe I even told her a few times. I said, oh, go ahead, go. Uh, uh, when, then you expressed your concerns. And in fact, she did not go in the end, did she? No, it appears she did not go. She did not go, and you said this. You lay a gauntlet before me that you know is the very species of danger that will always attract me into a very tempting test. Were you referring to your jealousy? Uh, I do not quite know what I was referring to there. Could you read it again? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Yes, this is you to Miss Heard. It is a long interchange uh, between uh, about should she go, should she not go, whether you tell her to go, and then she said, no, I will not go, which is why I did not want to read every single question and answer out. You end by saying, you lay a gauntlet before me that you know is the very species of danger, species, I can never say that, of danger and will always attract me into a very tempting test. It does not sound like I'm referring to that incident for some reason. Uh, but, you know... I do not know what gauntlet I'm even talking about. All right. We will have to leave that one as it is. Uh, can I then go to 2014? Your consumption of drugs in 2014 was still ongoing. Cocaine, alcohol, yes. Do you agree? Ongoing? I do not know. I, I cannot specify to 2014. All right. But her jeal you know, that, the jealousy thing. Mm-hmm. Johnny, I lay it on you and your pussy fog. You know, this is what you get into when you're dating someone age inappropriate, 25 years younger. You're just constantly going to be – she's she's living a party girl life, which is really what she's about. She's a walking Coachella festival poser that you've lived already a million times and mm -hmm. you want to slow down and hang out at home and more – you know, most of the time. And she's doing I, – I put it on you. This is what you get. This is what you get. Yep. You, you really think she's with you for the party? You really think she's going to slow down? Mm-hmm. And she's got um, unlimited funds now right. to amp up the party. Access, so. right. Yeah. Right. It's it's perfect storm of part, – per, perfect party girl storm. And he just doesn't want to keep up with it. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't blame you, but you – you made your bed. You, you. This is what you get for something so age inappropriate. It, mm -hmm. it's, it's a, it's a, it's a constant, you know, Hollywood cliche. This, yep. in every way, midlife crisis cliche. Mm -hmm. You know, but I'm sure, uh, 
would not surprise to me I would use, you know, at that point. Now, I'm going to suggest uh, that a pattern developed in your relationship with Miss Heard, and there would be a trigger, all right? And that trigger would be either you became jealous um, or she would try to prevent you from taking drink or drugs. And the trigger would cause you to go on a binge. By binge, do you know what I mean? Uh, yes, I do. Yes, of course you do. That trigger would cause you to go on a binge, and you would convince yourself that the binging was Ms. Heard's fault. She made you do it. Is that a pattern that you recognize? I recognize it not as a pattern. I recognize that there was quite a lot of times when Ms. Heard could stay on a subject for quite a long time in a discussion or an argument. And it became this sort of um, circular beast that you could not arrive, you know. You, you, you would always arrive back where you began. So, so it was very frustrating at times and unpleasant at times. I'm not blaming her for my weaknesses as far as drug use or drinking. However, I, I can honestly say that the frustration and the inability to connect to one another in the way that we should have – I found it deeply disturbing and it seemed to go on and on and on and on. So, so yes, I would then um, go on a binge. Well, you know, I would I'd get very, I would drink to try to numb the pain. I'm and, calling uh, that a binge. <laughs> uh, certainly. But you're expressing it in another way. Once you started the drinking on the drinking to numb yourself, you would later convince yourself that Miss Heard had made you do that. It was her fault that you had weakened and binged. You blamed her? I could possibly have blamed her at times, yeah. When this syndrome arose, that is to say, argument, whether it was about jealousy or drug taking, followed by you going on a binge, when the whole thing was over, when the whole explosion was over, you would disappear, would you not? You would just disappear to get away from her? There was a time or two where... I texted her and I said, oh, I'm, I'm going to stay at a hotel tonight and because I just I couldn't deal with it. You had to get away from her? Yes. She became a, extremely worried, did she not? Uh, that she did not know where you were and you were in a state of either inebriation or excessive drug consumption. She was very, very worried. She used uh, to get quite frantic with worry on those occasions when you did disappear. She would indeed get quite frantic. With, you know, as you say, worry, she'd get indeed quite jealous that the, I'm out there cheating on her. Well, we agree about the first half. The second half is slightly <coughs> more complicated, but we'll come back to that when we look at March 2015. Uh, but just go, going back then to 2014, yesterday uh -oh. you told us in court you had taken drugs with Marilyn Manson twice? Uh, two, three times maybe. But it was years ago, long before the relationship with Miss Heard. In fact, um, before I was with Miss Heard, I, I had not touched cocaine in probably, Jesus, I'm trying to think my age at the time, which was. Uh, I do not want to prevent you saying anything, but your evidence yesterday was that you'd taken drugs with Marilyn Manson twice. Now you've said that might have been three times, and I understand that, but that this has been before your relationship with Miss Heard. Do you stick by that? My recollection is that whenever I did, let us let us say that a line of cocaine with Manson, I believe it was uh, before Miss Heard and I were fully involved. Let us just say. Okay, but for the avoidance the of doubt. So strange. I don't know. Okay, for the avoidance of doubt, you and Miss Heard were fully involved by February or March 2014. Were we? Uh, you were fully involved. Oh yes, we were. Can you go to the text schedule at bundle six uh, behind divider 119? Yes. Uh, which page? Uh, 21. Mr. Depp, have you got page 21? Uh, yes, I do. 21 Jump Street. Yep. <laughs> Can you see the gray line across the page, which just denotes that the year was 2014? Uh, yes. The second text down was the text from Miss Heard to your sister, Christy Dembrowski, and it's dated February 3rd, 2014. Oh, uh, yes. Quote, I need your help. This is Ms. Heard to your sister. JD is on a bender with Manson. Once again, he believes it is about me or us fighting, even though that is why we are fighting. I don't know what to do. I love him so much, but he is going to hurt himself and take us as a couple down with him. I can't do anything to avoid how crazy he gets when he's like this. 
I think he's at Maryland's now, continuing the rage and Coke booze binge. Can you help? He needs, he needs to come home. We have no reason to fight. He just aims all of his anger at me when he's on it. Don't know what to do, end quote. Do you realize now or do you think now having read those texts that perhaps you were on a binge and with Marilyn Manson in February 2014? Um, I would say that's Brian Warner to <laughs> you and Amber. Now, I would say it's also misheard believed. Right. Well, let us read on. Uh, hold on. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, Miss Walsh asked a question. Do you believe that you're know, therefore you were on a binge? Mr. Depp was trying to answer it. He said, I believe it's what Miss Heard believed and was actually going to explain whether he did. Miss Walsh stepped in and moved on. With respect, if the question is going to be put to him, it suggests whether he not be telling the truth. He made the statement yesterday and how many times he was taking drugs with Mr. Manson. Then he should have the opportunity to deal with it. Yes. I agree. Carry on. Perhaps you can ask the question again, Miss Walsh? Having seen this text, and we can read more if it would help you, um, if you'd like me to defer the question until we've read more of them, do you agree that it appears you were on drugs? You were on a drug binge with Marilyn Manson? It appears to me that Miss Heard believed that I was on a drug binge with Marilyn Manson. As to how she would have the exact information of what I was doing with Marilyn Manson at the time is, in fact, a mystery to me. Let us move on a little bit and see if we can fathom this out. <laughs> good, good, good. Okay. She then says to your sister, if I leave, I'm not sure we will be able to come back from it. And I don't want to leave him when he's like this, in that state, when he just has the echoes of his own mind bouncing around in his head. It is terrible. Your sister asks, where are the kids? Ms. Hurd says, at their mum's. He went to drop a Lily Rose off this morning and has not been back since. I called the guards to make sure at least one of them got here. Sean did. Then over the page, she tells your sister up at the, the top line that Sean, that's one of your guards, picked her up. Then she says, not sure who dropped her off, but I think it was J.D. and Manson with security. They never came back after that. Then your sister said, do you want me to come to the office to talk? And Miss Heard said, it's okay. I'm sure he's at Manson's, but I'm worried about how his state and health will be in the next few days. He needs help. He thinks he has no problem. He does not have it under control. The coke is just so hard. It must be hard on us or him. It makes him believe he is mad about me and everything, end quote. M mad about me, about everything, like Helen Hunt and Paul Reiser. <laughs> let me, let me at say, he, he doesn't look good here. Um, this apparently happened, you know, it's something we all can relate to, right? Dropping your daughter off at school, then having security pick him up and bring him home while you go on a two day dr drug binge with a washed mm -hmm. up nineties shock rocker who can't play an instrument or sing. Um, it's really bizarre, right? Just this whole setup. He's clearly admitting he's with him. I don't know, but what this has to do with abuse, I'm not sure. No, it's setting just up, setting the credibility. stage. credibility. Yeah, exactly, yeah. that's all it is. Okay, mad but at me about. Not a good look. It's not a good look at his age mm -hmm. with kids, on any level. I disagree. I disapprove of all of it. Quote, mad at me about everything. End quote. Then your sister says, I don't love any of it. Worry about everything. I really want to be able to talk to him. Did your sister express anxiety to you about your drug intake at around this time? My sister Christy has, over many, many years, really since my youth, uh, had a number of worries about my consumption, you know, growing up. Yeah, I mean, she she talked to me many times over the course of my life. And yes, with Ms. Heard, we did speak about it. I think she and Ms. Heard's ability to speak to one another stopped really not long after this. At the bottom of page 22, he's been on a 24-hour-plus binge with Manson. Jesus. Over the page, your sister says... I understand a lot of life things these days. Miss Heard says, I don't know what to do. I hate that he always aims at me. I don't want to break. I'm sorry. Can we just go back to the bottom of page 22? He's been on a 24-hour plus binge with Manson? What? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, this appears 
to be a reference to you, Mr. Depp? Uh, yes. Judge again. Oh, this is, oh, it's still mm-hmm. it's still Nichols. Yep. Were you saying that you do not know the basis in which Mr. Heard was speaking? You say that you want a twenty four hour binge with Mr. Manson. That you do not know the basis of that. No, well, it became chronic. You know, uh, it became a regular thing that she would always say. You know, that was her go to. If I was not around, I was somewhere on a binge with someone, getting loaded, and she's speculating that I'm getting loaded or on some kind of binge with Manson for over 24 hours. If she does not know where I am or what I'm doing, and she's worried. She says that I'm on a binge with Manson. That's her go-to every time. So there's just nothing to prove. I mean, there's there's just no way to... Do you remember being on a binge with Manson in February 2014? No, no, I do not. Uh... I... This case, I remember this morning very well, actually. Manson and I did, in fact, take my daughter to school. So that part of it fits in. That part of the text that she sent to Christy Fitz, do you agree? Uh, yes, I mean, I was with Manson taking my daughter to school. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and then we were together. You and Mr. Manson? Uh, yeah, yes, I mean, Mr. Manson and I were together for probably a couple hours, a little couple hours after that at his house, and then um, I went back to my house on Sweetser Avenue. As far as you're concerned, this was Miss Heard just worrying about something which had never happened at all. Is that right? I think she's taking a guess as to what's happening or what right. was happening. Well, I do not believe she has even the facts to... Uh... What I want to know is, do you remember at all whether you were taking drugs with Mr. Manson or not? I remember smoking marijuana with Mr. Manson, yes. What about anything else? No, I, I do not remember that. Ms. Hurd is talking about cocaine. Coke, she calls it. Yes, and she talks about it quite a lot. That's because you were taking quite a lot, you see? <laughs> That's very debatable. Do you have a problem remembering some of the things that you were doing at this time because of your excessive consumption of alcohol? No, you know, if you... Do not mind me saying so. I would say that for someone who's been quite self-destructive for the majority of his life, I ended up pretty lucky, and my brain still functions quite well, luckily. The day after this exchange about you and Mr. Manson taking your daughter to school and then not coming back again, you obviously had an argument with Miss Hurd. We see that on page 25, the top text, Amber and I hit the wall hard. Uh, Page 25? Yes, the top text. Yes. Then Whitney intervenes and says, Johnny, please come home. Sis does not want to hash anything. She wants to be near you and know that you are okay. Please do not prolong her pain. Yes? Yes, I see that. That is from Sis. Whitney to you. And she was referring to Sis as her sister, which is Miss Amber Heard? Oh, uh, yes. You say, I'm good. Just can't deal anymore. She's crossed the line again. Always too much. She told me she was leaving again, and she did. She's made the choice. A person needs to think before they go squirrely. So fucking sad. I've never done anything but love her. Then Whitney says, Hammer, she doesn't want to leave you. She was so sad yesterday. I had to drag her out of 80 yesterday. I'm so sorry. I thought it would be good for her to get some air, and we didn't know when you would be back. She didn't want to leave, but I pulled her out. So please don't be mad at her for leaving. Be mad at me. That was an exchange that was happening the day after you dropped your daughter at school. Changing the subject, your daughter recognized at this time, did she not, that Miss Heard was a good influence on you? Um, At the time, my daughter, I I, I thought it was very, I thought it was very brave and courageous and big of her, you know, very sophisticated and smart of her to attempt, attempt to accept Miss Heard into her life. So the same thing for my son. They did their best too, and they did. Uh, you know, this is this is this is crazy. so. She's going to where Lily Rose and Scamber are in cahoots to get him help, and he's mm-hmm. fleeing and running off with his friends capriciously, and he's absentee and stuff. Um, it's very hard to disprove it. it. He doesn't sound great here. Mm-hmm. I don't know. 
what's your take on this as far as uh, his culpability and stake? The, the Manson stuff is I've, – I've heard Doug Stanhope was talking about hanging out with them. This is a podcast I listened – could have been a, anything. I can't remember where it was. It was Stanhope was just being interviewed somewhere when he was going on a promotional binge. And he was talking about Manson – you know, ha- constantly having cocaine mm-hmm. at the ready. You know, and it's very ring. That's to always what been a thing. That's always been a theme with uh, Brian Warner, his book, which now they say, of course, was not true, and it was ghost written, which it was. Yeah, yeah. Right. But they got these stories from somewhere. But um, it's always been a theme where he he would always he would do a lot of coke. He would always have yeah. coke on him, etc. So, I mean, they're Stand probably was going through. Stand, I was, I'm sorry. Stanhope was going through something. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what the hell it was. Some problem he was having. And Manson invited him over to coke it out. Like that kind of a – Yeah. I mean he he didn't dance around. He said, no, he came – had, you know, a coke party. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure he even mentioned Depp was – I think he was either there or coming over or something. Depp fell in. You know, he's through Stanhope. He's hanging out with a – bunch of those comedians and that's probably how that that Burt Kreischer Tom Segura thing happened Mm -hmm. I'm positive about it that it that's the case yeah so it's not a good look for him you know I don't know what I do wish what he's trying to get across here I do wonder about the state of that relationship these days of course but I do wish that him and Manson hadn't been there yeah yeah, I wonder where they're at right now. I wonder if Manson's pissed at him for not blindly defending him because he hasn't done a thing. He hasn't said a thing in mm-hmm. any interview, not the Instagram. There's no vague references to it. His legal team is telling him to back the fuck off of all and things that's Manson. that's smart, and he should. Yep, it's very smart. Okay. I'm Nickel right here, 12? Yeah. I think the question, Mr. Depp, was that your daughter recognized – at about this time, we were talking about February 2014 when Mrs. Heard was, in fact, a, a good influence on you. She, she believed that. She believed that about herself at the time. Do you agree with the statement? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, she believed that. Just looking about at page. At the time. Just looking at page 25 of the text. Your daughter was your daughter to you. You've been a better dad to Jack and I since she's been around, and she was helping with the alcohol problem. I just see what a positive effect she's had on you, and I'm afraid those things will leave with her. Please don't write her off right now. She may surprise you and explain herself. You say to Lily Rose, I'm not going back to booze. We will see what happens with her, all right? Uh, yes. Now I ought to just complete the series. At the top of page 26, what about you as your dad? You've been so much better since she's been around. We have talked about how for a couple of years you weren't around for us, and that changed when Amber came into your life. I don't want to go back to that. I um, I see that. She says again, but you have to acknowledge and know what a good influence she's been and the fact that she's changed you for the better. You see that, right? All right. So that is from your daughter to you? Uh, Yes. I mean, this is the 4th of February. 4th of February? Yes. On the following day, your sister sends you three short texts. The first one at 738. Stop drinking. Then a few minutes later, stop Coke. Then almost immediately afterwards, stop pills. So this is what you were saying about your sister constantly over the course of your life being concerned about you? Uh, yes. Now, in May 2014, you were going to have another attempt at detox and rehab, or whatever you prefer to call it. Do not know. I cannot remember exactly when that was. You were living in Boston at the time. Do you remember that making a film? Uh, it was about um, 2014. Yeah, I was making a Black Mass in Boston. Yeah. You were scheduled to be there for three months. Yes. May, June, July. You consulted Dr. Kipper in May 2014. Uh, yes. Do you agree? Would you like to? Would you take file four, please? Uh, just a moment, please. Uh, File four. Tab 123. It should have page F736 at the bottom. Uh, yes, I have that. 
and it's notes from Dr. Kipper. It is headed Johnny Depp initial consultation, and the date is 22nd of May, 2014. Do you agree? Uh, yes, I do. Yes. I was asked by Mr. Depp to come to Boston to consult on his general medical situation. Mr. Depp is a 50-year-old male. He gives your date of birth who has had a lifelong history of self-medicating behaviors involving multiple substances of abuse. These include alcohol, opiates, benzodiazepines, and stimulants. Yeah. I know. And he puts next to stimulants and cocaine. Yes. He has also had insomnia since childhood. For this problem, he takes roxycodone and has been on this medication for over two years he suffered from adhd as a child and has been given adderall recently that dramatically improved his focus and sense of calm he admits to an anxiety syndrome and takes clonopin two milligrams daily in the morning and has done so for several years then you also take other drugs there there is no family history or coronary artery disease he has smoked cigarettes for most of his life and he also takes red bull coffee and sugar to increase his focus and sense of calm he also has a, sis, a, history, a history of THC intake that calms him. Oh, God. That is tetrahydrocannabinol, yeah. the active ingredients in cannabis. Yeah, yes. There are some other medical matters that are discussed that I will not trouble you with unless you think they're important. At the bottom of the page, it says, he's living in Boston for the next three months, acting in the film that is no extended time to participate in these exams. He would like to schedule these diagnostics in the midsummer when he returns to his home in Los Angeles. Then there's a bit about your family life over the following page under impression. Yes. Oh my God. Primary uh, dopamine yeah, imbalance, ADHD, bipolar one, depression, secondary to above insomnia, chronic substance abuse disorder. So chronic obviously means long-term over a long period of time uh, rather than one acute episode. Then chronic nicotine use, and he puts in place a plan. Do you agree? And do you agree? And the plan was that you were going to go for a detox with Dr. Kipper when the filming was finished. Uh, yes. In your witness statement, Mr. Depp, you said, and my Lord it is paragraph 21 for your reference. Miss Hurd's attempts to portray me as a general drug addict is so far from accurate, and she knows that. You suggest in that statement that the only drug you have been addicted to is roxycodone. You went on to state in your witness statement, I've taken other drugs during the course of my life, and I did take other drugs during the course of our relationship, but I've never suffered with addiction to those drugs. Now I'm going to suggest that Dr. Kipper's assessment contradicts that, and there were multiple substance, there was multiple substance abuse, chronic substance abuse, including alcohol, opiates, benzodiazepines, and cocaine stimulants. Now, did Dr. Kipper get that wrong? Uh, no, I do not. No, I, I do not believe he got it wrong because he got information from... From you? Yes. Exactly. Uh, the idea that you were going to clean up your act? Oh, I mean, I was, yes. I mean, I, I was going to clean up my act. Putting it in. Well, yes, I'm not it's quite addicted to roxycodine, um, which was the reason I began taking roxycodine from an injury, a, st a stunt, a stunt injury in a film in London. Again, forgive me for interrupting. You said you were addicted to roxycodone. You, I do not think we need to go through the entire reason why this came out, if you don't mind. Well, my nickname for a known writer was Welcome Home. Roxycodone. <laughs> and it's just something that states incorrectly as to why I'm even taking roxycodone. All right. So we can uh, make a note that you do not agree with that. Now you were working in Boston. Miss Herb was working in New York at the time in May, was she not? Uh, if you say so, yeah. Well. Well, I do not recall again. I mean, I, I do not recall dates very well. <laughs> He's, yeah, he really just has – I mean, this is a guy <laughs> – He's a little he's, too honest. He's, well, he's a little too honest, but he's honest about it. He's got it so – but he doesn't need to know dates. Like he doesn't know – need to know what day of the week it is. Mm -hmm. Like he's that kind of taken care of or there's people just – your assistants, you're just – everything's 
you know, nice and cruise control where mm-hmm. he's got it so set up that he doesn't need to know dates and times. It's crazy. Yeah. He really, do- I believe that he really doesn't know dates and times. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's an, that's a life. Well, I can refresh your memory. She was working on a film called the Adderall diaries. Uh, what diaries? Uh, the Adderall Diaries, opposite an actor called James Franco. Oh, uh, yes. A man possibly closer to Miss Hurd's age than yours. Um, definitely. And Miss Hurd played the love interest of James Franco's character. I, I've not seen the film, but I'll, I'll take your word for it. That situation, <laughs> uh, that type of situation where she was involved in romantic scenes with other actors always provoked you to become jealous? Uh, no, not not always, no. On this occasion, it provoked you to become jealous? It uh, provoked me to let's 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 use the word jealous. It, it provoked me to become jealous because of what Miss Heard had previously told me about her experiences of working with Mr. DeFranco in a film called Pineapple Express. So so it shocked me that she was suddenly so friendly with him and happy to be with him again. Right, so you thought something might be up? Well, she told me many things that were very, very negative about Mr. Franco. And and that he'd tried to kiss her and tried sexually with her and made sexual advances towards her on previous films that they'd done together. And, and she, she was – he was a creep, basically. You know, he was a rapist, that kind of thing. She said he was a rapist? Well, she uh, said that he was quite aggressive in his advances towards her. A rapist. She did not use that word, surely? Well, I do not recall the word rapist. But what, you know, what she's doing is she... Mr. Depp, you made an extremely important statement just now that Miss Heard told you that James Franco was a rapist. Uh, pardon me for using the word... Uh, you made that up on the spot, did you not? No. It's just the word that came out for the actions described of Mr. Franco by Miss Heard to me, you know, which was sexual advances, which were him leaning into her and saying, I'm going to kiss you now. And, you know, she had sort of run from his advances at one point and that he was kind of a nonstop creep. You know, it was just she felt he was just really, really creepy and uh, rapey. If, as it were, if that's a word. So, so I had said rapist because it's the word rapey was used to describe Mr. Franco and his behavior. Uh, by the way, I agree. Every, I, I, I believe every word of that. This is absolutely true. Mm-hmm. I believe every word of that. It sounds like a proverbatim exchange. And if you're his people, by the way, was there ever an article written about this exchange? You know no, how they would cherry so. pick stuff from this and write yeah. articles about this is crazy shit. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is a me too and a half when you're using the R word. Knowing what we know now about her uh, meeting me, hookups with him while Depp was filming Pirates, do you think she turned down his advances? No. There you go. No. <laughs> I, I also think she looked at him as an up and coming mm-hmm. star. Mm-hmm. You know, like, oh, he's. This is this is this is the next guy to hitch my wagon to because it looked, he seemed to accrue a lot of power at that point with that Seth Rogen mm-hmm. did that whole Hollywood you know Jonah Hill there's this click there's this Jewish thirty something actor click that comes right out of that Hollywood high scene and mm-hmm. they're all in each other's movies and they're you know Jonah Hill and Seth Rogen and blah da da and Franco and they all grew up together and they're all in each other's is that kind of she sees him latching on to that that stable, if you will, mm-hmm. is I think her plan. I think that's, that's how she operates. Yep. What can? What's the next grift? What's the next con? Mm-hmm. Nine fifteen. That was the word she used, was it? Rapey. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Rapey. Oh, thank you. You were uncomfortable, if I can use a neutral term. As soon as you heard that she was going to be making another film with James Franco, were you not? Um, I was uncomfortable with that, yeah, uh, because it was quite inconsistent with the feelings 
she had told me of. You told us before that you did not interfere with Miss Hurd's script or anything like that. Uh, is that still your evidence? I, I do not know what interfere with the scripts even means. You would say before she took a part, what does this film involve? Advising her? My lord, Mr. Depp's evidence yesterday, he was said he would not interfere with unless he was asked to do so. So if Ms. Wass is going to put this evidence to him, then it would be more helpful if she just put it to him correctly. There you are, Mr. Depp. Do you agree with that? Um, you would not interfere unless you were asked, unless she asked you to advise her? Well, that is correct. I mean, whenever she asked me for my advice or, or asked me what I thought about a project, I, I would give her my opinion. And, and what my concerns were about it. You know, I'd, I'd give her advice on how to handle with their agents or manager. Mm -hmm. Sarah, why do you think, unless she's just too smart, and he, I'm trying to remember, he fired her after this. Why do you think he never turned her on to Jacobs officially? I don't know. I don't know. It never even came up in the transcript yet that we've covered. Right. You would think that it. she would make an attempt to go, let Tracy represent me. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, I wonder why that never conversion never took place. Mm -hmm. Weird. Yeah. What did you just drop? Oh, no. It's a uh, right. MDMA. It was a. Uh, <laughs> Your baggie. It, it, was a, it, was a, it was a flask <laughs> that said uh, property of JD, J Depp. It's got skull and crossbones on it, right? <laughs> it's called skull and crossbones. Okay. Uh, JD Dictator 3 at gmail.com. So your concerns about romantic scenes were quite quite considerable, were they not? Um, you know what I mean by romantic scenes? Oh uh, yes, I do. Well, you know, given that Miss Heard, uh, as I said yesterday, as I testified yesterday, Miss Heard was uncomfortable being thought of as uh, thought of as you know, some kind of a sex object. Mm -hmm. So she was hoping to do better films with one, you know, more meat to the part, if you will, <laughs> and and did not want to be objectified and. Did not want to have to do nude scenes anymore. So I, of course, I was like uncomfortable with the idea of her doing nudity. And as I think, well, I know it doesn't matter for a movie. Okay. Uh, can you take up please bundle eight and tab 73? Uh, sorry. I mean, it's a bit of a scavenger hunt here. Oh, oh yes, I have it. I have it. It's an email from Miss Heard to their, her then assistant, Kate James, dated May 10th, 2014. Yes. Subject one liner. Hey there, can you do me a favor? Please can you um please be sure you don't send Nathan, that is Nathan Holmes or Christy, your sister Christy, or anyone on Johnny's team, the one liner of my schedule. I do not want them to see a one line breakdown that mentions anything romantic or anything that could that Johnny could lose it to. Uh, there's probably a word missing there, you know. Uh please be careful. We just sent the dude that does the D-O-O-D that does not explain what the scenes are in any way. Oh, God. Can you think of any reason why Miss Heard would not want you to have the schedule of her romantic scenes? Uh, yeah. Yes. I mean, I, it makes sense. Is She felt it would probably upset me. Uh, but it is quite um, slightly, it's a little bit of a deception. It is a little bit of a deception, and she was worried you were going to lose it. Uh, that's the word. Can you imagine why she thought you might lose it? Can you help us with that? Maybe you cannot help us. I think what she's stating is pretty clear. She doesn't want me to lose it, meaning uh, she doesn't want me to get jealous and uh, to have that sort of turn into an argument. And lose your temper? Well, be upset, yeah. Lose it is actually short for losing your temper, is it not? No? No. Uh, yes, yeah, uh, but yes. You had a telephone call before the night you met up with Miss Heard to travel back to Los Angeles, and I think you arranged to charter a plane that was going to pick Miss Heard up in Boston, where she'd been filming with Mr. Franco, and, and you would be picked up by the same plane in New York where you were filming, and the two of you would be flown back to Los Angeles? Um, Actually, she was in New York, and I was in Boston. Sorry, I got that wrong. Let me start again. She was in New York, and you were picked up in Boston, and the two of you flew back to Los Angeles? Uh, yes. And it was a private plane that had been chartered? Um, yes, ma'am. 
The night before you were due to meet up, did you have a heated discussion on the telephone with Miss Hurd about what was happening with James Franco, the scene she was doing with James Franco? I do not recall, but it's highly likely. I should say this, too, just for six degrees of um, Deppie Bacon. You know, Depp has never worked with James Franco. Mm -hmm. Let's not – don't discount that because there's no connection at all. So Franco feels nothing. For depth, there's no bro code here. There's no, they, they've nothing. They've never been in a film together. I will say this: Dave Franco, his brother, was in uh, the Twenty One Jump Street film, okay. and they did have somewhat a scene. They're in the same scene. They, not, they don't really have speaking lines. I don't think Depp's cameo in the Jump Street film. Dave Franco is actually the uh, antagonist in the movie. Okay. Which is kind of strange, but he and James Franco have absolutely never done anything together. Mm-hmm. I don't so think they ever will. There's no, you know what I mean. There's no guilt. There's no. Unless they testify nothing. together. Right. Okay. What happened was that Miss Heard got on a plane in New York, as you said. The plane flew to Boston, and you arrived in a car or driven in a car, but you did not get out of the car, did you? You stayed on the runway in that car for some considerable time. How long is a considerable time? Well, you knew the airplane was waiting to load and take off. Uh, as we arrived on um, any airplane, when you're allowed into the area where the planes are, they, they sort of drop us at the plane. There's usually quite a bit of time to load the luggage into the cargo area. So so there's a lot of times where you know, I'll stay and just sit in the car and continue smoking my cigarette, you know, before I get on the plane. So... As when you're on the ground, you're not allowed to smoke on the plane until you're airborne, for obvious reasons. On this occasion, I know. On this occasion, stop smoking on the plane. Yeah. On this occasion, you were waiting on the tarmac in your chauffeur-driven uh, car. You were taking drugs, were you not? I'm sorry. I thought I thought I just explained that to you. As is this is the habit I smoke before, you know, smoking in the car. Do you want to talk or you can continue if you want? Let us clarify where the dispute is between us. You say you were smoking cigarettes? I said I was smoking. Normally, I smoke. I am smoking a a cigarette before I get on the plane. So sitting in the car smoking. Or or maybe I was on the telephone or conversation with someone. Any number of things. To just assume naturally that I was doing drugs is a little bit... Uh, I am asking you. A, a, a cheap shot. Yeah, I'd say it's a cheap shot by you. I am asking you. I'm sorry you think it's a cheap shot, but I would hope by the time you hear what has been said about this incident, you will want to retract that suggestion. Oh, that, 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 that would be great. That would be great. You were taking drugs on that time uh, before the Boston planes. Do you agree with that suggestion or not? I was in Boston where Dr. Kipper and nurse Debbie Lloyd had come. It had been agreed to, and I had agreed to promise my sister, who I met with Dr. Kipper, and then I was going to kick Roxy Codon. So I was addicted to a very strong narcotic, and that was known by everyone. And it was also known by everyone that I had agreed to stop. And so we're in preparation to go to the Bahamas for detox. Had you had any? Uh, had you had alcohol before getting on the plane? Not that I recall, but normally when we get on a plane, everybody has a drink. Yes. Do you remember this at all? Uh, this incident? I'm afraid I do not specifically remember this incident. I can, I can I can only say that there had been many tarmacs and many planes and many SUVs over the years. All right. All right. Uh, let us see if this plane journey is any different from any of the others. Miss Heard was already on the plane. Your staff uh, that traveled with you were Stephen Deuters, yes? Uh, yes. Jerry Judge? <sighs> yes. And Nathan Holmes? Yes. The man who you said would supply drugs to you from time to time, but who is not a witness in this case, is that right? Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, if he was asked. And by the time you got on the plane, it was apparent to Miss Heard that you were under the influence of both drugs and alcohol? Well, I think the question has to be, were you under the influence of, of uh, alcohol and then drugs be- before you got on the plane? 
My lord, I have asked that, and Mr. Depp does not remember. I will certainly ask it again. Were you under the influence of drugs and or alcohol before you got on the plane? I do not recall that I had been drinking. I, I do not recall that I had been taking cocaine. If that is the drug you're referring to, I, I was addicted to roxycodone. And and I was going to kick those. So so if there's any, I mean, if 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 I upset Miss Heard, or I do not deny that Miss Heard probably saw that with her own eyes. What saw that you were worse for wear? I, I have no doubt she believed that. All right. Now, I may I may have seen that with her eyes, but I believe that those eyes are not telling the truth. Believing that, do you consider that she was being judgmental towards you, judging you because she believed that you were inebriated and under the influence of drugs? I think that she – judgmental is a very good word to use. Yeah, I mean she was quite judgmental for many years over this issue. Yeah. And on this occasion, you were spoiling for a fight, I suggest? I do not know why you'd say that. I do not recall spoiling for a fight or even trying to start a fight. Yes, spoiling for a fight. No, I was not trying to spoil for a fight. You brought up the subject of her co-star, James Franco. Do you remember that? Um, do not remember that. You do not remember that because James Franco was a subject that you felt quite strongly about. Did you not? You have to. You've explained that to us already. I was. Um, I suspected that Miss Heard was having an affair with Mr. Franco. Yeah. Right. And it was uh, since been confirmed that she, in fact, was. She was not having any of an affair with Mr. Franco at this time, was she? No, no, I believe she was. You believe that she was? I've been told that she was. You have been told she was. Is that why you got so angry? I – we haven't even gotten into anger yet. I do not – You were screaming obscenities about James Franco to her on the plane? Screaming obscenities about James Franco on the plane? Yes. With my two assistants or people who work with it and my, my chief of security and two pilots and a stewardess? Yes. Uh, and I'm screaming at Miss Heard with... Yes. Uh, um, I would not do that. This Ever. was not the first time you have behaved atrociously on an airplane. I disagree with everything you're saying. Everything. When I say obscenities, you were talking about her getting fucked with James Franco, and you were talking about how she liked to get fucked on the set, and you were making vulgar references to her genitals? Well, that is quite a stretch of her imagination. Mr. Depp, all that you need to do here is say whether you agree or disagree with the proposition that is being put to you. And I use the word, I disagree, or... You're still the judge. I do not want to limit how you give your evidence, but if you disagree, then by all means say so. Yes. So I take it that you disagree with what has been put to you. At... Yes, I mean, I very much disagree with everything. I suggest that the more offensive you became, the less that Ms. Heard would engage with you. Again, um, I disagree. Your, sa your staff simply allowed you to conduct yourself like this. Uh, they did not judge you. They did not admonish you. They did nothing to protect Miss Heard from this tirade of abuse. They had no reason to protect Miss Heard. I suggest Miss Heard move seats on more than one occasion to get away from you. And you started by throwing ice cubes at her. <laughs> what a waste at of once... ice. Oh, <laughs> I know. I would have saved those ice cubes. Probably steamed right off her Satan back. <laughs> Okay, uh, okay. I'm sorry. jealous of the ice maker he has on the plane. Oh, God. Okay, there we go. At one stage, when she tried to move away from you, you kicked one of the chairs so hard that it swiveled around and hit her? I... Uh, you disagree? I've never seen anyone be able to push an airplane chair that could assault someone. Airplane chairs are very, um, well, we all know what they're like. You were in a blind rage, demanding to know how much she liked getting off with James Franco, and she refused to answer. And you were so angry that she would engage with you during the discussion. She would not engage with you. Uh, you slapped her across the face in front of everybody? 
Uh, no, ma'am. I did not. And you called her a go-getter slut and a whore? <laughs> I could see him saying that. that yeah, probably, I can't could be, uh, I, I, I don't buy this. I story. hope he did. I mean, if he's not saying it, <laughs> I am. <laughs> Uh, no, ma'am, I would not. Not under any circumstances would I get that. Uh, and carry on, finish. I would not get that. I would not. There are possibilities that if Ms. Heard and I had a fight and that sort of thing, it would come out of my mouth, I suppose, depending on what came out of her mouth prior to it. But I, I do not go into a rage and start screaming at her in front of all these people. Let me say, let me say this. Um, this is so crazy on, on every level. Um, just a little thing like him proving about the airplane chair. Mm -hmm. That's like enough of a, you just proving a lot. Like you can't push an airplane chair. No, they're bolted down. Right. And it's a little thing like that. He just slips that in there. It's like the lie is so bad. Yeah. They can't even. The problem, though, is the judge isn't even listening. I know. Does he, doesn't he sound? I know the the. Uh, he didn't even pick the up son, on it. The son, the Rupert Murdoch. <laughs> yeah. Judge, the 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 network that Depp helped create. Mm -hmm. I might add, the yeah. Fox Network. He is the leadoff hitter for the mm -hmm. Fox. There is no Rupert Murdoch if it's not. And for... let's just remember too. He didn't just you know have his decision the next day. What was it? Four oh, months God, later, it was like two weeks wasn't like he had uh, plenty of time to go over transcripts. Weeks. Yeah, and not miss a single. He's barely syllable. listening. Yeah. I know he's he's he said this is why. Like, I remember reading this for the first time, and I'm going, "What is the point of this judge? Mm -hmm. He doesn't seem to have any opinions. There's no pushback. He's not inquisitive. How do you even yeah. get the job? How do you mm -hmm. even become a judge? Yep, he just seems like just some some vegetable, some burned out Brit vegetable." Mm -hmm. Some shepherd's right. pie. <laughs> Let's burn through this here. Okay. During the course of the flight, you were demanding more alcohol and oxygen from the flight attendant? The oxygen tank. I remember the pilot, a lot of these crews have, have flown with before. <laughs> huh. Rochelle Hathaway. So I ask for an oxygen mask, just as a lark. As a lark? Yeah. A What's lark. so funny about an oxygen tank? You know, when you put the oxygen mask on and you turn the nozzle on, you're hit with pure oxygen. That's really all it is. So it's kind of like, you know, it's not oxygen. It's like a, I was not abusing a drug. I was breathing oxygen and showing them because I knew, I knew the crew had flown with them a lot and the pilot and I had done that once before. Miss Heard got up again from her seat in order to move away from you. And you said to her extremely aggressively, are you walking away from me? And at that stage, you kicked her in the back as she was trying to get away from you. <laughs> not true. And you were raging like a monster. Also not true. And you eventually went to the toilet, the bathroom, if you prefer, of the plane, and you passed out? Uh, after after Miss Heard or Miss Heard was berating me, screaming at me and whatnot, uh, as is her wont, she began to get physical. And I don't mean in an Olivia Newton-John kind of way. <laughs> I did not get up and then go to the bathroom. I grabbed a pillow from the couch and I slept on the bathroom floor. I've done that on more than one occasion as well. You certainly slept on the bathroom toilet floors before. Has your assistant Nathan Holmes had to break into locked doors to wake you up after you passed out on the toilet? Uh, I've never passed out on the toilet. I've fallen asleep. Uh, not in the middle of, let's say, uh, relieving oneself. But either sitting on the toilet and, and leaning against the wall to sleep or, you know, sleeping on the floor. Kind of Can thing. you go to file seven, tab three, please? I ought to have made it pl uh, plain that this flight from Boston to L.A. was on May 24th, 2014. All right. Uh, just a minute. Yeah. Yes. I... Have you got file seven, tab three? File seven, tab three. Uh, sorry. Um, yes, I have it. This was a text sent between Miss Hurd and her assistant, Kate James, uh, the one whom she asked not to send the film schedules for the film schedules, too. I have to leave J.D. He was just freaked out on me. He is drinking again. It's bad. Worse than ever. I need out. 
I told Stephen, who was with him on this trip, to help you with tickets for me and Savannah out of here. Can you please book us on the red eye tomorrow morning, please? Stephen will help arrange. Then later she sends a text saying, and you can also see if you can redirect all of these texts to me to Whitney's phone or just block him entirely. I need to make this move. Best to have this call uh, slash text sent to her so she can keep them to me. Keep them for me? Keep them for me. Until a later time? Until a later time, please. Was there anything you did that could have caused Miss Heard to say, I need out? Anything on the plane journey that would make her think she wants out? Well, we certainly had an argument, and uh, that commenced to be physical. And I'm sure she was, you know, she sounds upset. Your account of what happened on the plane is very different from the account I have just put to you. And your account is as follows. And this is from paragraph 36 of your witness statement. I remember the flight from Boston to Los Angeles in detail. I had drunk alcohol prior to and on the flight, but my behavior was not alleged at all. I was drawing art sketches in my notebook, as I like to do when traveling. When Miss Heard began to, is that harang? Yes. Harang me. Okay. Throughout the course of our <laughs> I relationship. Pronoun- I love your pronunciation of that. Whatever. It's very sweet. No, no, it's cool. No, is yeah. Harang? Is, yours is better. I like no. yours better. I do. Miss no. Heard began to harangue me. <laughs> Throughout the course of our relationship, Miss Heard would often look to argue with me, berate me, or abuse me verbally and physically. By the time at which the flight took place, I had worked out the best way to deal with this was simply not to engage and try to retreat from the situation. Then you said, I took a pillow to the bathroom, locked the door, and slept on the floor to avoid confrontation, right? Yeah, yes. That's the account that you stick to, is it? Sure, yes. Do you agree, Mr. Depp, that there are accounts that are directly contradictory as there are in this case, Ms. Heard saying that you were a monster who slapped her, kicked her, and was completely under the influence of drink and drugs, and your account that you may have had a sip of something before and on the plane, but you, oh, I'm reading this horribly, but you were, qu- That's a, no, you're uh, doing fine, you're doing fine, quietly sketching in an art book and did not want any confrontation at all. They are totally different accounts, are they not? My account and Ms. Heard's account? Yes. Uh, yes, ma'am. I, I think you'll find the same throughout the entire case. <laughs> yes, and do you agree that there were two such different accounts, so at odds with, you, with each other? It's helpful to look for independent evidence. Ms. Wass, I'm not sure this is really a question Mr. Depp is to answer. It's to open you and Mr. Sherbone to make submissions. That is what we should do. All right. Can I ask it a different way? And before Mr. Depp answers, I want to seek my Lord's approval. Do you agree that records of what was said in text at the time these incidents took place can be helpful as to? My lord, this is exactly the same thing Miss Waltz is plainly doing. She did it with an email and waited for a very, very long time to hear the question. He's reading documents that are actually written to Mr. Depp and using them as a vehicle to comment on them. We all know the practice. It's typical jury practice. And because your lordship is a judge, he listens to the answer not to get up every time we reach to the point Miss Walsh is trying to get Mr. Depp to accept submissions she's going to make in closing a speech. Then we reach the time when in my submission this needs to stop, particularly when time is gone, Mrs. Walsh is taking the time she's taking and how long this still has to go. Mr. Okay, Sherman, before you continue, I agree with- let's skip to 307 because it's just them going on and on. So let's go to 307. You want to stop and then... You've been at this. No, it's fine. I want to finish. Where we, What is finish? Uh, we have like 15 more pages. Okay. You get it done. You just have it harder than I do. It's, That's fine. Barrel so, through it. Uh, I think, Mr. Sherman, we're going to get on with this. Uh, of course. Mr. Depp, can you please turn to page 28 of the text, the text schedule? This is back to volume six? Yes. Yes. Uh, the bottom three lines. I'm sorry, which page? Uh, I'm so sorry, 28. Oh, sorry, which page? It is 28, tab 119 of the text schedule. Oh, yes. Do you see the bottom three texts? Yes. They are from Mr. Deuters to Ms. Hurd on the date that the plane had arrived in L.A. She says this. He is up in the bathroom. Sorry, he is up. Sorry, this is from Mr. Deut- Mr. Deuters to... Uh, from Mr. Deuters to Ms. Hurd. Uh, yes. 
He is up. He is in the bathroom moving slowly. We'll let you know when en route and how he is in the car. Was there any reason that Mr. Deuters might have thought that you were not well that you can think of? I do not remember, no. Mr. Deuters sends another text. He says, he is in some pain, as you might guess. Can you think of why Mr. Deuters might have thought you were in some pain? I do not recall. We are on our way to, uh, over the page, please. Uh, yes. He has been sick, Mr. Deuters tells Ms. Hurd. We are going to get him straight to bed. I'm going to ask you to listen to a recording. Uh, the reference, my lord, is tab 148J1. There's a transcript of this at 148J1 and 148J2. 148J1 is the claimant's version and the defendant's version. It's extremely short transcript, and my lord will appreciate why in a moment. Can I just turn up the file? Yes. Which file are these in? Five. I think five might be the right bundle light. Uh, it's in the back of. It's been moved. I, I do not know if it's been moved in my Lord's bundle. I have found 148J, but it says accompanying a USB drive to listen to recording. And there's nothing else? No. I. I this is me. I know. Uh, uh, sorry for that. I do not have anything else, my Lord. That is exactly what I have. I am told they might be in the front of file 10. Sorry. Just give us a moment, Mr. Depp. Sorry, no, thank you. It... Oh, ah, I have it here. A file 10 a tab and it says 161J1. You said 148J1. J May I ask what my Lord's document is called? Which is the bundle that you should have it in? I'm told it's in 10. Jesus I'm going to pass 10 down to you, and you can locate the document if you want. Um, that's right. It's a scavenger hunt. Yeah. That's, he put that so well. He really did. Mm -hmm. It's a fucking scavenger hunt. Just, they waste so much time on this. I know. Problem. Blah, blah, blah. Let's skip. This will benefit us. Okay. Skip to page 311, line 10. I'm going to listen to the recording. Let Miss Walsh ask a question, and then you agree be helpful in the future for you to have it be a transcript of some sort. And if the transcript can't be agreed on, to have the side of the version of this transcript. But I do want to get on with this. Let us listen to the recording, and then we'll have to come back to the transcript when it is available. Okay, so this recording is him. Um, he's recorded moaning, and I don't even think he's in his right mind, but he's moaning. There is some <laughs> speculation. There's some speculation that, again, it's the metadata, and this wasn't on the plane, but she recorded him when he was on the island with her trying to detox, and she right. kept his medication from him. I'm sure that will be mentioned coming up soon. But, well um, said, Sarah. Nice yeah, recap. Right. All right. Okay. Mr. Depp, that is you on the plane. Uh, would you like to say anything about it? Well, well before, do you agree that it's your, your voice, Mr. Depp? I find it difficult to um, All right. recognize that is me. If that's you, go ahead, Judge. It is? Yeah. If you do not know, that's that's fine. I'm sorry. Uh, do you remember anybody else on that plane journey making those sorts of noises? No, I do not. I do not remember anyone else making those noises. Okay. Um <sighs> It's not a woman's voice, so we can rule out Miss Hurt out, uh, can we not? You know, I do not know who we can rule out at all. You do not feel comfortable saying that's obviously not Miss Hurt's voice? Um, I'm not saying it's Miss Hurt's voice. I'm saying that it sounds to me like it could be pretty much anyone's voice. I've never heard that recording before. So, you know, if it was submitted into evidence, I've never heard that recording before i've never heard of recording ever so i'd say it sounds almost like some animal in pain yes it does but i'm not but i'm going to suggest that you are in that animal and you were in pain it was because of the overconsumption of drugs and alcohol that happened on that flight no i have to say that i cannot say that's me i just i cannot identify that sound as me therefore i'm i'm sorry i'm gonna have to just disagree with you Going back to Mr. Deuter's text on the 28th, if that were you? If that were me? 
If that were you, it might offer an explanation as to why he is telling Miss Heard that he would keep in contact with her as to how you are. Uh, we will let you know when he is en route and how he is in the car. He's in some pain, as you might guess. Uh, yes. It helps understand those texts. Do you agree or not agree? Um, I, I do not know that the two are connected at all. Really? No, I mean, I don't know the origin of the tape. I, I do not know when the tape was even made. Is there a... Uh, uh, well, there has been. Uh, metadata on that tape? There's been evidence that there has been metadata, but it was on the 24th of May. Now, I think Miss Walsh is starting to get into the realm of submissions. I... Um, I will not start asking about metadata and the like. Uh, Mr. Deuters told Miss Hurd you had been sick and he was going to get you straight to bed. Were you sick when you arrived back in L.A. or were you sick on the plane? Oh, clearly, if Mr. Deuters is sending those texts to Miss Hurd, um, I must have been quite ill, yeah, sure. You must have been quite ill, and yet you said in your witness statement, I remember the flight from Boston to L.A. in detail. Yes. It seems that you're not remember, uh, you didn't remember being sick at all. It must be something you did not remember about that flight. Uh, do you agree? Uh, there's nothing that says to me that I was sick on the plane. He's texting me, he's texting her from, I just, I don't know where. Seems like we're at my house in Switzerland. So I, I can't say that he's referring to the mating call <laughs> that I heard on that record. <laughs> you see, your account is really, it was Ms. Hurd who uh, disgraced herself on the plane by being unpleasant, judgmental, argumentative, and really you were the peaceful party and just went to the bathroom to get away from the problems. That's your account, is it not? That is my account. There's only so much. Uh, sorry, I... That is your account. Uh, could you look at page 29 in the text, please? The third text down. You sent a text to Miss Heard some hours later. Uh, I do not have the text. Sorry. You do not have the text? This is volume six, is it? Yes, six. Uh, tab 119, I think. Miss Wallace, you said page 29. Did you? Uh... Yes. Have you got page 29? I do, I do indeed, yeah. I've read out the two texts from Mr. Deuters to Miss Heard, and under that, there's one from you to Miss Heard. Yes. You see that? Uh, where are we talking? I'm sorry. The third text down? Uh, yes. It seems to have been sent about three hours after the last text that Mr. Deuters sent to Miss Heard. Do you agree? Mr. Deuter's last text was at 738, and this one is at uh, 1042. Oh, now, uh, yes, I see that. This is what you say to Miss Hurd. Once again, I find myself in a place of shame and regret. Of course, I am sorry. I really don't know why or what happened, but I will never do it again. I want to get better for you and me. I must. My illness somehow crept up and grabbed me. I cannot do it again. I cannot live like that again, and I know you can't either. I must get better, and I will for both of us. For, for, for both of us? Uh, for us both starting today. I love you. Again, I am sorry. So sorry. I love you and feel there must be an F missing there. So bad for letting you down. Yours. Yes, I see that. Now, if it was Miss Heard who was badly behaved, the badly behaved party on the airplane, why are you apologizing to her? Oh, you know, the very simple answer to that could be a couple of things. I was probably apologizing possibly after she was unresponsive to me trying to make things better on the plane because she was upset unfortunately um there's some way with miss heard because she she'd not let go of her beliefs that i had to condition you know you you'd have to condition yourself to use words that she finds pleasing as opposed to something that'll you know set her off so, so there's a great deal of placation that was always going on with her, and a great deal of it. So, but also, you know, I could, it could be that it, I, I could be apologizing for something that I said to her. If things did get heated and we'd exchange foul words, I could be apologizing for that, or it could be straight up placation. As always, was, you know, with a lot of instances with her, is the case. I, I'm sure she feels the same. She, 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 she probably had to placate me or hide, you know, a few times. Why did you say you were in a place of shame and regret? Well, 
sometimes one has to uh, say that because it takes the poison out of her quill, if you will. But you had done nothing, if, if you're telling the truth, to cause you shame and regret? I do not know that to be true. You know, I, I may have done something called shame and regret, which is to say that I may have said something ugly to her. I may have verbally insulted her or made some kind of comment. You know, but when words are being hurled at you, 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 you tend to uh, hurl them back. And, and there are many times that one feels great regret for having done that. You see, your account was that your behavior... Uh, that you were sketching in your notebook? Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, she was arguing with you? Yes. You worked out the best way to deal with it was simply not to engage, but to retreat from the situation, and you slept on the bathroom floor in order to retreat from the situation. There's no mention there of any arguing by you. If that account is correct, you had done absolutely nothing to feel ashamed or regretful about. And yet here you are saying, once again... So not just for the first time, once again, I find myself in a place of shame and regret. Uh, yes, ma'am. Then you say, I really do not know why or what happened. Yes, ma'am. Then you say, oh, sorry. The truth of it is, Mr. Depp, that you have no recollection about your monstrous behavior on that flight? No, I have a very good recollection of my behavior. I also know that once the plane touches down or when the plane is going into some kind of landing mode, I would have had to leave the bathroom that I was sleeping on the floor and come back to my seat. So if the argument continued, if she's still upset, as I can guarantee you she was, then we may have had exchanged some kind of rather nasty verbal words, nasty words to one another. And what illness are you talking about? My illness somehow crept up and grabbed me. Uh, you know, that to me sounds like I just went straight to excessive drinking after the initial altercation began. Excessive drinking on the plane? Well, you know, before I went to the bathroom, or, or in the bathroom, or after the bathroom. So now we should take on so now we should take on board that you're accepting that you may have engaged in excessive drinking. Is that the position now? Um uh being completely honest with you, I I'm thinking that if I'm saying that if I'm apologizing for something I believe that it's very probable and sounds like something I may have done post. Uh, uh, you may have gotten very drunk on the plane. Post argument as I was upset and she was upset, but certainly, you know, not enough time to get, as you say, blackout drunk or anything of that nature. So, yeah, I mean, I did drink when Miss Heard would get upset. OK, uh, I am talking about this specific journey. Yes, I'm, I'm trying to explain it. I mean, you're... You are saying you did drink on this specific journey excessively? Excessively is maybe, maybe overstating it. There is a series of questions began, Ms. Boss. Um, asking you what the illness uh, referring to? It's you. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to say that this is the illness that crept up and grabbed me. It's probably that I, I went to the bottle and then I'm, I'm sorry that I went to the bottle and I'm sorry that you feel this way and I'm sorry for everything that happened and I'm sorry for everything I did or anything like that. I'm sorry to say that this is quite a regular occurrence between us. It was a regular occurrence for you to get excessively drunk and or drugged up and completely forget what you had done and no, that was a regular occurrence? No, no, ma'am, I disagree. All right, let us carry on with the text, please. Halfway down that page, still on page 29, Christy, your sister, says, do you want to talk? She sends that to Miss Hurd. Do you see that? I do, indeed. Then Miss Hurd says, I can't. I'm sorry, but thanks for offering. Love you. Your sister says, could be things get better from all this. I don't know, uh, but may try to be helpful and encouraging and supportive. I would love it if we could talk even a little. I want to help you both. Miss Hurd said, yes, and I do hope he gets better this time, but I can't keep staying and supporting him just to watch him do it all over again. He has done this many times before. Tokyo, the island, London, remember that? Many, many times. And I always stay. Always believe he's going to get better, and every three or so months, I'm in exactly the same position. All right? 
Now, are you able to say, and it may be that you're not, when Ms. Hurd is talking about getting better, she's talking about what you regard as your illness? Is it the same thing you're talking about, the excessive drinking? Uh, I believe what she's referring to is my or our approach to one another. You know, the, my, my approach towards her is, agree, is more agreeable to her. Mr. Deuter sent another text to Ms. Hurd. The next text down... Hey, he's up. He's much better, clearer. He doesn't remember much, but we took him through all that happened. He is sorry, very sorry, and just wants to get better, which allows us to make him follow up on that promise. Did Mr. Deuters take you through what happened on that flight? Mr. Deuters and I had a conversation. Ms. Erd was still very upset, and I think very, she was just very stubborn about hearing anything. It did not ring true on her side of things. On many occasions, I'm somewhat embarrassed to say that... Um, I had to tell Mr. Deuters that I recall telling Mr. Deuters, you know, I'll just agree with whatever she says. Just placate her. I, I can't take it anymore. No more fights. No more violence. No more freakouts. Just placate her. That was our um, practice at that point. That was the plan that you cooked up with Mr. Deuters, was it, when he told you what had happened? Yes, we cooked up a plan to placate Ms. Hurd. But in fact, it was not cooked up then. It was cooked up a lot longer than that prior. Before the plane incident at all? The placation of Miss Heard, uh, yeah, it started. Um, I understand. Quite a year or two before that, I, I think. Uh, before the incident? Absolutely, yeah. Yes. Mr. Mr. Deuters indicated that you did not remember much? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, did you tell Mr. Deuters that you did not remember much about the journey? I do not recall telling Mr. Deuters that I did not remember anything about the journey. I remember I remember having a conversation with Mr. Deuters saying, you know, please tell her whatever the hell she wants to hear. Just placate her. I understand that. But that conversation was two years beforehand, you tell us? No, 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 no. The, the placation started years before, years before. It became a necessary tool to be able to deal with, with, without Miss Heard, without her going into some kind of rather high energy screaming match. I wonder if you can help us as to why Mr. Deuters might have said, he doesn't remember much, but we took him through all that happened. He's sorry, very sorry, and he wants to get better, which allows us to make him follow up on that promise. You had already said you were really sorry, Mr. Depp. Yes. But can you think of a reason why Mr. Deuters would say, would it placate Ms. Heard to say you did not remember much about what had happened? Why would that placate Ms. Heard? Because for her, that it, it looks like she was correct. <laughs> and Ms. Heard likes to be correct. Then Mr. Deuter says he's teary. He doesn't want to be he doesn't want to be a fuck up anymore, his words. Spoken to C. That is Christy. Uh, we're going to set him up with Dr. Kipper on Wednesday, hopefully. He won't be skipping this time. Won't be skipping at this time, yes? Yes. Did you miss an appointment with? Apparently I did, yeah. Then over the page, page 30, please. Yes. The doc will fly to Boston. He's a much bigger deal than Charlie. Uh, is Charlie, Charlie done it? Uh, yeah, yes. Quote, I'm not worried about bringing Charlie up. I'll do that when he's awake. Then Miss Heard texts Mr. Deuter saying, I've not heard from him, which I expected. I still want to fly back to New York City today on the red eye, though. I can't keep doing this. Then Mr. Deuter says, his phone is fucking up. I'm restarting it. And he wasn't ta he wasn't uh, talking physically. This was just placating Miss Heard, was it? Uh, yeah. Yes, it was. Quote, I think he's just texting. He just texted you. He's incredibly apologetic and knows he has done wrong. Uh, felt like we're in a critical juncture. Again, all I all said just to calm Miss Heard down. Is that right? I'm trying to see where you are right here. Sorry, where are you, Mr. Depp? I'm looking for what you're reading. Sorry. If you look at page 30 of the text schedule, um, oh, sorry, uh, feel we're at a critical juncture. I see that now. Okay. Then she said to him, I don't know how to be around him after what he did to me yesterday. Have you any idea what she might be referring to? Well, I'm going to say she's talking about the experience on the airplane. Mr. Deuters was on the airplane, so he would have known what she was talking about, presumably. 
Yes, I mean, she, she, she voiced it pretty well, yes. Then she said, I don't know if I can stay with him. I need time. Mr. Deuter said, he wants to see you so much, he's distraught. Then she said, don't worry about the flights. I'm taking the car. Thank you. Then she said, he thinks he doesn't deserve this. Obviously, he has no idea what he did or to the extent that he did it. Is there any reason you can think of why Miss Heard would be of the opinion that you had no idea what you did? I believe that Miss Heard was very happy with the idea that she was correct. That's all she cares about. But my blackout or violence or screaming or something, whatever, wherever her allegations even were. Quote, if someone was truly honest with him about how bad it really was, he would be appalled. The man Johnny is would be humiliated and definitely wouldn't say to me that he doesn't deserve it. I'm sad he does not have a better way to really know the severity of his actions yesterday. Unfortunately for me, I remember them in full, in full detail, everything that happened, end quote. Mr. Deuter says this, quote, he's appalled when I told him he kicked you. He cried. Uh, yes. Why was it going to appease Ms. Hurd for Mr. Deuter to say that you cried when you were told that you kicked her? Ugh. Uh, again, uh, and I'm embarrassed to say it, I told Mr. Deuter my instructions were to placate her, to tell her anything she wants to hear. Tell her I'm sad, you know, because it'll calm her down, and she's heard that she probably might, and she's going to... So, uh, to get past a very fractured argument, yet another argument, Mr. Deuter did exactly what I asked him to. By the way, I believe every word of this. Um, mm -hmm. His tact with her is exactly what some uh, narcissistic imbecile needs. And we've all done this, right? We've all placated people just like that, that you just tell them what they want to hear. Yeah. You know exactly how they want it framed. It's just easier and faster. She's never going to admit to anything wrong. I, I mean, this all makes complete sense. And I could see that. Mm -hmm. And he's given uh, Deuter's editorial control yeah. over what he says back to that. That's, that's an assistant that can do that. I get That's an I understand. assistant and a half. Yeah, I get the mental position you're into. You just you you flip the switch off. It's yeah. like just tell her what she wants to hear. Yep. I, I'm done. You disconnect. Okay. It all makes total sense. I could I I um believe every word he said in that. Mm -hmm. Is he a hundred percent innocent? No. But this is a great deal of you know, misinterpreting texts or the context or how you can't, you know, hear. You can actually say that in person, too. You can mm -hmm. actually repeat that to someone and, and sell it where they believe. And I'm, and I'm sure he's done that in person. Mm -hmm. Had that exact conversation orally. Yep. All right. You specifically, we're almost done. You specifically said, tell her I don't remember anything, but tell her that you told me that I kicked her. And that I cried. Were those your instructions to Mr. Deuters? I did not go into uh, specific instructions. I, 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 uh, I did not write any dialogue for him. <laughs> there we go. I, I didn't even know that was coming and we're answering our own. Uh, we just. Mm -hmm. Prophetic. They left it to Mr. Deuters to follow my instruction. I trusted that he would really get to the point of her uh, and point her to what I was feeling about feeling bad and having to let her down whatever upset her and whatever she said I did just 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 agree with it to get through it all just get through it you know as um she's saying I can't take it I'm gonna leave him I, I can't take it anymore well she was feeling that for a very good reason because we argued all the time and I was feeling exactly the same she was feeling it because you were assaulting her all the time I'm going to respectfully disagree with you and what you just said Kicking a woman in the back, uh, that's not the action of a Southern gentleman, is it? <laughs> it's almost like she's a Southern gentleman written down to keep mm -hmm. uh, circling back to it and call backing to it. Yep. That is not uh, – kicking a woman in the back is not indeed the action of any gentleman. Kicking a woman in the back is a horrid and damning act. You would call someone who did that a wife beater, would you not? If someone kicked a woman in the back, I'd, I'd, yeah, would I call him a wife beater? Yes. No, I mean, I'd call him a sick person. I'd call him an animal. I'd call him a savage. 
I would call them a nasty, uh, I would call them, you know, it's one of the most disgusting things ever that anyone has ever said about me or accused me of. So, so I, I deny <laughs> that I ever kicked her in the back. Yeah. You said you would not call a man who kicked a woman in the back a wife beater, but do you agree? I mean, a wife beater, I'd call him all kinds of things. Do you agree it would be a fairly accurate description of someone who kicked a woman in the back? Miss Wallace, I, I think we're getting into a round of submissions here. Let's skip a little ahead. It's just them going back and forth. Okay. We're going. Okay. Line eight, 327. 327, line eight, and that's you. Mm -hmm. You have sent your sister a text. You forwarded to your sister a text that Ms. Heard sent to you. Can you see that at the top? Quote, she finally sent me a text. I will not respond, at least not in text and not right away. She seems to have figured it all out. Happy reading. This is the forwarded text. Quote, there are so many things to say. I feel there are not enough words in the world to articulate what I want to say to you. All I can say is I am heartbroken. My whole world came crashing down on me. I feel so lost. I know this. I love you more than I have ever loved anything. I know you are my one, my, my life's true love. Fact remains, I cannot imagine life without you. And the inescapable truth is being with you has been the best thing to happen to my life. But only you have the ability to take it away from me for both of us. I know you have a sickness. I know you are suffering, Johnny. I'll do anything to be able to take that away from you, if only I could. We have such a beautiful something that is killing us. And that is what I am afraid of. Seeing such a beautiful thing as our love slaughtered right in front of my eyes and not being able to do anything about it. That is what who I am running from, the demon. Because despite how much I have tried to fight him off, you, you, he has been winning. I am scared, Johnny, so scared. I watch this, I watch as this thing steals my life from, out from under me. He steals my man from me and replaces him with something terrifying and unrecognizable. That was the text Miss Heard sent you, was it not? Oh, well, yeah, it appears so. She is describing the monster, is she not? That part of you that takes over and drink? She is describing, uh, yes, the whole, what she called, referred to as the monster, yes. Could you go over to page 34, please? Now, I understand your case as far as Mr. Deuters is concerned, is that his brief was to placate Miss Heard. Yes, to say anything that was going to keep her happy, yes? Uh, yeah, yes. Your brief was to placate Miss Heard? As often as I could, Yes. I want to ask you about a text that uh, did not go to Miss Heard at all, but a text from you to Mr. Bettany. Yes. This is sent a couple of days, sent on the 30th of May, so a few days after, a week after the Boston plane incident. You say this, quote, I am going to properly stop the booze thing, darling. <sighs> Drank all night before I picked Amber up to fly to L.A. this past Sunday, end quote. This was obviously a reference to the flight from Boston to L.A., is it not? Uh, yeah, yes. Quote, ugly, mate. No food for days. Powders, half a bottle of whiskey, a thousand Red Bull and vodkas, pills, two bottles of Champers ugh, on the plane. What do you get? What is that? What is Champers? What is that? Champagne. Oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> is Recently, that the English? Is it the British way of saying it? It's the um, uptight, uh, patroni not patronizing, but the upper crust way of a lazy way of saying champagne anyway. I mean, he's britting himself <laughs> out throughout all his darling and yeah. mate and it's Bettany on the other end. So now yep. he's British in this text. Okay. Screaming obscenities, insulting any fuck who got near, end quote. What exactly are you talking about in that text, Mr. Depp? Um, I can see it says I drank all night before I picked Miss Heard up to fly to L.A. I get that. Quote, no food for days, end quote. Um, ugly mate, no food for days, powders. What are powders? Uh, powders would have been cocaine, I suppose. Right. You suggested that I was including cocaine in everything. It appears from what you're telling Mr. Bentney, cocaine was involved. Well, um, that is to say, if this entire text is about the plane ride. You wrote it. Yes, I did, but. Do you remember writing it? I'm I'm going to stop. Uh, I'm going to stop properly the booze thing, darling. 
Drank all night before I picked Amber up to fly to L.A. this past Sunday. Ugly, mate. No food for days. Powders. Half a bottle of whiskey. Thousand Red Bulls and vodka pills. Scarves. Skull rings. All that. It does not necessarily mean that I was talking about the plane ride. I could have been talking about, you know, what I was going through at the moment. Mr. Depp, there's a section of the text where it says two bottles of champers on the plane? Is that about the plane ride? Well, on the plane, yeah, yes, it is. Two, two. bottles of champ- champagne? <laughs> two two <laughs> bottles of champagne on the plane. Champagne. <laughs> Jumpers. Okay, yeah. I guess that's what it is. It's not about the plane? So you were talking. I picked up Amber to fly to L.A. this past Sunday. Yes. Then, ugly mate, no food for days, pills. Do you think that might have been about a completely different incident? Is that your evidence? Uh, I do not. I mean, I, no. I mean, I guess, as your lordship has pointed out, the two bottles of champagne <laughs> on the plane, and what do you get? Uh, so I'm going to say that I might have made a mistake about the full intake on the plane. You did consume more than you were previously admitting to. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not... I, I do not remember, you know, it's one of the flights like that. One of those flights? I've, I've had several, yeah. You've had several flighted, and uh, misprint, I think, or mistypo, flighted, yeah, yeah. and you have had several flights where you've been behaved badly like this? I have had several flights where we've argued, yeah. Well, we're not talking about arguing. We're talking about the amount of alcohol and the amount of cocaine that you've had before and on the flight. Uh, yeah, sounds like, um... Sounds like you overdid it, does it not? It sounds like I absolutely overdid it. It sounds like it was a very self-destructive moment, and I was uh, incorrect in my statement that I had taken. I had not taken cocaines and things of that nature. I'm, I'm, I'm only going to say my apologies to the court in terms of that. But I, I don't remember that flight being such a, I mean, the entire flight being such a nightmare. But you do not remember that flight full stop, I suggest? No, no I, I do remember. Where in all of are you sketching your art? <laughs> uh, I guess it's at the beginning of the flight. How long did that last? Until Miss Heard started to express uh, she's now displeased with me. You see, you said four lines down after the two bottles of champagne, and what do you get? An angry agro Indian. What is that a reference to? Oh, sorry, you know, um, Native American. I'm I'm one fiftieth uh, <laughs> Cherokee Indian. <laughs> sorry, uh, angry, uh, ag- agro Indian. Is that a reference so, yeah. to? Is, is that a reference to a Native American? Uh, yeah, yeah, myself being an angry agro Native American Indian. Again, I'm I'm one. 150th Cherokee Indian, and I have a part of my Native American blood. You are a tattoo. An, <laughs> you are an aggro, angry Indian, in your words, in a fucking blackout. That is what it says, yeah. It does. I have asked you more than once whether you had parts of that flight that you did not remember, and you have repeatedly said you remembered it all clearly. Yes. Then that changed, and you said you remembered that you did hit the bottle at some stage. I mean, you had a blackout, did you not? Uh, I cannot say at a full blackout because I, you know, I have memories of the flight. Some memories. Some memories of the flight, yeah. But parts of that flight are blacked out. Apparently, uh, but yeah, apparently that it's what I'm saying to Mr. Betney. Yes. Is there any reason why you would uh, say that to Mr. Betney if it were not true? Probably not. No, you carry on with a blackout after the words blackout, screaming obscenities. Yes. You remember I accused you of screaming obscenities to Miss Heard about her relationship or what you were suggesting was her relationship with James Franco. Do you remember those questions about an hour ago? I do indeed, yeah. You denied that completely screaming obscenities of any sort? Uh, I do not recall screaming any obscenities. 
But, you know, I did say at a certain point the argument escalated quite heavily into, you know, screaming at one another. So, you know, then I retreated into the bathroom with that pillow. And I do remember that. Okay. Having heard that recording on the plane, do you think now that might have been you making those animal noises? Well, I certainly hope not. But I do not, you know, I do not recognize that as my voice. I would say that is something that I've heard once just today and I we can play it again if it helps would you like to hear it again no no I'm fine I'm fine thank you very much it's if it's me then I'm, I'm definitely dealing with some kind of problem yes if you were blacking out and you were dealing with a problem you may have done things that you have absolutely no memory of uh, I may have done some things I have no memory of Mr. Deuter was there Mr. Judge was there and he'd, he'd never let anything happen to Amber or Miss Hurt. I, I'm certainly not a violent person at all, especially with women. Um, and I have been violent in the past, as we've spoken about, when provoked, only provoked. This is clearly is a mistake I made. And I, pardon, I, I beg your pardon, I spoke out of turn. I spoke incorrectly about a situation. Can I just, for the avoidance of any doubt, try to establish what your evidence is now about the flight from Boston to L.A.? Do you accept that you drank to excess? Uh, yes. Do you accept that you took cocaine? I think what we're talking about is where it says uh, powders and no food for days. So we're talking days. So it's it's not that I – I'm not saying I did cocaine on the plane. Half a bottle of whiskey? Half a bottle of whiskey, a thousand Red Bulls and vodka, pills, two bottles of Champers on the plane – and what do you get? Uh, yes. I want to make sure it's quite clear what you're saying about the Boston plane incident. You were very drunk. You had taken drugs either before or during or both. Do you agree with that? Sure. You know, for the purposes of getting through this, uh, let's just say, yeah, everything you said, I agree. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Judge Nichols. Mr. Depp, I realize it's the end of the afternoon, but I do not feel you must say these things for the sake of getting through this. What I want to hear is your evidence and the evidence that is the truth. So you tell me as best you can recall um, whether or not you had been taking cocaine or either on the plane or before. You can really not to just get through it. I honestly, your lordship, I cannot recall whether I was doing cocaine. I had, from the condition that this text is explaining to Mr. Betney, it sounds like it would have not be out of the question in any way. The cocaine would have, I imagine, kept me awake a lot longer. But I'll say, based on this text, that yeah, I mean, it's very likely I was doing some kind of pills or alcohol, cocaine, marijuana, something like that. Certainly, as I had not been detoxed from the roxycodone, and I was on roxycodone as well. And yeah, I apologize for that. So, you accept that now? Yeah, sure, I accept that now. We have a record of what you just said, and it will be on the record. When I put you on earlier, uh. When I put to you earlier that you were under the influence of drink and drugs when the car was waiting on the runway, do you remember I suggested that to you, that you arrived in the car and kept everyone waiting? You said this is always how it happens. Do you think now you were wrong when you said you were waiting to do a detox with Dr. Kipper and did not want to overdo it or words to that effect? Uh, I'm sorry. I don't understand that. It may be. Uh, I think uh... I can leave that. The end of the day is fast approaching for us all. Uh, one more text, then I finish with this. Page 34, please, Mr. Depp. A week later, you sent a text to your friend Patty Smith. Uh, yes. Is that the third one down? Oh, sorry, that's you. <laughs> it's, is this the third one down? Yes. My darling Patty Lee, I miss you and worship you, and there is nothing wrong between us. Never, ever could that happen. I have just been so beyond busy with the film here in Boston and then back to L.A. for kitties. When I was in New York, there were brief visits and fucked and charged by horrific, fi horrific fights with Amber. I fucked up and drank and got shitty. Was so disappointed in myself. So, again, you're telling somebody that you did not have to placate that you had been using your words shitty with Amber? Uh, yes, I see that and I agree, yes. Have you seen any accusations that were made at the time? So I'm not asking about 2016 beyond. That's to say, after your divorce, suggesting it was misheard that it had behaved badly on the plane? 
Well, Ms. Wallace, if the defendant's case is that there's no text, of course, it's a matter that you can include in your submissions. All right. I'm not sure that putting Mr. Depp to a memory test of various texts is going to be helpful. My lord, that concludes that episode. If It has taken, I'm afraid, considerably longer than I anticipated. I do not know if my lord was thinking of rising now, but could I address the court about timetable, please? Yes, indeed. Can Mr. Depp stand down from the witness box or, while you do so? Of course, it is my lord's prerogative to allow him to do that, and I would have no objection. Good, good. Then, Mr. Depp, you're going to uh, continue your evidence tomorrow? Yes, yes, sir. Fine, you, my lord. <laughs> the, what um, I have said to you previously about not talking to anybody about your evidence continues. Yes, sir. But I'm going to carry on hearing something that Ms. Wallace wants to say to me about the timing. Certainly. Thank you very much. Again, uh, my apologies for um, misrepresenting any situation. It's, I'm not fully aware of the entire thing, so pardon me. All right. All right. Thank you. My apologies, and uh, thank you. Okay, so that is going to wrap up day two of the WK testimony. We're going to move into day three in the next couple of days. Um, this episode should be a good seven hours. Oh, God. I need to recover from that hard-hitting <laughs> grilling. I need to take a few from that hard-hitting grilling you just gave me. All right. Counselor. Well, I need to – I feel to, punch drunk. I need to prepare more briefs, and we will get back to uh, decimating you <laughs> in the next episode. Let me ask you a question uh, now that we've gone over – and I've only – I've shown you snapshots of this, so it's never really – fully dove into it like you just did now that you're immersed in it you i mean you were in the trial more than anybody else well has been mm -hmm. just now what 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 come up what came up and smacked you in the face more I'm i mean still, some of the stuff i'm still at a point i still know this m most of the stuff so we'll get as we go further along we're not done there will be some things that i wasn't aware of and that i hadn't caught but i i skimmed through most of this Right, but reading this in black and white like this, how about Dr. Kipper forgery? I mean, isn't that insanely prophetic and eerie, what we always talk about with the insurance Maybe stuff? the faked uh, drug tests. I don't know. We'll see We'll see how that turns out. See if she actually we'll has see, some evidence. We'll see how what turns out. The faked drug tests. <laughs> no, well, I mean, he's... In order to get a, how could you, as Was said, how could you have a lifetime of all that abuse and, and knowing and then pass all these things with flying colors? Could you pass a physical? I mean, what we read and his ingestion and well, his, I don't know what a movie set physical entails, but no, I probably couldn't. But I'm sure people have been for, you know. Faking it and forging it for for generations and generations. I'm sure it's mm -hmm. a Hollywood hocus pocus that's been going on for a long time. I'm sure. I mean that stuff's gonna really. If anything hurts him from getting cast again, I think it's that. Mm hmm. The insurance aspect. Yeah. Very possible. That's gonna be the excuse that they use as to why they weren't able to uh, carry on with him in the blockbuster movies, Warner Brothers. <laughs> And if there's a way to clean him up for good, it would be that. Mm -hmm. Meaning that he would have the threat of a, uh, a pure, full-on, no-holds-barred, candid physical mm -hmm. where you can't use a doctor feel-good and he has to be – that that would clean him up. But you can't be doing the, 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 the succession and myriad of films he's done – for a bunch of years there and pass all those physicals. There's just no way without some kind of assistance, without yeah. major assistance. Yeah. We don't know though. Uh, again, I want to see what she says in the deposition because she brought it up to get it into evidence. So she'll probably be talking about it more. I'm just How, assuming. What do you feel about the Lily Rose uh, estrangement, which appears to be for two years? He didn't deny that in the text. Well, he that had. He was an absentee daddy. I'm sure that he went through a phase where he was roundabout Joe and wanted to explore the world with many a woman 
Uh, I mean, I don't know. Well, he was it's with not, her it's there expected. In that it's a normal, unfortunately, it's a normal Hollywood father daughter relationship. Um, tying into that, the Manson drug binge. Um, I think she's, I don't know. That's her godfather, Marilyn Manson. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. That's what the, crazy. I don't know what the relationship is between her and Marilyn Manson. There's pictures of them together. But uh, I'm sure it puts her in an awkward situation where she knows her godfather and her father are drug buddies and her father comes back, you know, not in a great state and uh, is suffering through relationships due to his demons. And her godfather is maybe responsible for some of that. Yeah, I mean, by the way, we should also say that that uh, um, Evan Rachel Wood documentary comes out. Like today mm -hmm. on HBO, and uh, boy, I don't know how they wouldn't reference Depp somewhat in this thing. How do you get through? I don't know if that all ties in. If she's going to take a shot at him or just leaves it alone entirely, but mm -hmm. I don't know how you get through doing a two-part documentary on him and Depp's not tied into this to, in some degree. Although, unless she just doesn't want to. That she doesn't want the shitstorm of tying him into it, which is a much bigger deal. Going after Manson is one thing. You're not going to get too much. You're going to get these weird cult people. Going after Depp is quite another beast to You're, wrestle with. You'll get Colonel Kurtz on your ass. <laughs> but um, no, I think she probably wants to leave him out because he's surrounded by a legal team right now that's at the top of their game and ready to pull the trigger on every act of defamation against him. He's got almost unlimited money to fight every claim or every accusation. So she probably wants to stay out of that and just focus on her own um, long road she has ahead of her. It's, it's the, uh, the, the, the text, the text about Lily Rose, not, with an absentee dad for two years. And I mean, I, I mean, a lot sometimes like when the dad splits on the mom and they just don't work it out. And, you know, the uh, French albatross, as it were, um, the kids uh, turn on one of them or they choose sides or whatever. I don't know if he was just in this kind of like, let me duck out of this and uh, I'll be back later mm -hmm. um, with no, uh, I don't know if it's, he, he, is the, is it more, is it, is it Vanessa or is he weighed down by the family thing? Um, I think, see, I, I don't know. I would need, we know very little about the relationship. So, I don't know if they were really close her whole life or he just disappeared and was only available via phone call for those well, two years. Well, that's something to look for in the, in, the, in the trial because I think that's I a really interesting – I also want to know what he was doing professionally at the time that she claimed she was um, being ignored by him. I don't know well, if he the, was the, – The residence he has mm -hmm. is part of the problem. He could just – he can just – private jet off to France or England or the Island or, or Depstein Island. Mm -hmm. And that distance between them can always be activated. Yeah. If Most dads away... that have to work stuff out. Can't run off like that. can't don't have mm -hmm. private jets to run off to islands in France and England. If he's off for six months doing the never ending, you know, uh, sought with not sought, but drowning in, production issues Lone Ranger movie and I don't know I don't know if he how long he's able to escape and she's at the same time off in England or Paris trying to jumpstart this weird modeling career I don't know and he just wasn't in contact with her like he usually would be I don't know the context so that's what I would need to know yeah hopefully we find the context out but it's he doesn't deny it he doesn't he doesn't deny that text was not doctored or mm -hmm. fake. And uh, that'd be the first. I mean, if he's so, you know, rabidly protective of his relationship with his kids, that'd be the first thing you would lash out at mm -hmm. in court. 
He probably also had a guilt complex about the yes. end of the relationship. Without so, a question. I would need to know more. We don't know very much about that period of his life. There's so much that goes on in these transcripts that I get like I get flustered when I try to re when I try to uh when I try to recap what I'm looking for, recap them. And because it's, you almost have to write the bullet points down as you go, because it's crazy. I mean, you could write, it's almost too much. Like you, you could, you know, if you're a gossip person, you could just cherry pick like a thousand things from this and just coast on it for like years. Mm-hmm. Which I think some, you know, your daily mails did do. Yeah. Like, I think the forgery stuff alone is, I mean, like I said, this is a fourth wall into Hollywood 101 of what an A-list actor can get away with. Um, yeah, this this doesn't come up a lot. We don't have a lot of these um, never. lawsuits. I've never heard I'm this. shocked we don't have as many as you – know, we, we don't have more than what we do. Between this tabloids. and the Tracy Jacobs stuff, you see – Completely into the fourth wall of turning mm-hmm. scripts down, yell, blaming directors, uh, creative differences, just being the tardiness on sets, um, the, the way the industry talks, the, the 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 insurance issue here, the money aspect. I mean, his his money chart alone is so completely taboo. Mm-hmm. Are you going to ever see Tom Cruise's money chart? No, like not that at all. with expense breakdowns and what do they call it? A rider on a movie that your demands, uh, you know, how much you your security and your trailer and all that stuff. I mean, yeah, he he's also that's you know, in, oh God, who's another star? Because Tom Cruise is hidden behind. 25 brick walls of religion and who's more accessible than tom cruise you mean? yeah tom cruise is uh, never gonna be every time you go to a guy you know it's funny every time i go to a star it's always that scientology you know you say oh will smith oh scientology <laughs> you know, like, mm-hmm. i guess brad pitt but dicaprio yeah maybe dicaprio he would be fascinating to crack that open. Well, he's and, so yeah. mysterious. He's so weirdly um, inaccessible as well. I'm not. Depp's not. Inac- Depp, Depp used to be inaccessible. He's not anymore. But DiCaprio is really busy. You don't see him on talk shows a lot. You know, he's very humorless when you do. He's mm-hmm. got a real like uptight kind of thing. He's very terrified of. He's horrible with. Fa- he's the opposite of Depp with fans spontaneous mm-hmm. interactions with fans. He's horrible. There's actually footage of him blowing fans off. Of him. I'm sure. I can easily picture that. Um, I would say but- Keanu Reeves might be on Depp's level of conviviality with fans mm-hmm. from what I hear. What I see. Mm-hmm. Uh, another one would be Tom Hanks. Yeah, I agree. It's a good list that you have. Um, with the Brad Pitt, though, I mean, he's going through the court system right now. And you don't even see, you know, nothing. T- well, you do see mud slung at him, but professional mud. There's maybe a, a tenth or a twentieth of what's being slung at Johnny Depp. But not his financial breakdown for well, he's going through ten years. I know, custody, but you don't so see that's part right. of it. But it is nothing like Johnny Depp. Try to dig around on Brad Pitt documents. You won't. You won't find anything. No, probably not. Not much. No. And. Yeah, with the holdings it's they're endless. fighting over, it's heard and depth don't compare at all to what uh, Jolie and Brad Pitt are fighting over. There's so many things. We, we, we Every time we do this, it's like a million things. We, the next uh, show, I think I'm going to pull out an old news thing I just saw on the shitter. It was, I mean, we've, we know a lot about it, but Charming. It's, it's, it's David Hurd's, um, David Hurd's threats to him, and it's all compiled into one thing and the mm-hmm. mechanic. That they tried to she, oh, yeah. she was cut off. She was cut off from mm-hmm. him. And she still wanted the, him for to pay for everything. To the point where she goes to a mechanic and wanted his management to pay for the, the you know, that that whole tip she got into. And the uh the mechanic like, you know, documented everything and went to Depp's team with it. Mm-hmm. Go, this look is, at this. This is this the mechanic she made an overture to? I don't know if it's the same guy. I gotta double check that. 
because I think the other guy was the guy from uh, the the show that auto makeover show. Oh, okay. No, I think I don't no, think right. they're the same right. person. Mm-hmm. Probably they're not, not the same. It's not the same. It's not on the show anyway. Much I gotta go, advances I just it more than one it. person. It wouldn't surprise me, but it, <laughs> cross reference that mechanic with uh, the guy from I forget the name of that show. The the makeover, do, the auto makeover show. Oh I no! Why do we blank out? We were, we can have a conversation about it, and then we blank out on the name as soon as we hit uh, record. I'm looking it up. That's right okay. Now. Do you have any um, comments that you want to read? Yeah. Uh, first, I want to circle back to something. I just we I was holding on to this. He was talking about during this depths because we're gonna it's gonna be we're gonna move past it, mm-hmm. and I don't want the moment to pass. It's called De- Overhauling, by the way. Yes, yes. I don't know anyone okay. who's watched it other than I that only episode. know that one episode. <laughs> There's a million of these car shows, celebrity car shows. It's a, basically it's punked. It's pimp my cars. ride. Mm-hmm. Pimp, right? At least that's how they played it. But I they, don't know they if they do it, that every show. They pull, yeah, they do the punked aspect of it is to get the car into their possession. Yeah, okay. Ashton Kutcher's that. punked. They always wanted Ugh. to see Depp on punked. They never got to him. The only good punk uh, segment was Justin Timberlake because he cried like a little woman. Oh, there's a lot of good ones. Mm. The earlier seasons are really, they they had some really good targets. There's a lot. Mm. I think it's the best thing Ashton Kutcher has ever done. Even though he's not really involved in the in the you know the the uh, Dax Shepard uh, part of it. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of good ones. They did did a Winona Ryder one to mm-hmm. uh, Eliza Dushku. <laughs> they accuse her of shoplifting, and then she's like, "I didn't what." You know, they, they, it was, it was good. I mean, I need, I need to binge that again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've, uh, now that you have me thinking about Pimp My Ride and Pong for the first time in 20 years, I got to say, I got to go with Pimp My Ride is a better show because it's fascinating to see how they install a fish tank into the trunk of your car. So, so is overhauling a knockoff of Pimp My Ride? Yeah, but they're, it's not as extreme and ridiculous. Okay. They just put like a new coat of paint on your car and wax it. The Nick Lachey one was good. Dax Shepard played like some bumpkin who was claimed to be related to Jessica Simpson. As Jessica Simpson's family reminds me of Amber Heard in a little in a, in, a, in a way. I'm that glad whole, I don't know the, the Nick Lachey episode. <laughs> <laughs> he moves a trailer onto their property, and he mm-hmm. has this just like this hick family, and they won't leave, and they want squatter status. And then he pulls his son out and he makes his son sing in front of Nick Lachey. He goes, he's like, my son Ryan here is, uh, he wants, he's a good singer. He wants to get in the business. He figures Uncle Nick will help him get in the business. And Lachey is just all rattled and he's looking around going, I need help. Security won't, you know, they're all told not to do anything. And he's, and he's trying to be like a nice guy to the kid. And the kid just in the middle of it just goes, I can be your hero, baby. And he's trying to like, do like an American Idol audition for him in the middle of this like horrible. It's real good. Yeah, it's really good. Maybe I'll it's be just tempted good. to check it out for two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. So I saw this story. Uh, I was thinking about this. They talk about Depp having a sober friends that are helping him through it. We've heard the uh, we have we've heard the Elton John uh, part. Mm-hmm. And his and his friend and that weird uh, sober sponsor he has. It's just strange. And this guy's like following him around and he's writing these Lord Byron letters back to Elton John and about – and that seemed to be pretty short-lived. It didn't take – I think it was for about a year. So he brings up these other sober friends. It hits me immediately. Um, Sal Jenko – and this is the time they're talking when he was still friends with him. Sal Jenko has been sober and like a sober advocate for years. I mean, mm-hmm. going back, I mean, can you imagine opening up the Viper, the irony of opening up the Viper room, a den of drugs and alcohol, and you're sober all through it? Are you so, sure he was with, sober at with, the time? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Within the Viper Room, and I've heard little stories about it through every time I would Google Sal Jenko, this would come up, and it's he's pretty elusive. Mm-hmm. You don't see – he's almost like Tracy Jacobs where you don't see a ton of interviews with him. He's off in the background, and he's 
sort of, I don't know if he's instructed not to, and now Depp despises him. So you're never going to see him again. He's on, you see him on Instagram. He's on Twitter and he has that live in the dream where it's a, of course, like a hosting concerts and stuff. They're trying, they kind of set up concerts and parties and stuff like that. And event planner kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I just looked up and I realized the Hollywood vampires are like Joe Perry and Alice Cooper are utterly sober as well. And they're like staunchly sober because they had, you know, they couldn't handle their liquor and they kind of just became dry drunks and they're it's so it's just this a lot of people around him are this I don't want to say sober Nazis, but everybody in his immediate circle has some kind of weird sobriety um, connection. So I'm guessing these are who he's talking about in this. Okay, but not only that. So I say, who else is in the Hollywood Vampires besides Depp, Alice Cooper, and Joe Perry? Um. Oh my God. Guns and Roses. Duff. I don't Duff. know. Duff McKagan. No. Duff okay. McKagan. So I see this passage from Duff. Did you read that book he had? No. Aren't you obsessed with late 80s? I don't care about Guns rock and Roses. Early 90s have. rock and roll? Yeah, I've never cared. That's surprising. You bought Motley Crue's book, but you won't buy this. Yeah, I have two Motley Crue books. Yeah. Why are they all right, but Guns <laughs> and Roses isn't is, is it interesting? Because I like Nikki Six. Okay. Good, good answer. <laughs> then uh, don't ask. <laughs> he... <laughs> He, well, you you gave me that grilling for how many hours right now? I can't return the favor. Okay. <laughs> Wass? I'm going to call you Wass from now on. That's your new uh, nickname. Wass Ra. Sarah okay. Wass. All right. I'll take it. So this is an excerpt from his book, Duff McKagan's book. Mm-hmm. He writes, this is crazy. Um, Neurotic Outsiders was a sober group I was part of. I spent about eight months thinking, well, I'm going to live his life, life-threatening 1994 bout with acute alcohol-induced pancreatitis, and I'm going to be sober now. I just didn't think I was going to be able to play live when I got sober now. I just couldn't think – I couldn't fathom it. I just could I didn't think I was going to be able to play live when I just got sober. It just didn't seem like I could equate that. Sex Pistols, Steve Jones, and Matt Sorum – and Duran Duran's John Taylor and I started hanging out. Steve Moore, as he was sober at the time, he's, he's, he's my hero. And we started mountain bike riding. And then I guess it was the Blind Melon singer, Shannon Hoon's death, that first, uh, con- the, that first concert Neurotic Outsiders did was a benefit show for Shannon's wife. I was terrified to play live. And Steve was like, you, you got this, mate. You got this. And that was a real breakthrough for me playing that show. At that point, I'd been sober for just over a year. I lost a lot of weight and much of that booze weight you lose. I remember walking into the place and people staring at me. And this rumor was going around that I had a facelift and a chemical peel. And I was just like, no, no, no. I'm sober now. That's why. So we played that gig. And then at the Viper Room, Sal Jenko and Johnny Depp offered us a residency, and we went, oh, fuck it, okay. And for me, it was like figuring out how to play sober now. And I really didn't leave Steve uh, Jones's side, really. And for me, it was like figuring out how to play sober now. Uh, I really never left Jones's side, really. And for me, it was just figuring out how to play sober. And I really didn't leave Jones's side ever. And I have Sal and Johnny to thank for that and helping me through my sobriety. Hmm. It's a good passage. But I'm telling but I'm telling you, there's this sober circle. It's almost like Sal must have like must have had had a like a an AA meeting of his own at the place. Mm-hmm. You know, you could do whatever you wanted to. So there's like two sides to it. You have this, and then you have the crazy partiers. You know, ironically, you have this sober group at the place that River Phoenix's death gets blamed on. Yeah, exactly. You walk in, there's probably down in the dirt covered dirt floor basement, there's probably a turn display with pills and I don't know. Yeah, not the But Depp mentions nobody by name except Elton John and his Mm -hmm. crony. He called him his bottom. Did you hear that in the the, uh, 
Yeah, sure. Nelton, Nelton's, <laughs> uh, I don't know what you call it, bottom? Uh-huh. Pillow, that would have gone that over pillow well. Biter, that oh. pillow biter, Elton, <laughs> and his uh, bottom, as it were. Rocket man. No, I can't use... <laughs> rocket man or rocket man. You can't use By rocket the way, man uh, what do you think about, living. I just realized this, you know, Depp dated uh, Jennifer Grey for a year. Mm-hmm. Like eight, just before Winona Ryder. And uh, I don't know. It's just hitting me now. It's never been said. Crybaby dates baby. Oh, God. Baby. Oh, right. <laughs> Isn't that insane? Coincidence? You are such you reach so far to grasp That's not a reach. so little. <laughs> baby and crybaby. Why wasn't that a bigger uh, deal back then? Uh, oh, my God. It was probably a headline in some in, in the globe <laughs> at some point. Okay, we got some comments. Yeah, uh, so this is from an old. This is a, speaking of the Viper Room. This is a callback to one of our old shows. Lucy Fire weighs in. What Lucy Fire? Welcome to the Wino Forever Deppening family. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's got a bunch of comments here. I'm assuming it's a she. It may not be. Just because it says Lucy does not make it a she. There's a Lucy in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, too, by the way. And there you be gender um, specific. Christina Ricci. Mm-hmm. Right. Speaking of Fear and Loathing. God, these segues are insane. I did not plan this. The limited edition box set. This is for you. I think it's more directed at you, even though, it, I mean, I'm certainly... And I think I read this too. The limited edition box set of Fear and Loathing with Depp's repost to a lengthy letter from Thompson is almost worth the price of admission. And that price is low these days. So Fear and Loathing came out with like a collector's edition and it had more stuff in it. And I don't know. I think it had some deleted scenes. It's not easy to find. It was not in massive quantity. I mean, it was like, I think you had to order it online. I think I one time I saw it in Best Buy. And it was ridiculously overpriced. Um, but it's got a – I think Depp does a – and I think that that's been scanned and online. I think you can find that Depp does a like kind of a uh, a Thompson essay, dissertation. Oh, God. Okay. Manifesto, man, uh, Deppifesto. Mm-hmm. And it's really good. He talks about his time with Thompson and what he means to him and what they did together. And I can't get enough of that. Uh, uh their time together. It sounds like I've never been more jealous of, I mean, that's the life when Thompson's life is like, if you can come back as somebody, is there any greater life than Thompson's? You're in Aspen. You're getting worshiped by celebrities who come to you. Your job is to really write whatever you want, however you want with the best publications. You have no rules at all. You can tell you whatever topic it's usually with him. It's sports, politics, uh, and you're just um, as, as free spirit as one can ever be. You know, you talk about making your own rules and playing by your own rules and living life the way you want to live it with no. I mean, I, I don't think there's a. I, I, I don't think I'm jealous of anyone's life more than his. Mm-hmm. I but still with have Depp, to. He's got a different. He's got way more responsibility. Like he's got mm-hmm. way more people hanging on him. He can't go out as easily. It's it's a, a Depp's life, and with the scammer stuff, not even including that. But Thompson's life is. I mean that. So when he killed himself, it was really strange to me, and um, I thought, well, we never read his suicide letter, right? No, we haven't done that yet. He's just one of those guys that couldn't deal with being old. Mm-hmm. You know, it's sort of eternally young. And the the, the 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 title of the article, and I go through this every football season, is football season is over. That was his, the start of his suicide letter. Yeah, that's You know rough. the depression you feel when, su- when football's mm-hmm. after the Super Bowl? It he depends on the team you follow. Yeah. But, um, yeah, he's – Lucy Fire is right. You um, they're, they're, you have all these people trying to entice you to watch Fear and Loathing. This is like the fifth person that's tried to entice you. To, I don't to, even – I got to be honest. I don't even think about it. I don't even think about watching that movie. It, it thinks about you. I have to, like, walk into a room and have it playing on the television. And I can't find the remote. 
at the same time. My, I gotta tell you, my dying wish is having um, Sarah have to watch Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. I think she'd really enjoy the the Vegas film. And um... don't rely on me, Hunter, because. <laughs> If you were <laughs> maybe even laying there and I could save your life by watching it, I still would hesitate. So <laughs> when we do the fear and loathing in Las Vegas episode, it'll be done um, by then. The episode. Yeah. Well, we'll no, we it. have that great video that the person got of him hanging out with Thompson, and I think it was mm-hmm. the Rolling Stone. We played that writer, not the full thing. No, no, we haven't played the home videos yet. No. But I, I made the mistake of watching the Rum Diaries first. I don't care. I just, I hated that. Don't don't go by the rum diaries. Like I said, take all the fun things about Thompson out and all the craziness. And that that's the rum diaries, a stripped down, boring version of Thompson. I don't even know why they did it that way. Okay. No, I don't know what it's just like a, a watered down Thompson. I don't know what a subtle Thompson and then we don't want Thompson subtle. I don't know what Depp was thinking, portraying him that way. It's not a good decision. Mm-hmm. I would have seen that. I mean, that's you need me on the set to shoot that down. <laughs> or he was trying to be good looking for Aunt Scammer. Well, yeah, that's a, that's exactly why. Which is the theory I have. Mm-hmm. It's very, very underachieved. Um, so Lucy Fire comes back again. These are all again. These are all during the uh, Viper Room videos. OK, this is this is a, a drug acronym. And I'm not sure. GHB was probably the biggest factor in River's death. The way it came from on a, in, in form of motion sickness and a la bungee rocketing to a swooning stratosphere of primal fear is unparalleled in my once lofty but misguided experience. Well, we got a Thompson on our own here with this Lucy fire with that <laughs> prose. Whoa. Good God, for her. Man, I could see Thompson saying this, right? GHB mm-hmm. is probably the biggest factor of his death. The way it can come in a form of motion sickness and all of bungee rocketing to a swimming stratosphere of <laughs> primal fear is unparalleled in my once lofty misguided experience. Yeah. Wow. I know nothing about mm. drugs, so thank you for that insight. I don't either. Um, I had to look up what GHB stands for, so. What is, what'd you get? You're going to make me say this. Gamma. Yeah, I'm going to make you say it. Hydroxybutyrate. It's not even right. Butrate. Butrate. Is that how you say butrate? With I don't a know. I'm not, I'm not looking at it, but that's that's good. The first one was gamma. Gamma. Mm-hmm. So Hydroxy maybe it's like a, maybe it's a Bruce Banner thing. Gamma is. Oh Jesus Christ! You got okay. dropped into a a ditch and uh, Thunderbolt Ross was doing testing or something, and you got bombed by gamma rays. That's why and I that's don't what drink. It feels because like. THB it could be in the room. Thank you. That's, that's yeah. I mean, I, I, I'd love to. I, I, I kind of want to know more about people's take on drugs. People who have actually partook mm-hmm. to just cross reference this stuff because I, I just uh, a lot of times I just don't know enough about the cause and effect, and I'm not in that world. Even something as simple as getting them, the yeah. process of who, where are these drugs? It like, says it's a prescription. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm talking about illegal ones, though. Yeah, no, I know, of course. But somebody got a prescription and was able to mass produce it. But it's a depressant. And, uh, yeah, it says availability, prescription needed. Um, but, they, yeah, I, you know, I was looking at the uh, – <sighs> The documents about the people in the depth of the depth financial lawsuit with his managers and they named rattled off all the people he has money disputes with fam, family and friends, uh, his nephew, William Russell, Bruce Whitkin, uh, his childhood musician friend is literally four four point two million dollars outstanding, according to Depp. Uh, Sal Jenko and his divorce that he gave uh, and that they're not speaking and, and the and uh James Russo, the actor, who, by the way, is also in Public Enemies, I forgot. He's in Public Enemies, Ninth Gate, and Donnie Brasco. So Depp just kept throwing him these little roles here and there. He's in the prison scene in Public Enemies in the beginning. How much money did he owe him when he... $450,000. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Sal Jenkins wasn't... But that's that Viper Room stuff is... He deliberately didn't bring up the Viper Room in the Jenko passage mm-hmm. that doesn't come up you know as far as the 
the, the, the Anthony Fox stuff. Oh, of that course doesn't not. come up in the right. So then Nathan Holmes, one of his assistants, who's still, I don't know if he's still in the mix. There's 500 grand with him too, which I didn't realize that slipped in. At the, might have been 700 grand. That's the drug mule. Oh, wow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's mentioned. So, it so I'd the... be like, if I'm him, I'm like, look, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm fetching your drugs for you. That's the least you can give me. Mm-hmm. Where, well, where even? Yeah. Um, you, I have paid for your bail five times over. So. Oh well, that was speaking of bail. That was uh, Jonathan Shaw, the tattoo artist. He had this crazy rap sheet that might have put him away for twenty five years, and Depp gave him his bail money and paid oh, for God. his lawyers. Oh God, that crazy was... shit! You got to. Re- I can't wait to do this. When you read this stuff, I mean, this is, just goes on and on with Depp. There's no end mm-hmm. to a podcast like this. It's crazy. The yeah. controversy. Do you want me? He had like weapons possession and hard heroin possession. This guy, Jonathan Shaw. And he had this, was facing insane jail time. What right, a friend I'm, that Depp is, right? I'm pulling up the last video. Do you want me to read the comments on that last video when it comes up? Um, I got them too. Okay. If you want me to. However you and want to uh, this is um, – oh, because Blue Sea Fire is one more to you. Hey, Sarah, you should watch the alternative ending with full vanilla sky no. in the film. <laughs> it is a film we all disliked at the time when I first saw it, but, but really it's powerful and poignant and the ending created a tsunami of higher emotional, spiritual feeling. It's actually very cl- clever. Again, you got to read that like Thompson with Lucy fire. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> she is smarter than I am. So <laughs> she's probably able to understand it. I tapped out 10 minutes into that movie in the theater and I left. High it was IQ, the worst, Lucy it's fire. The, the worst movie I've ever saw. And Sarah, I hear that often, and I, I didn't get through it either. But maybe she has a point. She, um, Sarah, you should watch the alternative ending with a full Vanilla Sky film. It's <laughs> a film we all dislike when we first seen it, but it really is powerful and poignant. An ending kind of tsunami of higher emotional, spiritual feelings is actually very clever. <laughs> you know, I – oh, God. If I can – I will set aside, what, five hours on a Saturday – Watch to Vanilla watch all Sky these and Fear and Loathing. Fear and Loathing back to back. If I can get through Vanilla Sky and make it to Fear and Loathing, which you people tell me Fear and Loathing is so great, I will watch it. It's not I that it's such both. a great story. I mean, you know, it's it's completely taken out of the book. So there's no surprise. You're not going to get, oh, my God, what's going to happen? What's the mystery? Here? You know what happens. It's directly taken out of the book. It's more of can you get that book. crazy book? On film, mm-hmm. and how impressive like Depp's performances and Benicio del Toro and the whole thing and the cameos that you get to see Ellen Barkin. Can we just like fast forward to about. all the Depp scenes? You got you get to see Ellen Barkin in the in the uh, Barkin booty call. I have never watched a movie for Ellen Barkin. <laughs> well, I told you that show uh, Animal Kingdom is great. I'm gonna see if I can locate the scratch on her back that he thought. She had because she was cheating on him. Yeah, that's so, okay. I'm get I'm getting she, some inspiration here, and she basically plays Betty Sue Depp in the movie. Oh, she plays a waitress at a sleazy Vegas. Um, Does he rubber feet? Kind of diner coffee shop. He doesn't. Okay. He does not rubber feet. He shoots her feet. <laughs> he like he like terrifies her. They like you would get you know this would never fly in modern day. Okay. What else we got? So we got a crazy, crazy um, comment here, which just goes on in a, in a good way. Um, and this is somebody named Greenpoint, which is a callback to uh, the Radio Gunk um, chat. Greenpoint is Monique's home area of Brooklyn. Okay. Are you um, sure that's why they have the name? I'm positive. Okay. Well, no, you know, I'm not 100% positive, but I remember asking Greenpoint in the chat because I, I caught it. Mm-hmm. And I often catch these weird names in the chat, and I'll drill them on the derivation of it or I'll guess and stuff. It's fun. People don't – I just don't see this. I bring it up all the time. 
before this name came up, I bring up Monique and Monique lives right next to where the motion lounge is. And that's the social club in Donnie Brasco mm-hmm. in Greenpoint, Brooklyn on the corner of, I believe it's Withers and um, Graham. Okay. But they kind of re it was shot around Brooklyn in the coldest winter in 96. So apparently this Greenpoint, is from there and is a little younger and was on the filming of Donnie Brasco. Mm-hmm. All right. Hung out. They were shooting around Brooklyn and hanging out between sets and local people would show up and hang out and write says, Hey, deafening folks. I feel like this is a good show. This is as good a show as any to tell this story I have about Depp as well as a comment on the silence of Depp's legal team. Uh, the building that was used as the w- motion lounge for the movie in Donnie Brasco is now located on the corner of Java Street and West Street in Green in Greenpoint. I'm gonna have to look that up later. Um, this this location is only one block from the East River. You remember? Oh God, yeah, the East River is in the when they have the at the end of the movie when Pacino's they're plotting kind of what they're gonna do after this. All right. And Pacino goes. Uh, okay, so which which comes into play later in the movie when Donnie and Lefty are talking, yes, right next to said river. That's really towards the end of the movie. Um, I think that I think that's where Pistone's trying to talk him out of doing, you know, the life. Mm-hmm. He's laying the ground. He's talking about the boat. He asks him how much the boat was and where he can get a boat. And he's going to give him a boat. Mm-hmm. This location is very close to my childhood home, and I was a very young kid at the time of the film, and they filmed it about ninety six. My mother and sister were beside themselves at a chance to see the cast and, of course, Johnny, although my mom is a much bigger Godfather fan, so she liked Al uh, Pacino as well. We watched for a while as they did a ton of takes of the crew leaving the lounge and getting, and I believe it's Sonny's car. Yes, you are spot on, Greenpoint. That is Sonny's car. Um, And I think there's two scenes like that. Um, That... That scene, they go on their way to pick up the tiger, the lion, I'm sorry, that Sonny got for Lefty because he loves animals. Hmm. They go into like a weird airport warehouse and there's a lion in a cage. And that's uh, that's that's the scene where they take it. That's the car, exactly what she's talking about. All the cast, particularly Al and Johnny, were actually very nice, very smiley. And I seem to remember Al and Johnny giving me the smile and wave while I was there. I was just a shy little kid hiding wow. uh, behind a streetlight at that time. Kind of crazy to think about that guy being accused of suddenly punching someone on a set. Seems mm-hmm. fishy to me. That's the Rocky Brooks thing. Mm-hmm. Wow. I don't even know. We brought that up a few times, right? But not extensively. Yeah, Here. but we're trying to find updates on it, and there aren't many. Hey, Greenpoint, if Depp did do that, and if it's for what I believe and it's been corroborated, I, I would I would have joined in on the fight and stomped this guy mm-hmm. for berating a black homeless woman like that. And uh, apparently he's a real prick. Um, apparently Depp was standing up for this homeless woman this guy was berating, um, and it was corroborated by a bunch of people on the set. Goes so back and forth between him, her being a homeless woman and an assistant on the set. So I don't know for sure, but either way, the guy's an asshole and a money grabber. She was at at the very least, at the very most, an extra. Okay, maybe and an the extra. The other side maybe. is it was just an actual homeless woman, mm-hmm. which could be just a complete stereotypical generalization of just just calling her that, you know, without knowing the backstory. But at the very most, she was a, an extra. Mm-hmm. Either way. Of, the set of City of Lies, which is a movie you should see, Greenpoint. I highly recommend it. I have the Americanized copy of it. Initially, the, the Italian one was the only one out there. and It was annoying because the subtitles would not give you the full. And it, I really, really – it's my favorite thing he's done in a very in a decade. Um, okay, where am I? Uh, okay. Okay. Also, I wanted to bring up the silence of Depp's legal team. I have seen first-time lawyers in civil trials where a few thousand dollars are on the line and object and defend their client more. I'm sure there are legal precedents that I don't know, but the silence when Johnny's being asked questions in the vein of, are you aware how people commonly think is pretty crazy. 
Usually a question like that would get massive objections, and this house somehow didn't. The man is being asked to speculate what feelings most people have. What the hell is that? Who are most people? Who are these people? <laughs> and how can Johnny be expected to answer how other people might feel? Great point, green point. Mm -hmm. Great green point. It's very bad, and the worst part is when he's being – uh, when he's being shown the messages with his ex and the lawyer continues to say, hey, you claim this is your ex. Where's Depp's legal team in that situation? I know there are so many places that, that they should have objected there. Just from watching like how, it, how it's done, you, you know, fictionally in a movie, where, you know, where's the attorney standing up for that Perry Mason moment? I would be, standing, the, um, I'd be spending half the time on my feet. Sherborne was... Remember the remember that show Hannity and Combs? Yeah. When the, the they would get made fun of all the time because like Alan Combs was such a passive pussy and he just was meek and he wouldn't hit back and it was made that if you ever watch this documentary called Out Fox and it goes behind the exposes Fox News that Alan Combs was just put there as a patsy to look like a put to not to make Hannity look good, to, to uphold the right wing um, mm -hmm. narrative. And that's what Sherborne feels like to me. He was just this, 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 this Mr. Bentley lawyer uh, from the Jeffersons where he just had no pushback and follow up and nothing. You know what I mean? Like it was almost like, look, just good enough to make it look like a real lawyer and the whole conspiracy theory about the sun and how there was no way Depp was going to win because Rupert Murdoch owns the paper and mm -hmm. the judge was in cahoots with Murdoch. And so you certainly can't trust anybody that was involved on either no. side of that case. But Greenpoint's absolutely right. There's no follow up. What an awful lawyer that was. And everybody's like, that's all you got. How can it be that Johnny's being shown text messages completely out of context and then have the legal team presenting the evidence not even explain the evidence? Mm -hmm. How is this? If I was Johnny, I would have said, I have no answer to this unless you know who these text messages are to and the whole context of them. I mean, what's Johnny's lawyer? I mean, that's what Johnny's lawyer should have been saying the whole time. I don't get it. However, the last thing I want to say is that to make a silly movie reference in terms of this trial, this whole thing is reminding me of that funny moment in the early part of My Cousin Vinny. Early in the movie, the day of the trial gets set, and the two young guys in the trial are asking Vinny, why didn't you question the witnesses more and try to stop the trial from even happening? To which Vinny says something like, you guys in New York – you guys in New York, as you killed a good old Southern boy, there's no, no way this won't go to trial. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Remember that scene? Vaguely. It's been so long since I've seen that movie. <laughs> I know. Well, that's, that's good. Someone, a young person like that can even reference my cousin, Vinny. I know mm, you're a huge Ralph Macchio <laughs> fan. Don't you see everything Ralph Macchio is in? Um, I saw Ralph Macchio in... Beer League. No, the movie he did with... Oh, fucking Christ. Does my brain go blank during this. Did, remember he did a guitar movie? <sighs> No. He played like a virtuoso guitar. Like this is, this is after the Karate Kid, and they were trying to throw him and stuff. Keep talking. I'm looking up a movie. Okay. In the same situation, uh, is this the same situation Johnny's in? He's a U.S. celebrity bringing a lawsuit against a British tabloid. Maybe he's always set up for. He was always set up for this law. Since Johnny winning might have set a bad precedent for the rag sheets in England. The precedent being Americans can clean them out anytime they want. And the British courts don't want to give foreign celebrities that kind of power. So true. Bravo. Greenpoint. Mm -hmm. Bravo. Uh, what's the train that goes to Greenpoint? Sarah, you know that pretty. Is it the J yes, train? There's only one train that goes into uh, Williamsburg. The Amtrak 5. I have no idea. <laughs> yes. I think it's the Silver Line. I'm trying to remember the... It's been a long time. I think it's the J train. Uh, that is a, that is a great, great for point. you and your Brooklyn uh, connections there. You on the seven train with J Lo <laughs> from the let's right in from Eugene. the Bronx. Let's talk about the gravitas in Eugene, Oregon. While, while we're at it, well, first of all, you have to let's say talk it about correctly. the public transportation in Eugene. Oh, okay. I spelled, I said it wrong. How about Ugan Uganye? <laughs> Ugan I said Eugene wrong. 
No, Eugene. You said I know, I know. Oregon. I mean, oh. <laughs> Oregon girl. Mm. That's gonna be the sequel. You uh, doing a scam. I'm gonna call it Oregon girl. Mm-hmm. I wish I had the balls to do those scams. <laughs> okay. Uh, so some of our old friends. And I write back, you're right, and welcome, sir or ma'am. We record this in the next uh, few days, this very segment, for the comments. Thank you very much. Thank you for your candor, and spread the word on us. We need more insider stories like this, Greenpoint. A. Smith comes in back and writes, also, when you guys talk about, I bought it, I can break it. Michael Pittman, a great running back, I remember him. The Arizona Cardinals ran over his wife's Mercedes with his H2. And that's what his lawyer said. Oh, oh my God. I don't know that story. I don't you know love either. that stuff. You love when NFL players go crazy. Um, again, depends on if they're on my team or not. You bought it. You can break it. I have a winner coming into the team it. apparently very soon. So can't wait. And then, okay, this is good. I love this. Uh, you actually responded to it, too. You know, it's crazy how many 21 Jump Street episodes you guys made me watch. And now I've watched them. The McQuaid Brothers episode today, I just watched it. Now, which one, A. Smith? The first one? I think they were in four. So the one with Sherilyn Fenn uh, when she's molested by her police captain father. Or the one with Peter – no, the, ag- the actor-director Peter Berg. That's the very first thing he's ever done in Hollywood. He does – he plays a bully – in the second season of Jump Street, but they they go to a, like a rich kid's school. It's almost like a nine hundred two one zero. It's actually a wrong side, right side of the tracks kind of school. And the McQuaid brothers are. It's just like a a, a burglary ring. You remember the kid who was had the high expectations from his dad and was getting abused by his dad, so he was stealing stuff. And yes, this, but that's like every other yeah. episode. But I yeah. do remember. I know who you're talking about. Peter Berg's and and the uh, plays the bully in the episode. Mm-hmm. It's the first thing he's ever done. You write back. Welcome to the Vortex. You'll never escape again. Uh, true. And A. Smith, I can't wait to get back to Jump Street and do a few of those. And do the, the pilot and start from episode one, which was so distracted with this trial stuff. And we're so backlogged with all those transcripts. I mean, one of our first promises doing this was we wanted to bring to life the UK trial. Absolutely bring it to life verbatim, read the transcripts, try to sort of act it out. And uh, I think we're doing a decent job. I really do. I, I can't believe what we just did and how long it took. And I'm um, not even done yet. I, I remember reading this transcript going, how are we going to read? It was the font that bothered me, how small it was. Mm-hmm. And not even just my eyes, but anybody with good vision, just the way it's compacted and it's all two on the same page. So to read that out, it's got to be like – and I, that's what I thought I was going to struggle with the most. Now I have a system where I've blown it up. And mm-hmm. are you okay with reading that, or is it? Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm fine. These these episode lengths are horrific. You got to so. scroll up and. Mm-hmm. Not for the listeners. They get to go on a, a plane ride from Boston to San Diego. I'm so happy for on them. One- <laughs> exotic ways in again. Hey guys, I just finished listening to the show. I got to say, I'm happy that you guys took into consideration my skull ring rating system idea. And also John's idea of incorporating scarves is also great. I love the show. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Exotic. The the, uh, skull ring rating system is, uh, I can't wait to hear what Sarah says about fear and loathing with the skull (laughs) ring rating system. That'll be the first one. I promise. Or every jump street episode, we got to give a skull ring rating system. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to start at the beginning. Maybe do it for us. A. Smith, if you could do that, that'd be great. Every Jump Street episode, I want a skull ring, exotic (laughs) skull ring rating. We can compare his rating with ours. Oh, here's Lucy Fire again. Hey, guys, excellent commentary, and I'd love a slow burn. Oh, I'm I'm, I'm sorry. That's just not what I thought. Excellent commentary and a slow burning podcast. I'll be adding it to my repertoire of nine (laughs) or so. Well, this, Gary link, this, this episode is like a, an entire work day, so have yeah. fun. <laughs> and I get to string it all together before I go back to work tomorrow. Yay. I thought Lucy meant the actual film Slow Burn, which <laughs> Depp, the, the cable movie Depp did, the Showtime maybe movie with it's the a, Eric Roberts. And, uh... Maybe she means both. <laughs> we, I don't know if that Slow Burn warrants it. I would love to try 
um, to do a, a slow burn. He's only in it for like 10, 15 minutes. That's fine. Then it's only a 10 or 15 minute episode, right? Yeah, sure. I, you know, I remembered his name in the movie. It's another Donnie. And oh, remember God. I said it's like a Jewish last name? His mm-hmm. name is Donnie Fleischer in the movie. It hit me last <laughs> time. It came back to me. I'm like, oh, Fleischer. Yeah, that's a Jewish last name, but he's not playing a Jew. Mm-hmm. I just, I think they just threw the name out there. Eric Roberts is a private investigator. And he's snooping around. And it's just, I, I think you just, the Air Jordan scene is worth mm-hmm. it alone, but you'll see him. It's This is just Depp in his full 1986, uh, 85, 86, you know, short spiky hair and kind of right off going into uh, Platoon, I think, right after that. Andrew Morgan, another noise, 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 <laughs> one for the books. This episode was like a Creed video. <laughs> I, oh. I love Andrew watching Creed videos with his son, <laughs> with his player of the week in Ohio, large school. Everybody was super chill backstage, but all business when it was showtime. <laughs> Scott's, 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 Scott's staff is a wife beater. <laughs> Woo! What, <laughs> hashtag Winona Nation for what an insane... He, he's got a little Thompson in him, too. I love him dearly, but I am extremely jealous of his football team situation funny, right now. Funny, funny dude. Congratulations! Funny. You have a stable team. I know. Good. And one of it's let's high, it's high time Cincinnati get an NBA team. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I agree. Get rid of the Cavs and no. send them over to Cincinnati. With the right. Well, they kind of do. Like the Cincinnati Bearcats are like an NBA college team. They have a great pipeline. They don't care about school. <laughs> it's just right to the NBA. Uh. Hooper 45, holy mackerels, five and a half out to Howard reference. Got him from a, not that he did it. It's just some, I think a sound drop. I think that's what he's doing. Uh, you guys are nuts. You're killing me, but I'm in. Thank you, Hooper. Um, you ain't seen nothing yet with five and a half. Oh my God. This, this beats it by an hour. You think? No, we are at seven hours. Right now. No. Yes. Is it seven? So let's go. Holy <laughs> shit. Oh, my God. We've got to go for a ride. This is just becoming. No, this is a record. Last... We're done. Uh, <sighs> Kylo Sierra Alpha. Hey, whoa. Uh, this is going to be amazing, guys. I'll take a long trip, and I'll listen to this as I drive. That's the idea, Ky- Kylo. And that's, that's that's the greatest compliment you can give is that you're, mm-hmm. you're making you. someone's <laughs> five and a half hour ride feel like. An hour. And that's, I mean, meant back in the day when you didn't have this technology and you're listening to bad AM radio and struggling to find a good song. And when sports radio came along, you thought it was like you just leave it on. It was really hard to entertain yourself in a car. It's so crazy now. The options. Kids have no idea. You can do anything. You can listen to anything. In a car. There's no long car. That, that doesn't exist anymore. There's no such thing as a long car ride. No, you're right. I mean, they, it goes by in a flash. You send yep. me things to listen on to on car rides, you know, to my parents' house, and I, I blink and I'm there. Yep. And you write back. Hey, hope uh, five and a half hours is long enough for you. Oh, that was. I'm sorry, that was to a DC. You said you actually wrote. Have a safe trip. Thanks so much. Very controversial comeback. <laughs> I was probably Sarah, comatose as I hitting. am now. Yeah, that's something strange. <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty down to earth. Oh, my God. Have Come a safe on. trip. <laughs> uh, DC writes, thank you, guys. Uh, having a hellish commute today, and I need this. Well, DC, that's what it's all about. There's no greater compliment, like I said, than that. It's all about cutting your commute down. We want it to the point where you're looking forward to driving. Which I've had. I've had things that I was so engaged in. I remember the first time I found the Depp Amber Heard audio. It was two hours and ten, the full thing. And I put it on. I couldn't wait to drive. It was that mm-hmm. kind of feeling. Yeah. Couldn't wait to get in the car again. Couldn't be long enough. Waiting in the car before, you know, so much so that you had the a pro- Stern you, Show thing. You probably had a good speaker system in the car where you heard, like, every, you know, groan and eye roll from her. It's pretty good. It's not as good as headphones, but it's pretty. It was pretty good. Yeah. Is A Smith again? 
finishing this off. Oh yeah, I'm saving this one until I get home. Thanks for all your hard work, guys. Hope you guys are doing great. Thank you, A. Smith. Uh, well, I hope you save this one. I don't mm, clean. Uh, what, what would you say? Build a deck, as Artie Lang would say, <laughs> when you listen to this one. Yeah, put you a got, pool yeah. in. Build a deck on your house. You know, go to the put neighbor's house, mow their lawn. Uh, build, put in a pool at your neighbor's house. Yeah, while, while you're listening to this one, pee in the pool while you're yeah. at it. <laughs> Before you put uh, the water in, make a statement. Okay, that's all I got for now. Next episode is going to be definitely re- going over the witness um, people that the succubus and obviously Depp have called. And we're going to analyze who they are and what their deal is and how um, effective they'll be. Mm-hmm. Some you'll know, some you won't know. A lot of them are just so obscure names, and some of them why you know we from the think, UK If we can trial. find out who these people are, why we think she's calling them and how she's going to use them to um, push forward her lies. Yep, yep. And, uh, and uh, how they factor into each one of their lives and who is turned on who and are they effective and will they be, you know. That mm-hmm. kind of thing. Were they used in the UK? And some of them are redundant from the UK. You're going to hear the exact same thing you heard in the UK. When you go over, I mean, uh, Greenpoint's right. Some of the stuff that got slung in the in the UK, try to go, how could you possibly believe this bitch mm-hmm. after hearing this? Just people going, I, it didn't exist. And it just, there's no more concrete evidence. But uh, I think that was the Greenpoint post was so spot on about. He didn't have a chance with the corruption in that system and how yeah. they would look if he won, taking down the whole, you know. And just I think remember, the too, think, think of them as superior to us. Judge Nickel retired immediately after this verdict. That's right. Probably so he had nice one foot out of the, the bank account. Mm-hmm. Nichols, Nichols' feeling in his career was akin to Depp's fourth season in 21 Jump Street. <laughs> You know, the one foot out the door, the eye rolls. I don't want to be here. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Mr. Depp, I want to quit. Mr. Depp, <laughs> every five hours breaks in with a Mr. Depp. What page? What tab? That's it. That's all he did. That's all yeah. he did. He had no follow-ups, no had observations, he, no he already opinions. already had it made up. You know, so. it was so mailed in. You couldn't be more rote and uh, by the numbers. Mm-hmm. One foot out the door. Depp, season four, 21 Jump Street. Yep. All right. You got anything else? No, that's it. Okay. I'm going to go hit F5. Thank you, Sarah. Great job. You had more heavy lifting in terms of I'm volume even... reading than I did. I just had to keep the impression. I had to play three characters, but you uh, – I think you had triple the reading I did this time. That's Maybe fine. more. Not a problem. I still owe you a, g- a gargantuan <laughs> amount from the Jacobs transcript. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. That, that might even us up. That, that may have e- easily evened us up. Yep. All right, so the next, next one is the uh, witnesses, and we'll circle back to this again. Day yep. four? Day three, technically, but our part okay. four. Okay, right, so. right, right. Okay. Okay, thank, thank you, everybody. You, Thanks, everyone, for listening. Thanks, everyone, for listening.